Okay, so what we are watching today, we are watching Not So Erudite and Merck. And she's a controversial streamer. I don't know anything about her except from the context of this video. Let's watch it together and see how we feel about her work. Let's remember to be kind through this process because I think she deals with a lot of uh, hate already. She literally titled the video, I don't feel safe in quotation marks. And that's Erudite's title. So let's see how we feel about it because I don't know. I promised myself I would set a clear boundary. I do not like the way you're painting me right now. You can think about me what you wish. I feel like this conversation is no longer productive. It's unsafe and it's unhealthy. And now you're trying to say I'm yelling, which is trying to paint me as an aggressive person. I know exactly what you're doing. And I'm not I don't think for it. I like don't everything that I'm saying to you is like backfiring. And I don't know, I don't know why. I'm not sure what's happened. You're valid to feel that way. I don't think you're seeing me and I'm really trying to communicate to you. And now you're making it into something that it's not and I don't appreciate it. And I feel uh, violated right now. So I'm gonna go for my health and safety. Oh. Oh, okay, I did not get to this part of the conversation and I did not see that opening, so wow. Oh, nice. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> don't look at me like that, oh my goodness. I feel like you can't, I feel like, don't you hate like gay LGBTQ stuff? I feel like you're Steve no. Ballard right now. You don't? Just no, things? I just I just joke about shit. Okay. <laughs> no, I, 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 I've been with women before. You know, okay. I've, uh, Gate I've, uh, icon. tried to peg my ex-boyfriend before, you know, I'm into all that, you know, he didn't yeah. let it happen, but I tried. Don't, uh, tell the internet that, because, anyway, what's up? That border's sounding like actual assault, but okay. <laughs> I mean, like She's, like, very neurodivergent, right? Like, that's the first thing we're gonna notice, right? The neurodivergency is screaming at us, and I think it's ADHD, but I could be wrong. Do we know what her neurodivergency is? Because, like, this is not neurotypical, right? Like, when you date someone and you're in love, like, you, you try and poke their butt or whatever, like, at least me, that's what I used to do. I try to, like, his butt. And he, it would make him mad, but you know, like before, like you would do that before asking him about it. Uh, like you'd surprise him. Uh, oh. No, like you know, like you're if you're tickling each other and you just like tickle. Anyway, anyway, uh, yes, LGBTQ HDMI adapter, 100 percent ally. Here for it. I don't think she's manic. Uh, you guys are asking, like, is she manic? I don't think she's manic. Like, mania is very specific. You know what I mean? Um, oh, she has BPD too. Interesting. Okay. She seems manic to me. I don't know if this is mania. I mean, mania, mania is like really something, right? Like that's a very specific thing. So I would say not manic, but I would say like hyper. That's why I'm asking, does she have ADHD? She seems very like did, 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 like off the wall, but that could be a lot of things. So let's see. So her neurodivergency is borderline. Anything else? She feels like something else, but let's see. Right. Okay. All right. Then you can steal their valor all you want. Awesome. How's it going? This is not the outfit I expected to see you in. Yeah, I just got off of work, took a shower, um, chilling. Nice. Uh, well, you said your chat has been wanting to talk to me for a while. It sounds like, didn't you, were you leaving the DGG universe or are you back in or what's the- I was never, I'm, see, everyone subscribes to that. I don't. I don't view myself in any community, any association except my own. And uh, yeah, I just, whatever people say I am, I guess I am because, you know. Okay, so she does have ADHD. Um, interesting. Brittany, do you do merch? It's coming. It's coming next week. Reality is what you make it. So if they say I'm an orbiter, I guess I'm an orbiter. But to me, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but you... I will say one of the most... The only difference between DGG and other communities that I've seen is DGG, DGG thinks if you've even talked to Destiny once, somehow you're in his orbit, which is such a weird idea. I've never had that happen on every, any other part of the community, like online. Like when I talked to ContraPoints and we used to be friends, no one ever thought I was in her orbit. When I collabed with Shoe on Head, nobody ever thought I was in her orbit. When I've talked to anyone else, T1J, I was never in his orbit. Like when I talked to Sargon of Akkad, I was never in his orbit. Destiny is the only community I've been in that is so toxically weird about this, where they're like, you're in his orbit. And yes, some people obviously kind of make their careers off Destiny, but if you're a person who's already made your own career and you just collab with him, it feels really strange to be like, Dr. K is in Destiny's orbit. But like, I've seen people make comments like that where it's like Destiny is the main character to them. So everything around him is about him, which is just so different. And I think my audience feels that way, right? Like, it's just so weird. So I will say like, that is the only difference I've seen with DGG versus other communities. It's the only community I've seen that thinks their guy is the main character always, which is interesting. Unfriended uh, the Steve, right? Yes, Stevie boy, I unfriended him. But we're friends again, so. Yeah. How'd you unfriend him? What did he do? Who's Steve? Uh, so it wasn't him. 
it was literally I was greened out, which most of my mistakes on the internet come from me being greened out. I've noticed, but yet I still like do banned? it anyway. Like greened out like banned or greened out like you were high as. Fuck? I was high as. Fuck. I was like high as fuck, roasted. Uh, but no. Uh, so Xena came into my stream one night, and this was after the conversation with XQC. And let's be real, I was already extremely disappointed in how that went. So it was kind of like it hurt my feelings, right? And okay, I've seen this part, and I thought it was really interesting. Uh. Like, why did XQC talk to her? How did they get into that orbit? I don't know any of the lore on this. They went in there and started donating stuff to XQC, and he was reacting negatively. And okay. I feel like there's a time and place. Like, I feel like there's a moment where you should realize that this isn't content anymore. So, like, it was, I felt like he was going to view me like, oh, Destiny, you introduced me to this crazy bitch and, like, all that. So, like, I just wanted to, I didn't want it to fall back on him because, like, he did do a lot for me. He did give me the intro and, like, like I. And oh, Steve equal Destiny. <laughs> I don't think of Steve as destiny. So when she said Steve, I was like, who's Steve? Forever grateful for that and ha have him and him having me on stream. So it's like, I don't know. I just I just felt like at the moment, I just impulsively unfriended him because I was like, I don't want him to be associated with me. Not because of him to me. It's me to him. Like, I don't want it to like, you know, be bad because people already hate me on the Internet. I don't want him to like get flack for it. You know what I'm saying? Are you banned <gasps> on Twitch? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Oh, One second. yeah. Why'd she get banned on Twitch? Right, Twitchers off to kick you go. I have to get rid of you. Goodbye. I love you, but. Your parents, your mommy and daddy are too mad. The collab no one wanted. Uh, do I have a link to my kick? I don't think so. Hold on, I'm just gonna send them over. What'd you do to get banned? So, the, the a bad habit of not obeying TOS, and like I just do what I want. And anyway, so I was on there, and I was playing The Sims. And I had the Wicked Whims mod, and that was the first time that got me banned. The other time was... I uh, taste a, a hint of paranoia as well. I think that paranoia in her is the same feeling people get around like mania because there's like such a paranoia base to it. But I want to really make it clear because I used to say I experienced mania and that was so wrong. I was so uneducated. When I first got diagnosed with borderline, I thought my episodes were mania. And when I learned more about mania, I was like, Oh, and that's and people corrected me on the internet. They were like, Brittany, borderline and mania don't go together. Why do you keep saying that? And I thought they did. This is what I say. I'm not a therapist. You need to go to therapists to talk about mental health, right? Because like there's so much to know about this. I didn't realize that. So when I was first diagnosed like years ago, I thought they overlapped and they don't traditionally overlap. So that is like a misconception that I think I might have gotten from the internet maybe. I don't know where I got that misconception that media and borderline had a relationship. But that's not pretty common. You know, most of the time it's the splitting episode you're having, right? Which I definitely haven't had for, you know, years now. But I never had mania. Even nights where I felt like insomniac and I wanted to stay up all night, it wasn't even mania. Now that I have people in my life who have like bipolar and experience mania, I'm fully recognizing like, oh, Mania is very much different and they need to have their safe space and like the respect towards that experience and not dilute it with people who are just on the internet acting weird. So I want to say like she doesn't feel manic to me and not that I know exactly what that is, right? Like I don't know everything about that. But I want to make sure that we're not applying that word to her because that's a pretty serious thing. Um, she does seem slightly paranoid, which to be honest with you, I think everyone kind of feels when they're on the internet and they're overwhelmed. So we'll see. And also, I think from my understanding, and she's going to talk about this, she's only been a streamer for a few months. So I definitely don't know anything about this girl, right? So we'll see what happens. It's where hate wicked whims mo mod. It's where your sims get naked and like you can find sims and shit like that. So, you know. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was the first time. Second time, I was like apparently having hate speech or something because I made a comment about transgenders. Um, and then the third time was because I went completely off the rails crazy and like had a full on like not even like just a meltdown like I was like driving crazy like it was bad it was bad it was bad it was whenever on, like my boyfriend had broken up with me initially and it got really dark and bad and then yeah found my way out of it so okay interesting okay so you're banned on there okay now I'm off twitch now so you don't have to worry about that um sorry I'm just trying to get my chat working there we go holy shit, this has been such a nightmare I got this new chat system. And it's great because it has this fun TTS system. But yeah, it's it's a nightmare sometimes. Okay. We got it. We got it going. Uh, what should we talk about? What do we have in common? I don't really know any of your viewpoints on anything. And now hearing that you're a very green walled memer, that creates an even greater layer of mystery. 
well, I can either be honest because I've been I've actually been enjoying coming onto people's streams and like having real conversations and like dropping the act because I feel like that's very important because people the whole point of it, because people streamers and like viewers and stuff, I think is to feel connected to the world, to feel like they're a part of something. And the more vulnerable you are with someone, the more connected they feel. So I really have been enjoying like opening up and just being who I am and just hanging out and chilling lately. I, I think so I had somewhat of a business model, not really a business model, but like a plan for how I wanted to come into streaming. Mm -hmm. And I think I executed it perfectly. I came on saying hard R, saying all these slurs, doing things that were kind of like, holy shit, like, Crazy. who is this yeah. girl? She? Yeah. And so then like, once I was past that phase, I'm now into a phase where I'm like, kind of going through metamorphosis where. Mm. Oh, question. Okay. You guys are making a good point that. Uh, borderline also has tenants of paranoia which I think comes from like an insecurity of like did I mess up and then on top of that she smokes weed which could also induce paranoia obviously we know this so it could be a combination of those things right I'm dropping some of the edgy shit I'll still troll but introduce more of an authentic side of me I guess you could say there's like a whole formula in my head that I use so okay you should walk me through so I'm I'm not a bit person at all I don't do bits I will troll people a little bit but mm -hmm. usually like I'll troll why does Kyla try to act like a psychologist? Well, okay, here's something that I think is interesting because I saw one of Kyla's videos were titled like Xena and Darius Couples Therapy. And I was like, I'm sorry, is somebody a therapist on this panel? And I always wonder about these things because again, like no one's, a Kyla's not a therapist, right? And like no one on that panel was a therapist or on that video. I don't remember what it was called. Hold on, let me see. There was a video. Maybe she changed the title. Let's see. Darius and what did I say? Xena. Um, Darius featuring irrelevant giving laugh therapy. That's not, that doesn't matter. I swear I saw it on Not So Erudite and I could be wrong, but I remember thinking like, oh, that's really weird. Maybe she changed the title. Okay. But anyways, maybe, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it wasn't even, maybe she didn't have that. I don't know why I remember that. Um, but it is one of those things, right? Where I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Maybe she changed the title, which is good, right? Like, if I saw it, I don't want to – now I'm, like, doubting myself, but I'm pretty sure that's what it said. Um, stuff like that is always interesting to me. I don't know that she ever pretends to be a therapist in my experience. So I want to say that she never gives me that impression. What she gives me is an impression of somebody who's listening and trying to be kind, and I think that is good to have on YouTube. So I want to say, like, I think that's good that Kyla is listening and is being good to people – but I don't think she's acting like a therapist. I think as somebody who's been to therapy, therapists are good listeners, but they don't have conversations with you. Like therapists don't have the back and forth that Kyla does with people. So I will say like I'm not really sensing that she's like a therapist because again, I don't know what kind of therapy y'all went to, but like the therapists aren't out here like asking even direct questions like this. Like my therapist never asked me direct questions like this. It was very much like, you tell me what you want to talk about. What are we here for? So again, I'm I'm not sure. You know what I mean? Chrissy says, I thought you can get triggered and go into a manic episode if you have BPD. I think if you have bipolar, but I don't think it's associated from my, again, I am not a therapist, so I don't know. But from my understanding of borderline, because borderline means you're on the border of something. That's the dilemma with it is mine is rooted in abandonment. And again, I worked. I always had two jobs. I always showed up like I, you know, I was always a good worker, except for the one time I wasn't. One day I called out of work finally one too many times. And um, it was within my allowed time. But the family was like, hey, you're like calling out a lot. And I was even though it was allowed. It, it was true I was and I was like I need to go to therapy like I'm gonna get fired like I'm gonna have the, and I did I got fired they asked to go with a different nanny they didn't like the way that I was handling things and it was a real awakening for me but one of the things my therapist was shocked about was the fact that I was holding down work I had relationships I had good friends people like me I've been I've been successful in my life like so for me when I think of mania I think of people who also have those things, but I also think of them having a much harder time than even I had with my borderline. Like I would say from my experience of bipolar people who experience mania, they're having a much harder time than I ever had splitting with borderline. But that could just be a anecdotal case by case basis. I'm, I'm not sure. At Steven or like other people, but it's usually people who probably know me decently well and yeah. will figure out that I'm trolling pretty quickly. Um, except for my chat. It doesn't catch on when I troll mm -hmm. people. They're starting to. They're getting better. Um, what goes through? What What's like the 
psychological process where you go, I'm going to make like a persona mm -hmm. that's really eye catching and do that on the, like what, what drives you? Cause and I'm not talking like negative about it. I, mm -hmm. I think it's pretty neutral. I just like, it's just not something I feel like I could commit to. Like, I'm like, what if, what if I drop my persona like halfway through, you know? Um, so for me, it's like, it all comes very naturally. Like it's not something I have to practice. It's not like when I used to do theater or musicals or anything, like it just happens naturally. And like, I develop these thoughts in my head, like, okay, well this worked, but this didn't. And then this worked, but this didn't. So it's like, I kind of formulate that in my head where it's like, this is what I have to do. And you know, I just, I just do it. I don't really put much thought into it. You know, I'm a very, like, I trust the universe a lot and I'm very like spiritual. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like as long as I'm feeling good and I'm feeling happy and doing things with the right intention, which is to entertain people that I will be protected. And, you know, I do things offline that definitely help protect me even more on the internet. But, you know, people aren't aware of that. They just think that I'm crazy and dox myself and do all these things. But in reality, everything I've done so far up to this point has been intentional. Mm, okay. Interesting. So then I guess, what are your, what are your like goals for streaming? Like, what do you want to, what do you want to do? My only goal for streaming, my only goal for streaming is to feel like, a fulfillment and i whether it's uh, for me it's not so much like the money is definitely helpful because then it's like it gets me to a point where maybe someday eventually i could eventually just stop working and like stream full-time because it's what i want to do but like for me it's just when you <sighs> it's hard to explain when you know you found your thing you know like mm -hmm. it just feels like second nature to you it feels like what you're meant to be doing I, I i work all day and then i come home and i look forward to streaming you know i feel like i'm just hanging out with people and i think for me as someone who's very reclusive and doesn't have many friends in real life like it's my escape i i enjoy entertain it's just like a culmination of so many positive things that it's just hard to put into words mm -hmm. when did you start streaming like when was your so i my what I say is when I started streaming is August 7th. So it's not been, it's been a little over a month. I, I did stream like maybe once or twice to just try it out and I didn't keep up with it. But August 7th was when I really like started my, I haven't, st I haven't streamed. I have not, not streamed like ever since I started besides one day. Okay. So nice. That's yeah. impressive. So you're grinding in. Um, and so what is your typical content then? Uh, cause my chat is basically being like, who this? <laughs> um, I do a little bit of everything. I did start off as like, uh, a, game streamer i do like video games i grew up on video games and stuff like that um but i think i do a little bit of everything you know i just recently started doing irl streams and i sometimes with video games i like talking um i i don't know for me it's like i don't think people do it enough to be honest and especially on the internet if you try and have a conversation or be open and honest like you're either seen as like trauma dumping or ooh, this is gonna be really awkward later when she leaves kyla's stream <laughs> like I love it when people are like, nobody wants to have the conversation, but then they leave the stream, which is like fair. I don't know what led up to it. I don't know what Kyla did to make her upset. Maybe she didn't do anything, but I just think this is going to be really awkward when they get to the point where she's going to leave the stream, you know, um, which is fair, right? Like we all want to be open to people having to leave the stream, you know, and all that stuff. But like, or it's like, oh, you talk too much about yourself or this or that. I really like it. And I think everyone should like find value in just talking to people because communication is very important and you get to learn a lot about people and differing and dissenting opinions or thoughts or mindsets. So I don't know. I do, a lot of my content is talking, but, you know, I'm working on doing other things. So. Okay. What is like a, like, what's like a new idea that you've been trying to like wrestle with or think about and stuff? Well, I'm going to TwitchCon, which for me is like completely, I'm scared to be honest. Uh, I... I don't like I don't like going out in public. I don't like meet. I mean, I like meeting new people, but it's like in situations like this, I'm very worry worrisome because they know who I am on the internet. They don't know who I really am. So it's not that I'm insecure and like I'm worried they won't accept me. It's more so like it removes that barrier. You know what I'm saying? It's very real. Like it's a real thing. You're meeting another human. So human. So it kind of worries me for that reason. But yeah, I plan on doing like in real IRL streams with the uh, other streamers and stuff like that. And you know, more video gaming. I want to do more story games because I I really enjoy doing that. Um. And just, yeah, basically stuff like that. Do we know how old she is? Does anyone know how old she is? Does anyone know how old she is? I don't remember what she said. She looks anywhere from 21 to 28, so I'm not sure how old she is. Okay. Uh, who Are you going with anybody or are you just showing up? Oh, I'm going by, my, I'm going by myself, but I'm meeting people there. Okay, nice. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll be at TwitchCon. Um, I have a big house with a bunch of streamers and stuff, so mm. you'll have to stop by. Mm. I'll have to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if that makes you uncomfortable sorry i'll stop it doesn't make me uncomfortable but i'm married so i'm uh, hey you know just because there's a goalie don't mean you can't score you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> that's what you know you can hope one can truly hope um a couple things um we're about to experience oh 25 ish she's 25 okay 
So a few things we're about to experience is one, I need you to understand what a cringe gay flirter I was when I was younger. So inappropriate. And this kind of reminds me of that time in my life when I would just like flirt too heavy with people in a way that like was less charming. But I think it's kind of like a part of growing up. I don't know if she has a lot of experience flirting, but this is like, and I've seen this part already. I haven't finished this whole stream, but in private, I watched a lot of it. And um, it's like, a level of like performative that like makes me so weird. Like it's so weird. But I also think it's so like I can't even tell you. I went to VidCon and I flirted with like Philip DeFranco's wife with Lindsay. Like I flirted with so many people, just like any woman. I was like flirting, flirting. It was fun and everyone thought it was cheeky. But at the same time, it was cringe. And this reminds me of this a lot, which no hate because at 20 years old at VidCon, I was so cringe. But it is like, yeah, there's like, it's like no riz, but it, maybe it works. It's just, but let me tell you, as somebody who's like honed in her flirt game, I've gotten better. I definitely think it's a skill you learn over time. So that I'm not hating on her. I just think like, this is a lot. Like this is this flirtation you're about to watch. It's a lot for me to handle. <laughs> um, okay, so you're going to TwitchCon. Is there any like ideas that you've been wrestling with? Like uh, thinking about gender dynamics or politics uh, or? I think... <sighs> So to be fair, streaming does not really like unless I'm having a conversation like this, streaming does not really like bring upon questions that I really need to ponder over. Like it's very like surface level like type. Shit. But I don't know, like something that bothers me is like I've noticed on the Internet, everyone has an opinion about things, which is fine. If it's on the Internet, I believe that you can have an opinion. But it's like when you get asked questions, it's like people don't want to hear the answer. It's like you're answering their questions, but like there's this issue where it's like they think you're lying or, you know, you, they think you're coping or like it's just like why go searching for answers if you don't want them? You know what I'm saying? And I, and I noticed that's like a common thing, which then again, maybe it's just like the point of the drama or the point of the content and like the entertainment. But it's like it just doesn't make sense. Like why waste your energy like arguing with someone if you're not going to want to hear what they have to say? So you're not super into the debate, debate land. I, I enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. I used to be on the debate team uh, when I was in school and like Scholar Bowl and stuff like that. I enjoy it, but in a more uh, academic structured environment, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So you're mostly here to have a good time um, on stream. You want to have like good conversations. What is your like troll persona? Like what have you, because you said that you were just going to drop a lot of slurs and stuff like that to kind of like pop off. Is that your plan in the future? Is like do crazy? No, that like, part's over. Brain? I mean... I mean, for me, I... So what's up with her aesthetic? Does anybody know that? Like, does anyone have insight to give me? What's the lore with her aesthetic? Why is she dressed that way? Why is she holding, like, a stitch doll? Like, what's the vibe? I mean, I mean, like, I'm not judging it, obviously. Like, we all reviewed past Britney. We, okay. But I'm just like, what's the vibe? Like, what am I going for here, right? Like, what's the... What am I supposed to be feeling? believe and people don't agree with me on it it's fine i believe that everyone is a little racist i think that everyone deserves to be made fun of um as in like okay say i make fun of you for something you have every right to make fun of me for it too and i feel what like what you make fun of me for i want to know give me your uh, best roast I, I, but that's the thing like i don't like you're hot there's nothing like i want to roast you about <laughs> yeah but i mean i'm sure there's something i could be you could somebody can be attractive uh, and still be rose worthy or do you only uh, she's a christian people. roast her for believing in god it's so easy i'm just kidding i'm just kidding but like literally and, like, I love that she's so hot, I can't. <laughs> no, I mean, like, that's the thing. With women, I don't really roast them on the internet. Like, if you, like, watch my streams consistently, I tend to leave the women alone just because I know what it's like to be a woman in the streaming space. Uh, but with men, like, if anything goes, black, Mexican, fat, I don't care. And if you say something about me, yeah, you can say that. I don't care because it's true. I'm very open. I'm very honest. I'm an open book. So it's like, so you, you know, would, I feel so you like... Make fun I, of me? There's nothing you'd roast me over? Um, I... Can you stand up a little bit and do me a little oot-a-doot? A little oot doot Your only roast is going to be on how I look. Okay. No, I'm, I'm assessing you. I'm assessing you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, that was just a ploy to get to see what you were working. Oh, do you go to the gym? Of course. My husband's oh, my trainer. Oh, I didn't care about him. Uh, no, like, I guess I would roast. Um, Wait, is that? Uh, oh, it's not a Stitch doll. It's a Yoda doll. Is it Yoda? Is that a Yoda doll? Not a Stitch doll? My bad. Yeah, it's Yoda, isn't it? My bad. Um. Yeah, that's not a stitch doll. You guys are right. It's a Yoda doll, I'm pretty sure now, now that I'm looking at it. Okay, and she, apparently she doesn't normally dress like this way. Okay, cool. I mean, even if she did, we love it. Like, we love to see a colorful girl, so, like, no judgment. Uh, you're, you're, I don't know. You're perfect. What can I say? <laughs> I'm, I'm very, very, all right. You'll just have to get to know me more to figure out what you're going to roast me. I don't like the cadence of your voice. There you that's go. That's not physical. A lot of people don't like the cadence of my voice. Okay, what do you dislike about the cadence of my voice? 
Uh, it sounds too radio. I hate sound. Sa- I hate it. Okay, so like I have it sounds like too stiff. Yeah, a misophonia. I don't know if you know that, but like certain sounds like really like I like, grind my gears and like I get super overstimulated. But like if like the radio host in the morning, like I can't stand listening to radio hosts in the morning because just their voice is like nails on a chalkboard. So yeah, you have one of those radio voices that I don't like. Oh, uh, like the performative. Like hello everyone, welcome back to the stream where today we will talk about. The Yoda girl versus Erudite. Yeah, so that like uh, radio voice. I actually don't mind the radio voices. I think they're interesting. It's interesting that she doesn't like them though. I wonder if it says like inauthentic to her. I wonder if it's like a, a comfortability with like what's authentic. But that's the thing is like everyone's, we've all got a voice. Even I have a podcast voice. Do you guys like listen to my podcast? I talk similar but very, I have a podcast voice. Like I know my voice changes when I'm doing the podcast because I'm not going to be interrupted. And so I wonder if it's that. I wonder if her brain reads like inauthentic. You know what I mean? Is this girl on the um, spectrum? So I feel like she's definitely on the spectrum, right? She's definitely neurodivergent somehow. Like borderline is one of her neurodivergencies, but like there feels more that she probably is somewhere on the other ones. You know what I mean? Well, what's the thing she just named? She actually just named a thing. What was the thing? You know what I mean? (laughs) Which would also explain the attire. Yeah, I don't know. Like she definitely... um, she has a thing. Girl likes to talk like she's on 2x speed. I mean, I also used to talk that way a lot more. So who knows what it is. But anyways, let's keep watching. Riz so, is crazy. So you really hate my voice. I don't hate. I mean, you're sexy, Rating. so you make up for it. Should I put on like a really bad accent? Would that fix it? Do whatever you want. I don't care. You, you trying to impress me? You trying to? You like me? See, here's the thing. I'm very charming. Okay, I'm very charming. I'm very becoming. And yes, I'm gonna brag a little bit. All right, I'm not gonna be humble right now. I'm very charming. So after people meet me, I think they're so ready, like with their guns ready, like, oh, she's gonna be this. She's gonna be this. They have these preconceived notions, and then when they meet me, they see how adorable I am, and I think you're falling in love with me. How long do you think it'll take for me to fall in love with you? How long before I will be divorcing my husband and chasing after you? Uh, well, first of all, I wouldn't let you do that because I don't want you like that. But like, probably baseline. I give it a week a week damn yeah. are you trying to talk to me a lot or is this our what role? do you guys think about this like is this young person riz like is this young person personality i get it like i mean most i think most people who meet each other on online would like each other in person better like i think that's just like a, a phenomenon that happens with everyone um i think she has adhd yeah i think she has adhd and borderline is the two things that people say she has right so again this flirting feels very um, spectrum-y to me or like not literally autistic, but it feels very like neurodivergent, which is like fine. I'm used to it. I've done it myself. No judgment. Uh, I do it now. Like I'm a not, I am definitely a neurodivergent flirter, but it works, girls. Like I never have problems, you know, but I think that that phenomenon does happen to most people online is like when we meet each other in person, we do like each other better. It's why online controversies are like so great on the computer. But once you're in person, you just lose all desire to hate somebody. I swear. I swear it feels that way. As somebody who's been in the same room as some of the people that I just hate on the internet, when you're in the same room as them, you're like, eh, I don't care, whatever. But um, what do you think this is? Do you think this is like her way of feeling validated? The whole like you're going to fall in love with me thing. Is that her joke? I will say, is it cute because she's like a smaller person? Um, I think some people would really like this personality. Like I can see why some people would really like this girl for sure. Only conversation. Oh, I, I just got it. I just got to look at you. Give you that look. <laughs> show me your squirtle or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like. Squirt? I can show you a squirtle. All right. You, you'll be <laughs> squirtling all over. Let me tell you. <laughs> Okay, so I have a knowing voice, and that's it. That's all I get. Damn, I feel yeah. shafted. And not in a good way. Damn, I'm already let down. I was expecting some. I was expecting some like brutal roasts. Okay, wait. Um, it gives me cringe. I'm quirky vibes. Well, honestly, okay. So here's the question. She is kind of quirky, like as a person, like as a category of person. She is obviously like quirky. You know what I mean? Isn't she like six foot? I don't know. She looked tiny as fuck on the screen. I don't know. Maybe she is only six feet or she is six feet. But like I will say there is like the quirkiness of her is sort of real. Like I think she might be this way. And at the same time, it is obviously being put on as a performance. But sometimes I think you have to be a certain level of quirky to even accept the performance. Does that make sense? Like, you know, when um like more normies like neurotypical people flirt even if they're trying it's not like this because the spectrum of ability to even get this like quirky in quotations needs some sort of level of quirky to get there does that kind of make sense you know 
Um, so I think she's like real quirky, but also there's a slight 10% performative of the quirky that's making it hard. And that's the part that like might hit some of us weird. It's like, oh, um, mm, interesting. I don't know. I don't know about that. But yeah. That would oh, why fun. would I why would I want to do that? You're literally trying to have a normal conversation with me. I don't want to like roast someone and sit here and like, sure, I'll joke with you about how hot you are. But like, I'm not going to sit here and like demean someone even jokingly because you're making you are like you and a few others are the only ones that like you, actually. OK, Destiny, I think Destiny has me on for content. You I feel like you I mean, yes, it's for content. But at the same time, like, I think you genuinely want to hear what I have to say. And you're actually interested. Uh, like, it's just for me. And my chat's going to roast me, but I'm a very big energy person. And it is possible okay. to get energy readings through, like, technology. And, like, I just, I feel, like, I don't know. I feel like you're actually trying to, like, question me, I guess, compared to others who question me just to be angry at me for no reason, I guess. Probably not for no Aww, reason. She feels, like, seen by Kyla, which is really going to suck later when she leaves. But, yeah, she feels like Kyla is maybe, like, uh, humanizing her and treating her like a person which is really nice, which is like kind of a nice thing to happen online. But now, uh, let's see if it works. Yeah, she's really trying to connect with Not So Erudite. I feel that too. But then I want to know, like, I think she does want to be humanized. I definitely feel like she's working really hard to be seen. And I think that's valid and reasonable. Um, I'm, I'm curious that she chose Kyla. And I'm curious, again, gosh, with that preview Kyla put out that they're going to fight. It's like, oh, man, what's going to happen, though? What's going to happen? But probably not for a good reason. I find uh, Well, the only reason Rose is like, their problem. It always it always is watered down to it's their problem, not mine. <laughs> was it the beat between you and Xena, though? Because, like, you came in pretty hot. At least when what? I remember me and being her. there. No, me and her. Like, we've always been good. There's never been any issues. Oh. Yeah. I feel like the one time I was there and you came in, you guys were at each other's throats. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Well, I, we I, I just read things experience in that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so you're charming. All right, tell me something about you that uh, most people don't come to understand quickly. Like, what should um, I know to understand you? I think what you should know about me is that, I, I mean, I know that they say, like, good people don't have to convince others that they're good, but I think people all forget that, you know, I don't know, the people who watch me consistently, they know who I am, I think, and I just want people to know that I am a good person. Like, yeah, I, I do nasty things on the internet, but can you, are you able to like separate the art from the artist? Even though like, I'm not like conflating what I am. I'm just saying that like, as an example, like the phrase, like, can you separate the art from the artist? Can you realize that no matter what I'm doing on the internet, behind all that, behind that facade, there is a real person. And, you know, back when I used to be real, real brutal to certain people, like I would always keep that in mind. And then after the fact, I would always reach out and like apologize if I hurt the feelings or made sure that everything was okay. Like, cause we are people, we're all normal people. And I feel like people forget that because there's, the only thing they consume of us is our content, which is exactly what we want to show them. They don't see what goes on behind the scenes because we don't want to show that. That's why I really aim to like not have much that I don't share because I want to be as open as possible. Now, granted, there are a few very, very sensitive things in my life that I don't share and I want it to say that way, but I try very hard to be very frank and explicit with what I've been through and with how I feel and the thoughts that I have in my head. Mm, 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 mm. We've heard this story a lot. I think a lot of us have that story. I think a lot of us want to be seen for our authentic selves. I think I'm hearing a lot of really good words of seeking like a validation. And I also feel like there's a lot of walls up. So of course, like I can understand, like I can already see where the fight might be coming from already. This is kind of exciting knowing that they're going to fight at the end and we don't know why. Because I can kind of see it already. Like if she's already got so many walls up, she's already feeling like no one's seeing her. She's already feeling like she's a quote unquote, what did she say? Nasty? What was the word she used about herself? She has a negative connotation about the things she does and she wants us to separate herself from her art. That is interesting. Unlike Mr. Girl, the, you know, he who should not be named. When I think about his work, I don't think he ever wanted to be separated from his work. He wanted to be seen through his work, but she's making it sound like she wants people to see her and not her work. Am I reading that correctly, guys? Are you guys getting the same? Are we understanding her the same way? Because um, that's what it feels like. Um, we only know spoilers, though, in my defense, because Erudite put out a little clip. Yeah, her her editor literally made us, like, so excited for the end. We're like, oh, they're going to fight. So I was like, why is she going to fight, though, right? I think she could have anxious attachment mixed in with overconfidence. Maybe. For sure. Maybe. My fight or flight is triggered when people insist on how good of a person they are. Yeah, I don't know if that's what I'm getting weirded out by. But I think what I'm getting weirded out by is like how many walls she has up. 
but also how desperate she is for someone to see her and the validation needs, which makes total. Oh, wait, I'm so stupid. Borderline. If she actually has borderline, that's like literally borderline. Wait, that makes total sense. I wonder if she's gone to DBT. I wonder if she could be in remission. I wonder if she's done what she needs to do for her borderline. And look, they Dr. K even put out a video about this. If you get real borderline therapy and you actually pay attention and you do it, you can see recovery within months to years. I mean, it definitely worked for me. It saved my life. I 100% recommend it at least to try. I think it it helped me. I think without it, I, I wouldn't have gotten better. I just think it made me so much better. And look, I was in I was in remission within gosh a couple years of getting therapy. Within a few years, I was already I was in remission, so it worked out really well. Um, so yeah, I wonder if she's getting the right kind of therapy, if she does have borderline. I know you guys are saying she does, but I just, I don't want to misspeak and say like, oh, I know that because I haven't heard her say that yet. So what do you do for work? <laughs> uh, if I give you the honest answer, are you going to believe me? Or are you going to tell me I'm lying? I have no reason not to believe you at this point. I'm I mean, a preschool teacher. I don't believe that. Yeah, everyone, they're like, there's no way she's a preschool teacher. Um, I don't know what preschool teachers you guys know, but all the preschool teachers I know are crazy. And I don't mean like that in a bad way, especially coming from uh more like progressive places, but you don't you don't need much to be a pre- preschool teacher. Like it's not like preschool teachers aren't like regular teachers, right? From you can be a preschool teacher at like a Montessori school, and from my understanding, I could be wrong qualifications like what are you guys imagine like you know any weirdo can go through college but qualification qualifications for a montessori teacher you could also use a study diploma uh any foundation degree or degree in any subject what qualifies montessori um like i'm just you know every i wonder like what are the qualifica- qualifications you need to be a preschool teacher? So I don't know. But like, again, uh, crazy people can become teachers. I don't know why we all thought like teachers are supposed to be like, oh, I'm a preschool teacher. So like that makes me what? Like, why is that unbelievable? That's such a weird take. Yeah, I'm a preschool teacher. I believe that. These people have just never. Here's the problem, okay? A lot of online people have just never met professionals in the real life. So they're like, mm-hmm. you can't be a mental health worker and say like mean things. And it's like, do you yeah. think that like the moment somebody becomes a professional, they just like stop existing as a human? Like, That's the thing. Personality it's... is their job. Exactly. Cause... Exactly. You go to work and then you leave work. Do you take? You're not supposed to, but like, do you take your work with you? Like, do you like? Are, or are you the same person that you are? No. Like, teachers, teachers cuss. Teachers say racist things sometimes. Everybody says these things. It doesn't matter. It's just like, oh, you, you, you can't be saying it. Yeah, I can because I do a very good job of keeping both lives separate. So are you worried about, like, since you're so spicy on the internet, are you worried about that being an issue? Like, No, it's been, uh, all of my information, I personally doxed, it's been out for months now, I think, and uh, I have yet to get fired from work. And actually, I would- Like, they've seen your content and stuff? I I assume so. I talk about it. With your kids? (laughs) Um, No, because I, I, that is kind of, yeah, no, that would definitely be inappropriate. Um, But no, like, I, I, you know- for me, it's like, even if that does happen and people, when people, when people hear this, they say I'm manic or I'm crazy or I'm schizo, but it's like, I have so much faith in my spirituality that if I lose my job, I'm not going to look at it from a negative point of view. I'm going to be like, okay, this happened for a reason. Now I can focus on my streaming career full time and do what I actually enjoy, which don't get me wrong. I enjoy working with kids. There's a reason why I work with kids, but I enjoy streaming just a little bit more. Okay. Interesting. That's fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. You always got to get worried. Okay. Spirituality. You're super spiritual. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me about it. So uh, I think it was really kickstarted, uh, back in May when I uh, went through a really traumatic breakup and it, I'm sorry, you know, I started doing things like, I want us to get ready for whatever is about to happen because I remember watching this the first time around and I did start to get frustrated with her. So I'm just going to put it out there right now that this is the moment I'm going to start to get a little frustrated, I think, because again, everyone has a different relationship with spirituality, but the reason, um, like a lot of like a lot of people the other day were like, oh, Brittany, like maybe talk to this person, maybe not. And I got some DMs about it. And I was again, when I say I have a relationship with spirituality, I'm saying I have a relationship with my consciousness myself. I don't have a relationship to magic. I don't have a relationship to a God. I don't have a relationship to anything like that. Like the woo woo is something I jump into other people's bubbles to enjoy. And then I kind of adapt it into my life. But I don't actually believe in any of it. I just think it's fun. But I don't believe in it. And like what she's about to say 
makes me feel okay we'll just get into it because it makes me feel weird i pre-watched half of this so i've already seen this part but oh, i shouldn't let's just watch it the bible and it just it didn't feel it didn't feel natural and like i grew up christian so i've had experience and stuff like that it just it didn't feel like it was me it didn't feel authentic and then i look more into like okay let's just drop religion all together why don't we just look at the objective truth about it you are a human you have a spirit and that's it forget satan forget god just be a human and so I started working more on like inner child healing and like shadow healing, which is like this parts of you yeah. that you try to repress. So I did it, did it from that angle. And I'm telling you the change that I experienced and the feelings that I experienced and like everything that I experienced since I went down this path, it's, you, you can't explain it because when it's a spiritual experience, you're not gonna be able to explain something to you because it's not the same to someone else. But like, I, I'm almost suspicious of how well I've been doing because there's no way that something this simple, this easy can make me feel this good. Like I've noticed a huge change in me. And I think streaming also does help me with that because one, it keeps me structured. Um, it, it gives me an outlet to kind of do what I love, which is talking to other people and, you know, talking about trauma and stuff like that and like entertaining people, which is what I, as a kid, I suppressed a lot. I was the class clown. I always was trying to make people laugh. I was always trying to do things that got attention and whether that was, you know, stemmed from attention seeking behavior, or if it was just genuinely what I like to do, the point is I enjoy it. And doing this, you know. Okay, wait, I see your comments about Carl Jung's work. Is she talking about Carl Jung's shadow work? Or is she talking about some spiritual bubble about shadow work? Or is that the same thing? Like, are we talking about the same thing? And then did she do this with a therapist? Or did she do it on her own? It doesn't matter. Like, you know, you could do this. It does, you know. But like, I want to know what, does she ever go to therapy? Like, I want to know if she has a, because again, when I think about being a whole human being, your philosophy work, your spiritual health, that's different than your mental health. Though they can overlap, these are very different things. That's why we have a philosophy degree and a mental health degree, right? She has a therapist. Okay. Okay. I was curious if she had like done that stuff. And is she saying, saying shadow work was done through spirituality or shadow work was done through therapy? Right? Because these feel different to me. Like, I feel like the way you tackle it would be different. You know, it feeds that part of my inner child. And then things like, you know, abandonment issues. Um, I really focused on what were my triggers and how I can kind of self soothe. So, a lot of like, you know, affirmations, talking to yourself, a lot of mirror work, looking in the mirror, talking to yourself. And like, just it's, it's, it's easy, but it's also hard work because, you know, people want to stop because it is hard or because it is challenging or because it is traumatic. Like, there was a time when I came home and I did some shadow work and a bunch of traumatic experiences that I had never thought about before or known existed came up. And a lot of the things that I, happened to me as a kid, like I was seeing mental images of it. And it was very, very hard to see that because I didn't know about it until I started doing that work. These memories started to rise and then I realized exactly all the shit I went through. You know what I'm saying? And so it was like, it was very hard and I didn't want to do it. It's not, it, nobody wants to see like their worst memories played over, over and over again, but it's what needs to happen in order to change. And I, I you know... I give myself credit, but I also like, I don't know. It's just, it was like a divine experience. And I, I just, it's amazing how much it's helped me, I guess. So, okay. So you had a big breakup. Are, when you say spiritual, is there a specific religion that you're attaching to it? Or is it um, more just like a, like a new agey energy? Um, I don't like using the word new age because it's like got a negative connotation associated with it. I so would def definitely, yeah, it is, but yeah. well, yeah, but like Christianity, I think is more accepted still than compared to new age, like Wiccan and all that. And why not? So for me, I don't really label it. I just say spiritual because I don't like to acknowledge religion. I think religion is a mechanic of the government to control people. Um, I don't believe in like dividing people by religion. And that's exactly what it is. So I don't use a term. I mean, spiritual is a term, but I think it encompasses a lot. Okay, fair enough. So then do you believe in like a divine God or is it more of like a life force? It's more of like a source, like and life itself, energy itself. Um, I believe that we are like all interconnected. And like, if I had, I... I if I had to like bring Jesus or like God into it, I would say like they're a form of like an ascended master, like someone who's went through their karmic journey and like they have completed their journey. Cause I, I like, I do believe in reincarnation. I believe that, you know, matter cannot be, uh, or energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So like, it's a, a, like a philosophy like that. I believe that, you know, it's just energy. We're all here. And you know, whether it's divine, whether it's this, whether it's that polytheistic money, monotheistic, I don't care. It's what I feel. And I just address it as such. Okay. Like, so she's, she, um, Okay. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, it just feels like a person on a journey who's figuring it out and using words that make sense for her. Um, yeah, she does have a new age vibe to her, and I think that's fair. 
I also think it's fair for her to call herself spiritual. I think it's fair for her to say this is how I feel. I think it's fair for her to say that I'm not exactly, you know, sure. I think it's, for, you know, okay for her to have a belief that says like there's a, maybe a higher master or something like that. I think it's fine for her to have any relationship she wants with her spirituality. She is right. I think it is personal. I think that's okay. Um, I would like to see something a little bit more grounded from her. You know what I mean? Like I'm more of a evolution makes sense to me, but I'm not sure. But like that makes sense to me more than a God. Like I don't believe in gods. I don't believe in magic, but I'm okay with it being a part of the physical world. And once again, I will repeat this as a new slogan. I don't care if magic is real, if I still have to pay my taxes. So you know what I'm saying? Like, I love that God is real. We still have to give to Caesar what is Caesar's like, I'm out girl. No, thank you. Either magic is awesome and it makes it so we can be free of a system or like, girl, I'm in a system. Let me pay my taxes and do my thing. So I want to hear something more grounded from her, something that says, like, I know what real life is. But, like, again, we believe in God. We allow Christianity to be a big part of American culture. We allow religion to be a big part of the world's culture. So, again, we allow supernatural rhetoric into our into our legal systems. So it's not as if to say, like, New Age is any less weird than religious people. I just think religious people are in culture enough to feel normal to us. But, like, it's not any less weird. To believe in God or ghosts or magic or tarot or anything else. But again, a belief is always okay. It's it's about, you know, whether or not it's true. Why not have both? You can have both. You can have as many beliefs as you want. But again, like if you're in too many beliefs, I think it makes you feel ungrounded to me. Because again, if your whole life is just on like what you believe and nothing is on what you know, even one or two things, it makes me feel a little like concerned but that's just me being like so what are you like where can I ground you you know but maybe that's my anxiety I'm having fun with both magic and science in my life I think that's great like everyone can do them like I said not very curious about magic I'm pretty close-minded to it but again I like that people are definitely involved in it and exciting you know excited about it I think she has you all confused because she's doing something complex and the convo is how everyone expects her to be that's telling and her bit is working it out and the entire group is the Oh, I don't have to say this word. Solipsist. Um, solip, solip, I don't want to say that word. Um, I don't think she's talking about anything more complex in existence itself. Like being alive is pretty complex, but I think it's pretty simple. I think we make it more complex than it is because we've simplified it, become so redundant with our examination of ourselves and other people that we do lose the nuance. But I think the nuance should help making something so complex simple. And I think when you simplify it without the without the nuance, then you make it sort of like redundant or like reduc re reductive or you make it like it's just so empty, right? If you if you look at complex things through nuance, I think you simplify things. But if you look through complex things in a simple way, you like lose so much of the meaning. So I do think that people lose themselves in introspection and spirituality and they end up forming these beliefs that are just not true, but they live so much in the belief that they become like the new fake thing you believe in. So again, I don't want to be a person that says like magic isn't real objective because like I don't know that to be true. But again, it's like, I don't know what people mean when they say they believe in it, right? Or do we mean like literally? Do we mean like, you know what I mean? Chat, do we have to believe in God to believe in magic? No. I would say that those things can be very separate for sure. Like for sure they can be separate, right? But she did mention like a higher master, right? So she's associating her belief with something bigger, right? Or maybe not. So let's go on. Let's let's continue. Let's not assume too much here. Okay. Fair enough. Understood. Um, okay, so a major spiritual shift and because of like the, you kind of like, try, like an Amor Fati kind of approach to life, like you're like, if I got fired, that's just like what is like divine for me. I guess, do you believe in like- Definitely. I, because I- and predestination and stuff like that? Okay. I believe you do have a say in your destiny, right? Let's say like point A to point B, that's destined for you. You can choose, you know, A to, you know, this way. And take a different route but it'll be harder or you can take the easy route and i think the entire like your the entire purpose of life is to realize that life does not have to be hard that you can obtain happiness that you can feel loved that you can feel all these things if you just let go and i noticed the more i start letting go the easier my path got now time feels extremely slowed down compared to when i felt like i was zooming through life i feel like i can enjoy the moment i feel like i can be grateful for the things i have in the present and it feels like i'm just floating and when I say this, I don't want you to think that, oh, I just don't do anything. I don't make any choices. You still have to make the choices. It's just, are you making the right choices? Are you following the guidance that is given to you inherently? 
Okay. I like vibe with this, right? I think that's pretty true. I think that, you know, I think life is really short, but it's also like this really great moment in time. You can slow down or grow faster. You can lose yourself to the momentum or you can step out of it and enjoy life like one breath at a time. I think when you practice like living in the present and in the moment, which I think most of us can't do that on a regular basis. I certainly I don't live in the present at every moment, right? I'm like right now thinking about the future and thinking about what I'm going to say and thinking about the stream and thinking about going to bed tonight and thinking about, so I'm not like fully in the moment. So like time isn't going by as slowly for me, but I do think when you practice like living in the moment and you're, you know, you're vibing with it, I think that that's very true. I think like life is so great and life is so wonderful. And if you're living in the moment, it's even better. But I do think we get bogged down by like all the burdens that we have to deal with or all the struggles that can feel like very like, overwhelming and like the wave is overtaking you and then you're like oh my gosh what am I doing and it's like causing it can cause a loop it can cause mental health to go down it causes well-being to go down um I mean stress is a killer physically and mentally so we know that like the more you're not allowing life to be sort of an experience you're just like swallowed up by it it can the stress can get to you so everything she's saying there makes sense to me I would say she still sounds um like she isn't quite I think she's just discovering it, right? Like she's in the beginning steps of just discovering this kind of tool, which you can learn through therapy, which you can learn through religion, which you can learn through meditation. So it's interesting. Let's keep going. Now I'm very curious on why in her an erudite thought, right? Because if this is her mindset, what do you think led her to feeling defensive around Kyla, who is pretty hard to feel defensive around, right? So let's see what ends up happening. Yeah. Okay. So you're kind of, you believe in fate predestination and like stuff like that um and so you kind of trust that like things will work out at the end of the day yeah okay because you believe like the divine whatever it is yeah has like good intentions mm -hmm. see so she is specifying a belief in like a divine which i don't believe in i don't believe in a divine i don't really believe in fate and destiny outside of like just probability like i just think life is probable and you will probably <laughs> end up in a particular area in life and you can probably predict some of that but I don't believe in like a real sense of destiny, though I think like Andrew Tate was always going to be Andrew Tate and Sneeko has to be Sneeko and destiny has to be destiny and I have to be me. But I do think that we can be in sort of the wave of life and then step out of it and do something else because I believe in free will as well. And I think that you can change your destiny if you believe in that or your fate. Like I don't believe in it enough to think like what's going to happen is always going to happen. Um, so it's kind of one of those things, right? Brittany, how much time have you spent practicing living in the moment? I've heard you go through several phases of that over the years. Um, I'm still practicing it. I am not as in it right now. Uh, when I think of living in the like moment and practicing like present moment, I'm not doing it right now as frequently. We're doing once a month meditation stuff so I can practice it. But to be honest with you, it is extremely spoon draining, even though it feels amazing. It also is extremely exhausting. So I'm still on my journey. I'm in the beginning steps of my journey. You know what I mean? Of learning to live in the present. I'm like a few years in. So I'm definitely a person who's who's just like, I'm still a baby in this, in this world, right? About, about living in the present. You know what I mean? Living in the moment is a huge part of DBT with BPD. You usually practice it multiple times a day. Um, I think I'm talking about something different, right? Cause like being in the present moment as like a mental health practice, like that's obvious, but I mean in a spiritual way. So wait, what are we talking about? Are we talking about spirituality? Are we talking about mental health? Cause mental health, Yes, but like living in the moment, present meditation, that's like spiritual spirituality to me. Are we talking about the same thing? Are we see are we talking about different bubbles? Uh oh. Okay. Understood. Hmm. It's like kind of like Amor Fati, but that's my Who is that? Too. Oh. That's your type? Yeah. Oh, well, I have no room to talk. You should see my type. So yeah. <laughs> Wait, what do you not like? I didn't I don't find him attractive, no. No. Oh. Hey Nick. Can you come here for a second? He looks like an Indian version of Russ. You know what? who Russ is? <laughs> I'm Merc. She says, What's up? The Indian version of Russ. Who's Russ? Unless Russ is already Indian. Cherry Hill, you know what? Russ. Wow. All right. All right, buddy. All right. I'm biracial. I'm Jamaican. Irish. Okay, logic. What's Merc? I'm black and white. What are you, Merc? She says, Yeah, black, black and white. white. Black and white. Yeah. What kind of white? They have like the, the same screen? skin tone. Do they literally match? They kind of look like cousins or siblings. Wait, this is kind of weird. Am I crazy? Do they literally look related? I don't...
No, white, Caucasian from the Caucasus Mountain region, okay? White people. White people, she said. I'm white. That is my biggest pet peeve when white people are like, oh, I'm 10% this, I'm 10%. You're white. You're white, all right? All it's white okay. It's the same. It doesn't matter if you're Irish. I mean, it's not all... the same. They have different origins, but it's whenever they get to the nitty gritty, like, oh, I'm 10% this, 5%. Like, shut up, okay? If, like, you're 50 50, I get it. Like, if you come from Sweden, you're like 100% Sweden, cool. If you come from South Africa and you're 100% South African, cool. But, like, don't, we don't give a fuck about the percentages. Let's be real, Karen. Nobody gives a f how much percentage of black you got in you because a cock don't count. Anyway, sorry. I went on a rant. This is the performative stuff. I see you guys being a little like, why is she doing this to poor Nick? But like, honestly, I think this is part of the performative part of her character, right? Like, oh, her character says it like it is. And so, and then I also think it's like a part of her just letting herself run loose. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, she's like, this is like a part of this. I don't think she's trying to be offensive. I think people like this from her. They're like, yes, tell me I'm ugly. You know what I mean? She says your cock doesn't count. Oh, yeah. Cock doesn't count? Yeah, your cock don't count, dude. As what? Like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It beats me. It's not real. I'm an ethereal. Oh, I, well, all right. See you why, and, okay. All right. Bye, buddy. <laughs> uh, damn. You instantly roasted him, but you still gave me nothing. I got an annoying yeah. voice. Is my voice yeah. better now, or is it still kind of talk show hosty? Still talk show hosty. You just can't really? change that. Yeah. I could talk deeper. I you could get a voice training. Like, a voice training. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I've always wanted to have a voice that's like you know, like those girls that sound like a cigarette. Is selling chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What you said sexy cigarettes. No, I, that is not what I mean. Uh, oh, that sounds like, like a unsexy yeah, cigarette. Baby. Um, yeah, put it no. in. Oh, it's Kyla in my chat right now. Hi, Kyla. Should I neurodivergently flirt with you as well? <laughs> this is very interesting. I'm very excited to see why you guys fight later. I'm like very excited to see why you guys fight later. I'm so interested in how it goes from this vibe, which seems like you guys are getting really along to where it goes like very interested to see where it goes and also does she not look like your husband ma'am does she not look like your husband's cousin what is happening here no that's more like a porn uh, star cigarette uh, damn well, hey, <laughs> is that what I, i'm giving you everything things. here no it's none okay, of those things okay. actually give me zero zilch not a okay not a fan okay. of any of those things damn okay so you don't like my husband say that. that i guess i, I did, did. It, 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 Oh, yeah, I hate, yep, 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 I hate people on the internet. Yep, yep. that means you. Yep, You're all positive you. vibe spirituality until, uh, you know, somebody yeah. comes and threatens your domain. And then, yeah, yeah, that's exactly out. what it is. Yep, yep, fuck yeah, Russ, dude. Real. Yo, fuck Russ. Yo, fuck Russ, dude. Okay, so who have you talked to that you've liked the most in the space? I mean, you're pretty cool. I, uh, I mean, I'm not, like, coming from a biased you know perspective i feel like i don't know it could be cringe but, we've been talking for like five minutes and i feel like i've shown you has it been five minimal, minutes or has it been 50 minutes it's been 30 minutes oh damn it it feels like forever with you oh thanks kyla says i misread her it does wrong when i presume she enjoys and bonds through debate and i was dead ass wrong oh interesting okay okay i'm excited to see that part come up it happens no big deal Right? That shit happens, as you've seen with all of us on the internet. It happens, so no big deal. Um, okay. I'm interested to see how it goes down then. Yeah, I'm interested to see how it goes down. I think a lot of people make that, to be fair, I think a lot of people make that assumption, even with me, that, like, I like to debate. My brother made that assumption with me, like, before I left for Europe. He's like, I thought you liked to spar in debates. I was like, not anymore. It's been years since I've been interested in that. I like a discussion. And I do think that that is normal when you have like very dominant personalities and you're in this space to assume the debate desire because I think a lot of people do love to debate in this space. I, I'm i not really a fan of it, but I think people do think you do like, like people do like it. So I think that's a really normal assumption, right? I feel like that's a very, almost like a fair assumption, but also fair that you weren't like quite seeing her in that way. Very interested to get to it. I feel like I've been boring. I, I both just asked you, I guess people like being asked questions about themselves. Yeah, I mean, I like talking. About, who who doesn't like talking about themselves? Like, let's be honest here. Like, people like sure. talking about themselves. And also, I think it's important to talk about yourself because the more you start to talk, the more that will come out, like, word vomit, and then you'll be like, ah, like, oh, that's why I feel this way. Or this, yeah, just talking. Just get it out, you know? Get them words out, boys. You heard it here. Mm -hmm. Number one spot. Um, okay, so you've enjoyed just talking to people. Who have you actually liked, though, the most? Like, who have you clicked with? Um... I mean, there's people that I like talking to that I, I would talk to again because just because I want to. But like for as far as like clicking with someone, um, I don't think I've really clicked with anyone yet. I think that 
there I've had good conversation, but there's not like a, a streamer that I've really just vibed with. I think you, I, I would consider you because this is like the first somewhat positive experience I think I've had or non-biased, I should say, because it's either been negative, completely positive uh-huh. or, you know, non-biased. And you're the first non-biased person I think I've talked to. Who you, who did you beef with? Um, like, and I'm not talking about personally with the person, I just mean the experience itself, whether it was like good or bad, like yeah. the whole XQC stream, that was, that was just terrible. I didn't, I did not like that at all. That was one night where I went to bed and I was like, Fuck. but I didn't actually I don't, see it. So I have no, I don't have any, I don't actually just, watch Destiny's content very much though. So. It was just, I was worried and didn't have faith that I would have another opportunity to talk to him. So I went in at the wrong time under the wrong circumstances and it just, it, it was a recipe for disaster and I blew it, dude. I blew it. Did feel like I kind of like this energy, right? Like this particular conversation. I kind of like because I think we all do it on the internet. We all misread the situation. We all kind of like come into it with a certain personality or energy, and then it's kind of like cringy, and that's normal. So I kind of feel like that's really nice that she's saying that. Like she had a very normal I think we've all done that on the internet as content creators we're like fuck that did not go the way I wanted I said a dumb joke or like oh I didn't act like the version of myself I would have preferred or um I misread the room so I kind of like that she's saying she had this experience so short-lived into her career or her time on the internet and then had a real realization of like this isn't what I wanted from the experience. So I think that's a pretty a good sign from her so far, right? That's like one of the best things she said so far. Like seemed so, like he didn't like you or like was he annoyed? I, I mean, I don't I think he was very like distant from it like that. Like I don't think he felt any type of way, but I genuinely think that maybe like near the end he kind of got annoyed with me. Um, which I mean I I I, I don't want to hear that, but like I was annoying. I'm I'm gonna admit it. I was annoying, I was cringe. It was just it was just a bad night. It was just a bad night, an off night and you know, I, I think it just sucks because, like, I genuinely, like, wanted to talk to him and, like, like I don't know, not just because, like, obviously he's – I'm attracted to him, but, like, I just – that's why I was trying to ask, like, career questions and stuff because he is so successful and he does – he is very similar to me in, like, the like the way we behave. Um, Not that I have talked to him too much to know, but, like, just how he streams and stuff. Like, I find him funny because I find it, like, it'd be something that I would do. Wait, wait, wait. Is she talking about XQ- – is she talking about Felix? Is she talking about XQC? Is that his name? Felix? No. Is that his name? Yeah, XQC. Is, that, is she talking about him right now? Some of you in chat are saying that she was looking for clout and Turkey Tom put her in her place. I mean, she's obviously said she's attracted to him. So she's got crushed goggles, which don't crush on XQC. He's a hot mess right now. He's figuring himself out. Why do women find these men so attractive? I understand. I was in my 20s once. Don't. Leave him alone. He's working on himself right now. He's busy. He just cheated on his last relationship. He needs a moment. He needs time. Stop dating men who cheat. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, leave XQC alone. Let him talk to Dr. K and get a real therapist and work on himself. Is she talking about XQC right now? Is that what she's saying? Leave him alone. Don't fuck with men who recently... He just broke up with his girlfriend over cheating. Or she just recently dumped him over cheating. Leave these cheating men alone. Stop being attracted to their hot mess. So wait, is she... She's talking about him, right? Yeah, like she just said it. But Brittany, they can fix him. No. No. Don't. His therapist and his priest and everything else. She just got a tattoo of him? No, that's not real. That's not real. (sighs) Tell me that's not real. Ugh. This is my, this is my concern, right? Like this is, this is what I'm going to say is dysfunctional, right? And again, we're not, we're not like, I'm not saying like she's a bad person. Um... I'm saying this is like, why is she, that, that's why it didn't work out with XQC, right? Cause she was, she even now is giving off these vibes of like, like, don't make him your favorite person, girl. Eh, no. XQC, uh, is that what happened with XQC? I didn't know he cheated. He just put out a really great video on it. It's really good, actually. It's like an hour and 40 minutes. The first half is like, first 40 minutes is really good. And then the next half is about like friendships and drama. But if you watch him admit it, take accountability for it, talk about how it had hurt his ex, and then she also, like, doesn't make him out to be a villain but, like, holds him accountable, it's a really great display of the conversation. Now, obviously, I don't know these people, so I don't know how authentic everyone's being, but it seems really thoughtful. You know, I really like the way they handled it because, you know, cheating sucks. But leave XQC alone. He's in a cheating phase. He has no discipline. He's working on it. He's facing himself right now. He's on a journey. Leave him alone. 
Okay. Stop dating men. Stop dating broken men because you think you will fix them. Right. Stop dating broken men because you're broken. Stop it. Stop it. So I just, you know, I just, I ruined it and I just got to, I got to move on. It was a lesson to not always jump at the first opportunity because a better opportunity may come. Okay. Uh, do you have an XQC tattoo? No, I oh, do not. Shit. Where did you hear that insane uh, lie? Oh. oh, does she? Where Where did you hear that from? What are you thoughts? talking about? Thoughts on the tattoo? Is there on, somebody's saying it's on your finger. <laughs> Does it, it just says X. Oh my gosh, you actually have an XQC tattoo. Can I explain? Okay, so. You can, so, but I've already reserved my judgment, okay? Okay, I know, it's I crazy. Uh, so when I first Sorry. started, uh, like the usuals that would come in, um, I was like making up like uh, goals for subs, right? And I was like, oh, because at the time, like we would like talk about XQC and stuff like that, and it wasn't this extreme. And I was like, oh, I, at 300 subs, I'll get an XQC tattoo. Yeah. And and I was like, it, that'll never happen. And then sure enough, if it can happen, and then I was like, well, maybe if people will forget about it. And then they didn't forget about it. And then it got to a point where it was like, I really, I don't want to do it. But at the same time, if I Can say I'm going to do, do something, yeah, I yeah. want to be the one who does it. So then randomly, I went out shopping for my birthday on Saturday. And I just, I got it. I, I got it. I, I don't pay attention to it. I forget that I even have it. Um, is it Get my first it. stupid tattoo? Get rid of it. 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 This is the time where, yes, you've made a decision. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Change your, change your brand. Get rid of it. It's weird, get rid of it. It's socially awkward, get rid of it. Like, it's just too parasocial, get rid of it. It's like, what was that amazing um, model, guys, that like is in the Kev on D world, but not in Kev on D world? She's like in the goth model world. She has like a kid and a family. She's really lovely. And she had one of the, the not swastika, swastika tattoos, the one that's like for Buddhism or whatever. And she got it covered up because like the internet just didn't know the difference. And like, she couldn't explain the difference every time. And it got exhausting. Just cover it up. Change it. Get rid of it. It was a mistake. Get rid of it. No. Is it going to be my last? No. That's just me. I think it's, you know, it's something positive. It reminds me of how far I've come, yeah. um, you know, how much I've done for myself. And it reminds me of, you know, what could good could come from all this. So, yeah. I I think it's funny. I think it's cool. The origin story is hilarious. It's I mean not cool, Kyla. Don't engage. Don't encourage. Kyla? You're too nice. You encourage. I'm going to be less nice now. I refuse. I'm not encouraging this. If I was her older sister, I would say, I love you so much. Get rid of it. Do you know my little baby sister, who's so amazing, who's so lovely, got a really cool, she has tattoos all over. She got a really cool tattoo of me as a mermaid. I love oceans. I'm a mermaid. I have an ocean view apartment. I love the ocean. And at first it was like really cool. But eventually people thought it was a memorial tattoo. They thought it was weird that I was on her sleeve. And eventually she got it removed. Because as much as it's a cool gesture from sister to sister, because we have matching Disney tattoos as well, as much as it is, it, it, it wasn't a vibe, okay? After a while, it just wasn't a vibe, and I 100% supported my sister's decision to get rid of the tattoo. She literally, yes, Discord, she tattooed my face on her, and I wasn't even dead. So like, okay, I 100% understand we make these decisions. It was a beautiful tattoo. It was a beautiful tattoo. It was so good. But it just like, didn't convey who she was in a way that didn't bring more harm than good, right? Like I, I love nonconformity, be yourself, but make sure you're also harm reducing with your rebellion, right? It's like I am myself, I do whatever I want, build a bear life, all that, but I want to bring less harm. You want to harm reduce. And I'm not convinced as from what I've heard right now, that this XQC tattoo is part of harm reduction. So again, be rebellious, Go out there, put prosthetics in your face, tattoo your whole body from head to toe, as long as it contributes to harm reducing. So if it brings more harm reduction, do it. But if it doesn't, get rid of it, okay? And I'm going to bet that this is not going to harm reduce, okay? Okay, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Because I like, wait, like it, I'm not going to lie. If the origin story was like, well, I'm just a really big fan of XQC yeah. and I just like want to remember him, that'd be yeah. a lot more cringe than like, yeah. Well, I made a deal that if I got this, if my chat did this, then I'll do this. And, and here's the yeah, thing. I'm not thing. actually, and I, people say this is a cope or I'm trying to convince myself, but like, I don't, I'm not actually obsessed. Like I make it out on the internet. I just know that parasocial relationships are a hot topic on the internet. And if you can like farm reactions and drama from like, it's funny. It's funny. Like being a crazy woman on the internet, like after like falling in love with this guy and like obsessing over him now in real life, I've had a conversation about this in real life. If I ever see this man, I'm running and hiding because one, I've embarrassed myself insanely. Uh, so uh and i'm very shy around attractive men genuinely like attractive men make me fucking nervous mm. what is the like, part of xqc that's attractive is it his trash panda ways or is it his cheating habits 
Like, don't get me wrong. XQC is physically fine. He's very attractive, whatever, in, in his own way. Like, that's not the problem. But again, isn't that funny that she creates an image of herself? Like, she's cock-blocking herself. If she's actually interested in him romantically, you probably don't want to get a tattoo of him and create a persona on the internet where you're in love with him because that actually makes it so he probably won't want to date you because you might be scary stalker, right? So in some ways, is she self-sabotaging for a reason? Like, it's just like, again, you do you, I don't care. But if she's hiding in shame, if she ever sees him, see how I'm hearing a lot of negative things? Where is the positive? Oh, this is the dumbest thing I ever did. This tattoo is stupid. These are negative words. If she, if this was really going to benefit her, I hear a lot of more optimistic language, peoples. Then you could hang out with Nick because you don't think he's attractive. So then he wouldn't make you nervous. Who's that? Nick. Your husband? Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'd just be bullying him the whole time. That's okay. He can handle it. Okay. So attractive men make you nervous. Do attractive women? Hold on. It says, that's my question. I understand. That's why you want to do harm reduction. Why should she conform or anyone else? Isn't it the right, their right of agency possibility to F up? For herself, are you fixing? No, I don't give a fuck. Like, literally, she could die tomorrow and it'd be life. Like, everyone's going to die. Like, it doesn't matter. But again, if you are using negative words, if you're being negative, get rid of it. Don't be afraid to move on. So many people double down on their mistakes because they're afraid that, like, oh, it will say something about me if I take it back. I'm giving her permission to change her mind. Right? So, yes, it's not about conforming. It's about saying I'm allowed to change my mind. There is nothing wrong with getting rid of this tattoo. There is nothing wrong with, with letting it go and moving on with your life. But if she doubles down on this and she doubles down on being the obsessed girl who quote unquote falls in love with XQC, that's fine. But that's the choice she's making. And I'm saying you don't have to make that choice. I know you already got kind of popular from that choice. You already got a connection to XQC and you're being kind of um, rewarded, right? You're getting rewarded by the negative persona but I'm saying you don't have to she just said oh it's kind of funny being like a crazy girl on the internet cool I'm giving you permission to change your mind you will not be seen as someone who like oh look at her she's so ashamed she got rid of her tattoo get rid of it girl it's okay it's fine like I give you permission would it make you nervous or just no I'm very I'm very for some reason with men I'm submissive with women I'm dominant so like mm. you're attractive and that's why I can like joke around and be like, yeah, like I want to fuck you type shit because it's just, I view it like, yeah, like, a, like, like a, a boy. A boy. I was going to say you're a little yeah. frat boy with women. Okay, yeah, interesting. exactly. But with men, you get nervous and ooh, ooh. Yes. I'm very submissive with men. But I feel like not talking to them isn't even submissive. That's like shy. No, just in general. Like in general, I'm very like, like very I will not talk to a guy. Un yeah. Unless he talks to me, what he says goes. And like, I, I don't know, just like, yeah, that's how I am with men, but until they until you get comfortable then you're gonna try to peg them i mean yeah I'm out, don't get me wrong like generally like non like platonically i'm very outgoing you just have to like the initial nerves because you like it's like when you stream you don't go out that often i don't go out that often i don't talk to people whenever i'm not streaming i don't talk to people because i don't get any texts nobody hits me up unless they're other streamers and that's it i have no friends i have nothing in real life so fair enough so the internet is i feel like a lot of people find their community through the internet that's okay guys when you're like oh it sounded like a very strong suggestion more than giving permission, it is. I am strongly suggesting as an older sister slash auntie, get rid of this fucking tattoo. I am strongly suggesting you do this thing, but it doesn't matter because we're all going to die and we're floating consciousness on a planet and it doesn't matter. But and she believes in reincarnation, so it really doesn't matter, right? She literally believes in reincarnation, which I don't, so it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Don't get it like removed. I'm just strongly suggesting that I am making a prediction for this woman's life that I have known nothing about, that getting rid of this tattoo will be better than keeping the tattoo. I am absolutely being an older sister right now and saying, get rid of it. I am saying that like an older sister would. But you don't have to. You know, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. like if you're an internet person, have you always been an internet person? I was. So like when I was young, I grew up having like a bunch of consoles and stuff. And we always had like new PlayStations, new Xboxes, PCs. Like we always had that stuff. And then, like, I took a little disconnect from it because then, like, my grandparents disowned me, which are the people who basically raised me and had the money to do all that. So then, like, I didn't have as much. And then, like, the older I got, the more I kind of found solace in the internet because it's weird because whenever I first started getting on the internet, it was around, I want to say, sixth, seventh grade. That's when, like, 
popularity was becoming a thing and like if you didn't dress this way if you didn't do like you were kicked out right so i had a best friend that i'd had since i was young young and she just stopped being my friend because you know it, it wasn't the cool thing to do i was poor i was tall i was ugly nobody liked me like that's what it was and then you know She's i tall. really turned to music and getting in touch with music and in love with music led me to other avenues like social media because I would go to YouTube and then I would find YouTubers and that's really how it started. I've always been on the internet, but I've not been a streamer long. Like I would like, I don't know. It just, I was always the one consuming the content. I was never the one making it. Mm. Okay. And so now you want to like make it. Um, so what's your long-term goal? You just want to like make more content? Have a fun um, time? My, my long-term goal, like the ultimate goal, um, if we're talking about streaming would be to have like to venture venture off into other things like podcasts i want to do a podcast i already have the title picked out uh i've been manifesting that a lot that's the title oh you probably don't i can't tell you the title because what if someone steals it and then there's yeah. no proof and it's not patented um so yeah podcast uh what do you want to do on the podcast what do you want your i want to i want to get high and just talk okay i just want to call- i just want to talk super high and then just talk about anything that comes to mind basically yeah highly recommend snoop dogg show where he literally gets high and just talks it's the greatest like snoop dogg you want to get high and just talk go on snoop dogg show that's the dream the dream is to be invited onto snoop dogg show yes yes okay. and also munch so like mukbang mixed with like you know q and a's and smoking weed and i would get weed sponsorships and stuff like that and like smoke products on on the stream and stuff like that so yeah yeah okay interesting why can i ask you a serious question Mm-hmm. I'm just jumping everywhere with questions. So if that's I, fine. That's how my brain works anyway. Okay. Why do you think that you, you said it's made, you've made it sound like your, your childhood sounds a little bit rough knowing that your grandparents raised you. That's always like a, mm-hmm. obviously something happened. Uh, and you're also saying that you don't have any friends IRL. So I mm-hmm. guess my question is like, what's going on for you IRL? Like, what do you think caused you to like struggle so much with IRL connection? Uh, because of everything I've been through, I think um, I was my growth was definitely stunted because the age where all of it started was eight. So you have to kind of nag- navigate through life as an eight year old for a long period of time, which means you fall behind socially and like all these other ways, especially like economically. So it's like it was it was really hard for me to make friends. And then it, it got to a point where I wasn't making friends, so I wasn't building those skills. And then when it got to a point where everyone's, you know, social circles were already formed, it was like, well, why even bother? And like now, like it makes it harder because everyone is different and they don't think like me. And, you know. I tend to wear my heart on my sleeve. So I, I meet people thinking, oh, this is going to be my lifelong friend. But then they just like disappear. And, you know, I, I guess I put value in things that normal people don't put value. Ah, okay. Let me tell you, as somebody who's gone back and forth with like new friends um, and as somebody who's like has like this inner circle of friends that I'm going to know until I die because we've made that decision, I will say learning that people come in and out of your lives for moments of time. Like I love Kyla. I'm so glad we're friends. But how long will that last? Will I know Kyla when I'm 90? right? Like, I don't know, but probably not. I'm assuming one day, maybe in our 40s or 50s, we'll do different things. Maybe we won't be content creators. And so I think sometimes when we're meeting people, we are told they're supposed to be with us forever because once a friend, always a friend. But like, is that true? Does it need to be that way? That sounds like a lot of pressure. I think one thing I've learned throughout my life is be grateful for the people that are meant to be closer to you, like your 2 a.m. calls, and then be grateful when people come into your life and you know them. Like one of my homies just texted me yesterday and they were like, oh my gosh, we've known each other over 10 years. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I love our friendship, right? Like it's a great friendship. And I hope that I know them forever, but I don't know. Maybe like life will take us in di- different directions. Maybe um, maybe we'll die young. Like I don't know how long I'll know them, right? But I hope to know them for as long as it makes sense for us to do it. I don't want to put pressure on people to know me forever except my inner circle. Those are the only people I put pressure on to like stay in my life because I'm like, oh my gosh, what? Like hello? Because I kind of see my friends as sort of like soulmates and those people – agree with me that they're going to be in my life forever so it's kind of it's very consensual but other friends I meet I just like I'm happy to know you for as long as I know you and I look forward to you going on your way it sounds like this girl Merck Merck is Merck her name guys I just want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly I think she's having the experience of not even an inner circle friend like not even a true friend like a friend that's your 2 a.m call so it does feel like I'm she's without that and that could be really difficult um and that can be very different like that's a very different lived experience right i think um you know what is friendship so needs to be defined i was just listening to papa gut talk about this and how he's like uh, i'm really picky with who's my friend i feel like we're all acquaintances and i kind of feel like i'm the opposite where i'm like eh, everyone's my friend but it doesn't mean anything so i'm not sure like you know what i mean what does it mean to be a friend right it's really hard it, it's really difficult i'll you in um i.e like uh, friendships and stuff like like when you like go to bars and stuff and you meet people, you think it's going to be a, 
consistent thing. And I know that I'm rambling and like not making a lot of sense. It's just with my brain. I have a lot of thoughts that I want to say and I'm, I'm not the best at like articulating them. But yeah, that's it. You're making sense to me. I understand. But yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's just always been, always been difficult and I've tried to work on it, but I think now I, I value my time alone a lot and I do a lot of self-reflection and I find solace within myself. Like friendships don't really matter. I mean, it'd be nice to have friendships you know, they're important, I think, but you know, realizing that you don't need anybody to be happy. You don't need anybody to have, you know, these feelings, these positive feelings, like, you know, as long as I do things a healthy way, like I still go out. It's not like I have agoraphobia or anything. Like I still go out, but it's like, okay, two things. I have got to tinkle because I've been drinking too much water. I've pre-watched this. We're not caught up at the point where I stopped watching yet. So I've seen this segment. I'm going to run to the bathroom really fast. I'm going to keep it playing for you guys. I'm sure Kyla won't mind if I'm not commenting on her stuff for a few minutes. I will be right back. Keep watching. If anything interesting happens, message me. But I have pre-watched this section, so I think I remember what she says. Um, but, like, just message me if you guys think I've missed something interesting. I'll be right back. Like, I don't have any interest in doing what other people are doing. So I think when you started out on stream and stuff, um, that there was kind of that, like, class clown, uh, like, behavior and mentality maybe going yeah. on. Because like, I find that class clowns are very, they're very performative, mm -hmm. um, and uh, nobody cares about them. Uh, beyond like their performance and how entertaining they are, which has always led to, I'm oftentimes friends with yeah. class clowns um, because uh, I'm usually willing to kind of see them more complexly, but I find they're often pretty lonely people. Mm -hmm. They might be like popular and stuff like that. Well, that's, well, that's the thing. It most definitely is that it stems from my loneliness, but it's like, I, and I don't want to sound like I have like a, a savior complex or like this martyr like mindset, but I want people to feel the opposite of how I felt. I want to make people laugh. I want to make people happy. And when I'm online, like, don't get me wrong, like, I'm not not happy, but like, I still I still find joy in entertaining people because I know that, you know, life is rough. I used to be that way. I know how bad it can get like the shit I've been through. It's, it's terrible. And I know that you never know who's going through something. And you never know, like, how much of an effect you have on people until like you actually hear from them. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's just it makes me feel good about myself. I like meeting people I like talking to people I like hanging out. And I just want to make people laugh. And I want to make people talk. And I want to make people forget about what's off of the internet. You want to rescue people from the things you wish people had been willing to rescue you from. Yeah, but it doesn't, it's not, it, it is that, it is that um, idea or ideology, but at the same time, like, I don't, it's not coming from, like, a place of, like, deficiency. Like, it's not like I'm suffering, so that's why I'm doing it. It's just, I know that I used to go through that, and I don't know, now I'm able to focus more clearly on what I meant to do. Interesting. Yeah, that's tough. Sounds very lonely. Lonely? Being on the internet all the time? Uh, needing to be on the internet all the time. Oh, I don't, well, I wouldn't say I need to be on the internet all the time. It's just where I find comfort, and it's just what I enjoy doing. I work a full-time job. I'm around kids all day. I talk to other people, and I don't know. I just, I have faith that when I'm meant to, like, have certain friendships or relationships, they'll come to me. Right now, I'm focusing on working on myself and making myself happy first, so. Fair enough. Okay. Um, what made you hopeful in talking to me? Like, what, what was things that you wanted to talk to me about? Well, obviously you have pretty girl privilege and that is a real thing. Like you look attractive and humans prefer people who are attractive compared to people who aren't. So that was what caused me to be very open. Do you think um, that you have pretty girl privilege? Or would you oh, say for I sure. have pretty girl privilege? Yeah. Okay. Cool. yeah, for sure. For sure. And I, and I use it because like, why would I not use that privilege I have? I'm not going to let it go to waste. People have privilege that they let go to waste and it's, you know, it's foolish, I think. So yeah, I try to use it as much as possible, um, which maybe sounds arrogant, maybe sounds self-absorbed, but it's the truth. Um, no, like I just, I feel like, like I said, it's just like a feeling thing. I feel good about it. I feel like this is just my chance to kind of talk and have a real conversation. And people really like you, so you must be doing something good. My chat really likes you. Some Brenda, they want really to like fuck me. you. <laughs> some people like me. There's a lot of people who have a really strong hatred towards me as well. But yeah, definitely some people like me. See, that's what I don't get. Like how, unless like you've met the person IRL and like know they're actually a shitty person. I guess it's like the whole, the internet is more guilty until proven innocent compared to innocent until proven guilty. Like people already think that you're this evil person and you're not because like, but then again, you can't sit there and explain it to people because they're, they've already got their minds made up. So what is the point of conversation? If you're like, oh, well, you're on the internet, you deserve to be critiqued. Okay, but what is the point of a critique? It's to make change, it's to make positive change, right? So it's like, if you've already made your mind up, there's no point in having a conversation because you're not going to change your mind. Do you and have, I'm not going to see your side. Do you know like the 80-20 rule? Mm -hmm. The 80-20 rule is like 80% of people are like normal. And are open mm -hmm. to having their minds changed about you. And 20% of people, it doesn't matter what you say or do. They just will always hate you no matter what. Uh, they will always find you detestable. And it doesn't matter like what you say about it or mm -hmm. what you try to do, basically. I feel like the internet 
the 20% are very strong sometimes. Um, and I feel like the 20% can be so strong that they like sometimes convince the other 80% to like, like, I don't think people on the internet realize how much their opinions on things are as a result of like peer pressure and like audience mm -hmm. reaction, right? Like if I watch a video and I react and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so funny. My audience will, for the yeah. most part, not all of them, but a lot of them will think that it's funny. Whereas if I watch the exact same video, I'm like, oh my God, this is awful. They yeah. don't be like, this is so horrible, yeah. right? And I think for people sure. don't realize the amount of like peer pressure that happens. And I think like there's something that happens on the internet specifically where like negativity and anonymity like come together. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know what I just missed, but I think I remember this watching this last night. I will say something um, that stands out to me, I guess, is in terms of people changing their mind about you. I think it's completely up to them if they want to see you as like a real person or a character in their head. So I do think most people are open to seeing you as a real person as long as they feel authenticity coming from you. And I think a lot of us feel authentic when we're actually putting up like tons of walls. And I will say when you have put up lots of walls and you feel like someone who's hiding behind a curtain, it doesn't feel authentic because it's not really, right? So I will say one of the ways that I have learned to become extremely close to people and make friends very easily is just by not having as many walls up. So I had to go to therapy. I had to work on myself. I had to do all of these things because the truth is, is that um, people want to know you. People want to make friends. People are so lonely. But again, are you meeting the right people to be the right kind of friend? Like often what happens with me is I'm really recognizing I'm like an agreeable listener. When people talk, I'm like, yes, absolutely. I understand that totally. And it makes people think I'm agreeing with what's being said when I'm just saying I understand why you feel that way. So I'm working on myself not to be an agreeable listener because I do think it sends the wrong message to the people that are hearing the conversation, to the person that's hearing me. And so what happens is people go, oh, Brittany gets it. She's like me. And I'm like, whoa, I am not like you. I just understand where you're coming from. But then they'll say, but when I was talking, you were agreeing with me. You were like nodding your head and saying, yes, queen. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, I'm at fault right there. I'm at fault for not making it clear like I like you, but we don't agree. Oh, that's interesting. Why do you think that? But when you're an agreeable listener, when you say like, oh, yeah, I see you. I get that. People hear that as you're like me. So there's a lot of miscommunication that just happens, whether we like it or not, subconsciously, sometimes when we're just trying to be nice or be mannered. Mm -hmm. Nasty coalition where like the 20% seems bigger and stronger. And then the 80% will be like, oh, gosh, like I guess a lot of people do hate this person because like... Mm -hmm there's these deranged people screaming, even though if you look through it, there's like six to seven of, of like mm -hmm. deranged haters. They're just really loud and squeaky. Yeah. I, I think for me, like in order to be a content creator, you have to be somewhat self-absorbed. And I think saying that I'm not is like a lie and I'd rather be honest and lie. But like, I def there's definitely times where like I will pay very close attention to what is being said about me just so I can kind of gauge like the audience because like the whole point is to entertain people and like I have to take their opinion if I want to entertain them. So I definitely have been recently paying more attention to that, but also recognizing that I myself have set a boundary to not let it affect me off the internet. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really in a process of trying to balance that right now, taking the bad with the good and transmuting it into something positive, which I mean, at the end of the day, if I see people saying shit about me, like genuinely hurtful shit about it, like I acknowledge that one, they have a right to have that opinion, even though it's wrong. It's the wrong opinion. Mm -hmm. But and I try my best to just, you know, continue being true to myself and focus on the people who actually do love me and who do care about me and who do want me around and want to watch me. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at some of your metrics. Uh, yeah, 4,200 on kick. I mean, you're hold on, hold on. Okay, this is the thing I don't understand about performative content creators, like character people who are playing characters. This is my confusion with them a little bit. You know how Andrew Tate is playing an obvious character, but also is sharing his own ideas about the world? How do you parse what is the character and what is the person? And then, you know, I assume when he's saying things matter-of-factly, like in his courses, he's being 100% honest. And at the same time, he's obviously being performative with, well, with how he plays it up, Right. He's too good at social media not to be performative. And then in some ways, his viewers are like, I know the real Andrew Tate because I can see what's performance and what's not. But I'm sitting here like, maybe? But how do you know if he never tells you? And is he only not performing? Or is he always performing and then not performing? It's too confusing. Like, you have to make a decision. So when she says, like, the real people who love me, or is she saying the real people who know me? But Sorry, I should not bang my desk. Okay. Is she saying... The real people who know me and love me for who I am, but I have no friends. Is she saying the people who love the persona of herself on the internet? Because if she has no friends, like who loves you? Who are these people who love you? If you have no friends, then the parasocial relationship you're getting from your audience on the internet do not love you. 
They, they only love the version of you that you're willing to show and the version of you in their heads, which is still valid, right? Like I love content creators, what I know of them. Like I love certain people on the internet. I say that I use that language. I'm like, oh yeah, I love them. I don't know anything about them. Like I can't vouch for them. Like I can't vouch for a lot of people. I can only vouch for people in ways that I understand them and little ways we've interacted. Like I can vouch for Abba and the small interaction I've had with him that he is or seems to be a total gentleman when he's with me. I have nothing but good things to say about Abba, right? But if somebody was like, do you know Abba when he's around children? Like, no, I, I don't. But kind of, because on his video, sometimes he shows his niece and show, he's really good with her and he talks really well of like family life and maybe I can put some things together. But I, Brittany, have in person in real life never seen him around children. But I assume he's as loving and wonderful as he seems on the internet. But maybe that's just an image he's putting out, right? We all only see what we can see. And even when you've talked to someone privately, it's like, what does that even mean, right? I mean, Kyla and I have definitely talked in private. And so I know a little bit about Kyla. But gosh, I don't know as much, like, I don't know as much as I would need to know to feel very confident in, like, also predicting a lot of her behavior. Like, you would a sister or a brother or someone you were raised with. Or, like, you know your mom because you know you've seen your mom your whole life. You're like, oh, I can tell you what my mom about to do. But it's different. So again, these levels of intimacy we have with people, we can be observing the character or trope of a person and say, I think they're probably going to do this. And I can say, oh, Merck is probably going to do X, Y, and Z. But I don't really know that because I don't know which version of her is real. So just as a casual viewer myself who's seeing her for the first time in this video, and this is the context I know her in, I've never seen her in any other context, I can say, oh, one of the things I'm concerned about is I don't know which version of her is real, except the version of her that says like, that sounds like she's in her feelings, that maybe is more authentic. And then the person who's like, ah, <laughs> that person is the performance. So that's how my brain is like putting her in different categories. The person who's talking about her feelings is the real version. And the person who's flirting with Kyla is the fake version. That's kind of how I'm understanding it so far. We're killing it on kick. 252 viewers live right now. You're doing awesome, actually. I appreciate it. That's great. And it's only been a month. That's really, really good. Your clips are all gone. Oh, no. There they are. 28,000 right. views from a 12 day <laughs> ago. What did you do? Uh, you start to heat up they had me. Okay, so let's. Luna Star. Oh, what? I don't remember. But I know, I know that it was watching squirt. porn. They had told me to look up a video, so I hid my screen and it was just the audio. But I don't know why it got that many views because it's just porn. Like, I don't get it. It's not like there's an actual naked body on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's weird. It's just the audio. That doesn't make any sense to me, right? That doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, it makes total sense. Of course, of course, people want to watch you react to porn. Are you kidding me? On kick? Heck yeah. But I mean, like, I would rather react to, like, uncensored porn, like, showing it compared to just the audio, right? Yeah, that's fair. Hmm. Okay, so you've been growing up. What's your, what is your community starting to... How are you finding your community? What, is, what are they like? Because I'm on three platforms. So each of my platforms, mm -hmm. I give, like, a, a personality trait to. Mm -hmm. What is your... Are you only on kick or do you stream on YouTube? Yeah, I'm only on kick. I just kick. Um, yeah, I think, uh, my community is a bunch of autists, not gonna lie, because, like, apparently I'm autistic and stuff like that, so, you know, I attract a lot of insane, unhinged people, which I enjoy! I, I don't enjoy. think I'm getting Wait. the unhinged from you. I feel like you're so tame right now. What? I'm having a Kyla! She's obviously unhinged. What does Kyla mean by this? Where she's like, I'm not getting unhinged from you. What? She obviously has unhinged energy, but also very normal energy, but also very neuro neurodivergent. Some version of neurodivergency is always unhinged. Like, Obviously, like I feel this way about myself where like I'll see myself and I'm like brain being so neurodivergent right now, which translates to neurotypicals as unhinged. You know what I mean? So that's really funny, actually. Conversation because I'm not playing around like I want to have a genuine conversation. Do you want me to act unhinged? Because I can. I can start fucking licking the walls and eating my fucking toenails and like talking about like the new age and the fuck free world and the Masonic temples and shit because I've got some stories. But I want to uh, know, know both. I guess in my mind. When people have like bits and stuff, mm -hmm. I view both of them as part of who they are. Mm -hmm. Um, they're just no, right? I, so, I, like, wait, I Kyla feel like could I'm... be lying. I never thought about that before. Does Kyla lie? I don't know. I'll ask Kyla if she lies. Does Kyla lie? Because like I, I don't like to lie, so I try. Like it's probably like I don't want to do that. So I usually just like I'm not gonna say it or I will say it. But like I would not lie to someone if I didn't think they were being unhinged. So I don't, I don't know. Does Kyla lie? Actually, I, I'll ask her because I don't actually know the answer to that. I'm not going to get to know you fully and complexly. If you're just like calm, even though like I could pull that out of people pretty well and like psychoanalyze mm -hmm. the shit out of them. Um, if I'm not like watching videos where you're like mm -hmm. biting your toenails and yeah, you don't have a baseline for me. on screen and stuff like that. 
So my thing is, this is what I live by on the internet. Everything I say is a foundational thought, just exaggerated. So while there is truth in the things I say, I would never ever say the things I say, like, truly. Like, I say everything with one good intention because I, I, I don't want the flack from, like, the karma, right? So I always make sure that I'm doing it from not an emotional place, that I'm just saying it, like, face value and, like, with a good intention, which is entertainment. And then, like, you know, I feel... Hold on. What was I saying? You're telling me what was the question? I was at, well, it wasn't really a question. I made a comment about how like even the the bits, it's hard to know a person oh. complexity, especially if they do like bits and performance online. Because both are not not real, I guess, mm -hmm. is kind of the main mm -hmm. thing. The issue is like if you're somebody who's willing to do something like flash your tits on screen or bite your and eat your toenails. Yeah. Well, I don't eat my toenails on screen, but I do flash my tits. I don't yeah, know why. I, 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 yeah, those are two things that I wouldn't be willing to do on screen, like no matter what. Oh, I would. I, I, well, not my toenails. Well, I know tip, that you would. <laughs> but I do sure. bite my toenails. I, people think that's weird, but you know what? Whatever. It's not weird. I just don't have clippers, so sometimes I use my teeth. Anyway, yeah, I, I think that... <laughs> what you girl. Just... Canceled. Canceled. Do you have really thick toenails? No, that's it's just so I have like I bite my nails a lot here recently and like I if I'm trying to your nails, but your toes. Yeah, well, what I do is I get it started with my finger and then I like or like I get it started with my teeth and then use my fingernails to like rip it off because I don't have clippers. No, you bring your and, toe up. You bite. Yeah, I, I I bring my toe up. All right, and I and I like I bite it and then I peel it and then I put it down. Which, by the way, look at the drip. Look at the fucking drip. All right. W drip. Yoed it out. Yep. Yep. Um, are gross. So that, what I'm trying to figure out is, you know, um, everyone's gross. Everyone's gross. I don't know. People who do highly performative bits are very interesting people to me. Um, so you think I'm interesting? Of course you are. You're a very you're successful within a month because you're distinctly an interesting person. Of course. Well, thank you for acknowledging that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for acknowledging that I have pretty privilege. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Our <laughs> performance. YouTubers interesting because I don't like them. Like, I think that's why, like, people like Mr. Girl were so disappointing because the performance implies interesting, but then it's a performance. So it's like less interesting. You know what I mean? I don't know about your brains, and this could be again my, my brain, but once I find out it's like performance, I just like shut down my interest. It becomes like, oh, no, not interesting. But interesting is different. Like people need to like performance and that's why she's a successful streamer. But at the same time, like performance to me makes me go less like less interesting now. You know, I just don't become I'm just like whoop and I'm out. You know what I mean? So I, I'm curious about that from other people's perspective because I don't watch like the normal big streamers because in that way it just feels weird. Like that's why I don't like the performance um cringe moments on the internet where people are like screaming at each other and calling each other names i just like lose interest like my brain zones out i'm like i lose interest because i'm so like real life is too interesting to fake it you know real life is way too interesting to fake it or be performative to me and look i contemplated being performative on the internet a lot but obviously it's just not it's so boring you get bored of it it's like i can't do this full time so, and, and it, I'm interested in like what you guys think about that. I also don't watch a lot of movies anymore though. I will say, I don't think I, I minded it before, but even now I don't watch movies. Like I have a hard time watching actors. I have a hard time watching people that are performing in a particular, like, I don't know what it is. That's just where I'm at right now where I'm like, I just feel like performers, instead of just saying what they're trying to talk about, they have to perform it so you can, it's, I think it's the medium. I don't want to consume media on, on this medium. You know what I mean? So I'm just curious. Does it change in the context of theater? Would you enjoy a play or opera? Not at this stage of my life. Not really. Um, it's like I I I want to go to one. The Croatia has works like a play, like a opera house or something in our ballet. I can't remember. And I want to go, but I want to go because it's like a performance. But I don't want to go because I like it. Like I don't like it. But I like that other people like it. Like my bestie is a professional ballet dancer. I like it because she likes it. But I don't, I don't do it on my own. Like, it's not something I watch. You got to watch Always Sunny. I've seen all of Sunny except for the last season. Um, I like it, but I haven't watched it since the last season before because I just, I'm not in that place. So again, just me. This is not me saying I'm not moralizing it. But this is where I'm at, where I don't care about performance. I just want to have the conversation. And so that's why I don't like playing devil's advocate. I don't like people who are like, 
oh, well, I'm just going to bring up my opponents. Don't perform. Don't force the conversation. Just have it. So again, that's just where my brain is at, right? So I don't mean to like, I'm not saying movies are bad. Love a movie. Love movies. But I don't, I'm not in that zone right now, right? I, I don't know. And I did theater in high school, girl. So like, okay, like. What? See, like, you're falling for me. See, I told you. Maybe you're I, falling look at you for me. You're, no, ma'am. You're blushing. blushing. Look at you. And you're and you're starting to fidget. You're actually frustrated. You love me. Yeah. You love Is me. That your analysis of me. Yeah, I think I think you. I think I am charming. If anything, mm. I'm most. Wait a second. Um, I think a lot of comedians are performative. To be fair, the magic of, to them is that they're able to add another perspective to a tense subject. Do you know I don't watch stand-up comedians because I don't like the performance? I like some of Bill Burr, and I like some of Dave Chappelle a little bit. I like Bill Burr with friends, and I like comedians with friends. Again, if I'm in a crowd, I like it with people, but I don't watch comedians on my own. And I fell in love with comedians' podcasts because I felt more authentic. And then I had lost interest in their podcasts when I found out they were still making up stories in the podcasts, and I stopped listening. Like, so I'm very, like, I understand. I'm not moral. I'm not condemning it. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it's interesting when you're in a different state of mind, how you consume media differently. So there was a time when I loved that stuff. And there was some times when I, I don't. Like, oh, I love Tim Dillon, too. Oh, you saw Tim Dillon? How fun. Like, I love Tim Dillon, but, like, I would never get out of the house to go see him. You know what I mean? Because, like, I don't care. And so, again, but if I could talk to him in person and have a conversation with him, like, I would love to have that, right? So, again, I'm not I'm not judging it. I'm just saying, oh, it's interesting the way we're consuming the content and what appeals to us and what doesn't, right? So when the internet says, I want authenticity, they want a performance. It's why these channels do better than people who don't perform. Like, literally. Performance channels do better Yelling at people on a panel does better in terms of views than not doing that. And that's because humans do want a performance because I think they think real life is boring and I think real life is way too interesting, right? So I, again, we're all having different relationships relationships with it. It's definitely charming. You find me charming. Okay. For sure. That's exactly what's going on right now. Just your whole body language has changed. Your flush of your face. She's being sarcastic, right? right? This is her, like, sarcasm, right? I'm picking this up like she's trying to be sarcastic more than serious, right? Is that correct? Yeah, with your pheromones, uh, you know? I, I know what's going on here. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. smell you. Okay, so... You huh. didn't deny it. See how you didn't deny it? You just tried to whoop past it? Well, the, the problem is if you deny it, you look guilty. And if you don't deny it, you look guilty, so... And if you say nothing at all, you look guilty. So you might as well just tell the truth, which is a yes. All right, moving on. There you go. Face. Um, so I guess... Yeah... The thing with bits performers is that I, it's just hard to know what's real. And then when you get to the real parts of them, they're hard to make sense with the performative parts, right? Where you've got like kind of this like soft, spiritual, like everything will work out, like kind of like very like um, high, like probably what most people would call delusional optimism. Like it's not just optimism. Mm -hmm. That's a tactical decision. It's like most people mm -hmm. would probably say it's way beyond that. Right. Um, and then you've got this other side of you. It seems to have no relation to the other, to the first side, which is like performative, listening mm -hmm. to porn on stream, getting banned on Twitch and Twitter, flashing your tits and like doing crazy shit. Yeah. Well, have you ever thought to maybe just ask for the truth and trust me and just know that I'm telling you the truth of who I am as a person? I do trust you. I trust then your I'm you your off the top. Okay. So then you have no reason not to trust any of my responses. This is who I am. I'm not no, trolling. Wait, wait, what did Kyla say well, though? You're one okay. So then you have no reason not to trust I do trust you. I trust you. I'm telling you off the top. I, okay. I trust you to what off the top? What is she saying? So then you, as a person, I do trust you. I trust then you. I'm telling you off the top. I'm telling you the truth of who I am as a person. I do trust you. I trust then you. I'm telling you off the top. Okay, so then you have no reason not to trust any I of my trust responses. You this off is who the I top? am. I'm not trolling. What I said. Well, you're wanting to know like what's performative and what's not, correct? No, not oh. precisely. What I'm trying to figure out is the gap between the two people. Oh, so like that, like Nirvana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's kind of like, you've got, like, I don't know your real name. Let's say, mm -hmm. what, uh, RJ. Know? RJ. RJ. Okay. Yeah. So, there's, like, RJ. And I feel like I've talked to RJ a lot. But then there's Merck off to Perk. And it's interesting to try to figure out what's the, mm -hmm. what's the bridge between these two. Like, how, how are they part of the same unit? Because they obviously are. So, for me, I, I believe that everything is and everything isn't. Um, I think that being very black and white is not possible. <laughs> so, for me, it's not a, it's not a qualitative. It's a quantitative, meaning, okay, I may troll more. Whoa! 
Why are you guys all being armchair therapists? Why do you keep saying she sounds like she's splitting? What am I not seeing? I'm not seeing anything. Nothing changed. Did something change and I missed it? Everything feels normal right now. Are we even towards the fight yet? What do you mean she looks like she's splitting? She looks normal right now. What happened? I didn't see anything change. I still don't see anything changing. This time and then be real this time. It's I'm I'm the state of both. I'm both. But the person I really am shines through more than the other. If that makes sense. And I think that the people who watch me consistently, they see who I really am more than anybody else. Okay. So you feel... Okay, so then answer this. I think I asked you this a bit and then we got derailed. What is the... <clears throat> what is your community like? Tell me about them. Retarded. Absolutely. Retarded autism. We bully each other. We bully each other. We... I think... We enjoy Every time music. I look over, I see interesting comments like I make... I think my favorite comment I've read in your chat so far was I get poop in my butt hairs and then I make dreadlocks out of it. Yep, that's my chat. Now, if you're talking about Will, he's actually an online stalker of mine that I've blocked on multiple platforms who continues to harass me. So if you're talking about him, I would not take anything he says worth a grain of salt. And I'm saying this publicly, if I ever end up dead, missing, he did it. Okay. And I'm not trolling. I believe you. I put on the I okay. believe you. Because I have I have some so, just putting that out there. myself. Yeah. Um Yeah, if I ever go missing, it's Travis Bickle's fault, okay? Damn, so Bickles? Name. What kind of name is Bickles, dude? I don't know. I don't know. Ask L him. L name. L name. L name. L name. Okay, so they're autists and retards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think... Did Everyone tell you different. my husband is a trans man? I haven't heard anything about... I've heard about Tommy Pickles. Um, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing about your husband. They're not really focused on you. I mean, there are a few that are focused on you, but for me, like, my chat is very supportive to me, and I am really grateful. Like, I tell them all the time, like... I literally have the best chat and I'm sure everyone thinks that, but mine really is the best because like we can go from like crying and being open and honest to like laughing and having fun. And like, I don't know, like for me, like music is a big part of my life and I love music and my chat really enjoys it. So we'll do these streams where like I just smoke, get high and get into that sweet spot where like music you can feel and we just jam out. We're just open and honest with each other. We say what we want, we do what we want and that's it. As long as nobody's getting harmed. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like so much of your content when I like tune in. It often devolves into like <laughs> you fighting with people and screaming matches. I think that's because of yeah. the like other person you said that it's usually like their stuff, right? Yeah. Well, obviously I get triggered, but you try convincing people that you're not fucking crazy. You're gonna get so agitated. You have to realize how much shit I'm actually getting on the internet. Like you've been around it. You've heard how I've been talked to. Anybody would get upset. And for people like, oh, well, you said you. Yeah, I said that. People can say that, shit, but at the end of the day, I'm still a fucking human. Granted, I tried to deflect it and like energetically transmute it, but it's still there's still pain. Because I'm still a human at the end of the day. I'm not a fucking robot. I can't just turn my feelings off. And I don't want to turn my feelings off. Yeah. But for the sake of the troll, I have to. Like, if I'm trolling, I have to be that way. Yes. That's interesting, hey? That the, uh, like, RJ's feelings have to come mm -hmm. second priority if you're, like, yeah. in a performative merc moment mode. Yeah. Hmm. But also, at the same time, like, my chat, they say terrible things. But it's different because, like, it's, like, one of those, like, where you bully them because you like them type of thing. With other people, they're just people who are downright mean. Just downright evil. And granted, you know, I've, I've made jokes, but the, 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 like, what is comedy versus the truth? I think comedy is comedy because you're able to make fun of the truth. But when, where's that boundary of just being evil compared to like being comedic about it? You know what I'm saying? Like we were just talking about like the whole Kelly situation. Every single time I've met Kelly, I've been super respectful. I've been super nice. Kelly? Who's Kelly? Kelly Jean. Kelly oh, Jean. what? What? Yeah. The what? Yeah. Her. Like okay. when I, the first time I met her, I was super nice. Like, and she, I didn't even say anything yet. And she just started going off on me. And it's like every single time she's hateful, like genuinely, not like trolling, not like funny. She's genuinely fucking hateful. And it's like, I have literally been kind to you. Like I've not like been evil. I've never said anything negative until today about you. And it's like, why do you like, what have I done personally to you so bad that you hate me that much? Like, it doesn't make sense. And you're like, well, oh, well, I don't like your content or I don't like this. That's your, you don't like it. You don't like it. Cause there's other people who, who don't like it and they can choose to either a like ignore it, scroll on or like not watch me. Like. You don't have to be evil. You don't have to be a part of it. And everybody that I've trolled, they've chosen to be a part of that, right? They know what's going on. And like, even if they don't in the moment afterwards, I always clear it up, right? Privately. But it's like, okay, people are going to say, oh, well, you choose to be in Destiny's VCs. Yeah, I do. But I don't choose to get fucking like the shit that she says about me. And it's not because she's a woman because I've had other people, other women say shit about me and it's like, whatever, right? But it, she's like genuinely like, like evil. Like, what does she say about you? I haven't heard anything. Evil about. like Hitler evil or evil like... What is evil, right? I think I've I've had a good I think I've talked to now I feel like I'm mixing people up. I have a hard time remembering people, but I think Kelly Jean has been nice to me so far. So I don't have a bad interaction with her, but I haven't interacted much. I can feel that she's upset. 
I wouldn't she I'm not going to diagnose her as splitting because like I don't want to do that. I don't like when people do that to me. I'm certainly not going to do that to her right now. And I also don't get those vibes because splitting is very specific. You're basically saying she's having a medical triggered moment, right? So like I'm not going to put that on her. I will say she's upset, which she's allowed to be. She's talking about something that upsets her. So I'm going to say like having the emotion of being upset is valid without her being uh, triggered. So I'm going to say right now she's upset, which could lead to a trigger, which is specific, right? Because maybe sometimes triggers come out of nowhere. Sometimes they don't. But right now she's obviously talking about something that upsets her. And so I think she has the right to be upset. Um, you guys can, you might be right. She might be splitting. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to make that really clear. I do not know. But I will say that um, it sounds like she's having the normal, the normal conundrum of I'm a troll, but I want people to see the real me, but they can't see the real me because I'm a troll and I'm tough and I can handle criticism, but also it hurts my feelings. And this is the very difficult and valid role of a road of a content creator is we all have to deal with this. We all have to deal with people talking sh like shit, not having the conversation, having the conversation, not seeing us, making us upset. We all have to have this. So she sounds like a normal person who's coming into the stream world, who's also mentally ill and working on it. But you know what I mean? Like this all sounds pretty I, I as expected. But let's see. Let's see if this is the start of it. Let's see if it, it divulges from here. I don't really, just, I don't really it's tune just, in if Kelly Dean's around. Not that I have just, beef. I don't have beef with Kelly Dean. Mm -hmm. We get along just fine. It's just well, like, here's yeah. the thing. It's not, it wasn't, it wasn't, it's not that I have beef with her. I just don't like what she's doing because I've not done the same to her. I've been very kind to her. I've not ever said anything like bad about her. And Are like, you even though, because I mean, like, you're saying I'm something no. bad about her right now. You're saying she's evil, which is saying something bad about her right now, right? Which she might feel is fair because she might feel like Kelly Jean is evil. Chill with bluntness. Do you find, like, I'm just trying to understand if there's a common thread between like all this beef and it might just be like mm -hmm. internet mental illness well it's, it's because of the it's because of the doxing right so a big issue was she didn't like how i was doxing myself don't know what she has to do with that well she wants to keep me safe it is not your responsibility to keep a grown woman safe on the internet let me do what i'm doing and you do what you do and mind your business like if you don't like it don't watch it so it's like she didn't like that and then she's like well don't ever stream from your house on kicker keep first of all i'm an ebt streamer all right i'm poor i'm broke i don't have the resources to go stream anywhere else because i have a pc and i'm not going to stream on my phone right and she's like well you can at least tell the police she says the that I do offline, but I don't tell people because I don't want people to know that because it's a part of the content, right? So for example, I have been swatted. I've been swatted three times, right? The cops Since know August? To, yeah. The cops, the cops, the cops know, right? They know to call me. And it's like, well, I can't sit here and tell the internet, oh, like, you know, the cops have an agreement with me that if anything happens, like they call me first. Like, I don't want them to know that because then it, it takes the fun out of it. I wanna well, be. I wanna be it. now we know it. You know swatted it's hilarious i i'm i do a very good job of keeping myself safe irl i have precautions put in place where i i can do these things yeah. and it'd be fine and a big part of it is either you dox yourself or someone's going to do it down the road that's why i posted naked pictures of myself i knew that eventually they were going to come out so i post things that i know are going to come out so i can get ahead of the punch if that makes sense right so if i'm gonna just, i didn't watch the context so was kelly mm -hmm. mad that you doxed yourself because she thought that you were she thought it was mentally risk. unstable. Yeah. And she, she thinks think that, that I... you were like attention grabbing then by doing this? Like, did she think you're just like desperately seeking attention? Which is Oh, she thinks I'm mentally ill. She thinks that she said it. She thinks that I'm genuinely mentally ill and that Destiny giving me a platform is unsafe because I'm mentally ill and I don't know the gravity of my decisions. You've heard me talk. I'm very lucid. I'm very well spoken. You know, I you're you're having a conversation with me. Am I am I well, mentally I'm, ill? I'm also well, I'm trained in mental health, which means like mentally ill people can consent to things um like you have to be severely mm, tom says um kelly jean says super mean stuff about Merck. calls her dumb and retarded oh why is kelly jean being so mean why is she being so mean also why is Merck doxing herself seems like a mess seems like a recipe of disaster severely mentally ill before i say like you can't actually understand the ramifications yeah. of your choices um i'm very against infantilizing mentally ill people in a harmful way um i think mm -hmm. it's like one of the worst things our system has done to mentally ill people um i do think mentally ill people make terrible life choices all the time mm -hmm. probably as a result of their mental illness i just don't know if it's like the right of everyone else to tell them that they can't that's the Even thing i'm not sure it's from the mental illness you don't know what medications i'm on you don't know what therapy i'm going through and like for her to come from this place of like oh you're mentally ill you're this you you don't know me you don't oh, you've never even had a conversation you're gonna get with me. swatted on kok -OK, right Kick or keep. yeah yeah 
My mic is crackling. Yeah, I, I don't like confrontation, so I wasn't going to say anything. And I felt like I was, like, very, like, you know. You don't like confrontation, my butt. That would not well, to not, uh, no. Is it better? It's just my butt. Is it still uh, doing it for you? Uh, I think you're it's good. Move a little bit. No, it's doing it again. Is it still doing it? You're good now. I'm not asking you, Nick. I'm asking you. Right. Could you grab me some water? Yeah, get out, Russ. Get out of here, Russ. Russ. Uh, okay, I'm just going to unplug and replug in my mic. Oh, okay. okay. She does seem like she's low on spoons right now. And also, if Kelly Jean's being unnecessarily mean to her, that's not okay. Um, Kelly gets called dumb one normally, so I think she enjoys people taking her side when she talks, says it about Merck. God, everyone needs fucking therapy and um, intervention. Like, everyone's dumb. I don't know what to tell you guys. Everyone's so stupid on the internet, myself included. We all got to stop pretending we're smart. Jesus Christ. None of us are smart. And at the same time, some of us are smarter than others in certain areas. But, like, it's not that profound. Okay? But, like, I, I do think that there's a lot of, like, punching down because, like, the bullying energy is just so – it's just so in this community, man. Um, She does seem like she's losing spoons. If I was with her, I'd probably check in and say, how are your spoons doing? Um, She just shared an emotional moment. So she might need some sort of, like, reassurance. Um. She seems like really defeated right now in her body language. Could be wrong. I don't know. But I would, I would, this would be the moment where I'd be like, hey, bro, how are your spoons? You know? Oh, she's got the form. Okay. Any better? Or is it the exact? Mm-hmm. Also, do we know yeah, if she's high? Is it? Yeah. Do we know if she's baked? Oh, wait, it's doing it again. Sometimes if I move my phone away, it'll stop doing it. Does it stop doing it? Yeah, you're good. Okay. For sure? Yeah. All right. No, my chat's saying definitely not better. <laughs> oh, it did. I didn't hear it that time. All right. How's that? Chat. That's, I think it's good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. I moved my phone. There's no phone nearby at all. And maybe this is Bluetooth as well. I'll move that. Oh, and by the way, okay. I'm not saying so- Kyla should have noticed she seemed less spoony. I'm just saying that at that point, I would feel drained. So I would check in with her to see if she's less drained or more drained. And I'm not saying Kyla should have seen that she was drained. I'm not saying that because I don't know if this is where it derails. I'm just saying like, oh, if I I just noticed she was. But again, I lose spoons very easily. I'm like literally snacking on potato chips so I like can maintain my spoons. So I can understand like that's the only reason I said that. I'm not saying Kyla should have known or something. So it seems like Kelly Jean is super, super protective of KOK. She's worried that you're going to get it in trouble and that you're being too mentally ill. No, she she was worried that I was going to be unsafe and get killed. And also, yes, a little bit of the stream. But it's like, who appointed her the, you know, master of it all? You know what I'm saying? Like, who This is what I'm her- saying. We shouldn't care about people's well-being. And if she let them be destructive as they want, and we should let people just like... Go watch a sunset on their own. Who's to stop them from watching a sunset? This is what I'm saying. It's very hard to make the decisions of when we should care about people. And then the world calls you heartless for not caring about people. Make a decision. And so what we do is we make a decision about when to care about people, when we, when we think it's time to care about people. I tell, you know, I give my advice and people are like, it feels like you're telling people what to do. Don't do it if you don't want to do it. But for my own conscience, I got to know that I said it to you. For my own well-being, I got to say, don't do this. So I know I warned you. So when you do do it and it does F up your life, I can feel good that I warned you. Because honestly, girl, I know you're going to do it. I know you're going to be a mess. I know you're going to date the men who cheat on you. I know you're going to take them back. I know you're going to catch all these STIs out here. I know you're going to get pregnant. I know you're going to do everything. But for my own sake, girls, I just got to let you know don't do this. Okay? But this is what I'm saying. The conundrum is, yes, you're an adult, you can keep doxing yourself, you can keep getting swatted, you can keep all these things. But at the same time, like, when are people supposed to say, eh, maybe not this? You know what I'm saying? You can do whatever you want. Whatever you want. Humans are gonna human, as a great person once said. For the education to say, this woman is mentally ill, especially if you've not had any personal conversations with me whatsoever. Like, literally, the first, the very first time I went in there with her and met her, right off the bat, you, I hate you. You're crazy, bitch. You're fucking stupid. Like, just, uh, like it's, uh, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Even the people who actually hate me, like they don't, 
they don't act like this. Who actually hates you? Uh, I think people. A lot of people hate my character, but I don't think people hate the like me because they've not met me personally. I know that if they actually like talked to me off stream, had a actual conversation with me, that th- they would understand. And at the end of the day, I think it's not just my responsibility, but also theirs to realize that. Okay, how does this personally affect me? Like, am I personally saying these things to you? Or am I saying it to the other person? Sure, you can care about other people and say like, oh, that's not nice. But at the end of the day, does it? immediately affect you if not then anything you say after that is just it, it's useless because that's how my brain works it's like if i'm not saying these things to you if you're not the one who's consuming my content why do you care like oh well i care because i'm a good person okay just because you care doesn't mean like like i don't like it just it doesn't make sense to me like because i think differently now because of everything that i've gone through like i've learned really that like you choose what you let into your space you choose what you let affect you right so it's like if i can do certain things like i don't get why other people can't when you go on Dusty's stream and give like your opinions and stuff, how mm-hmm. often are the opinions that you're like listing off actual opinions that you have and how often is it a troll? Also just so your chat realizes, I'm joking about Nick being a trans man. You're all just- They're trolling you now. They're trolling no, they're you. Not, they're not trolling me now. They have just <laughs> an IQ of a barely warmed potato. So they just like couldn't track that. Nick could be trans. You never know. But yeah, like I think, like I said, foundationally speaking, it is what I believe, right? So I'll just, I'll list a few and I'll, and I'll be very like, you know, um, I- do believe that transgenderism is a mental illness. Um, Whoa! I do believe. Oh no, she's an anti-LGBT queen. How? Di- what? I like her less. I'm really over people being anti-LGBT. You guys, I'm kind of over it this season. Election season's coming up. Like humans are going to human. You're all going to have opinions. I just think it's a shitty opinion to have. I'm so over it. I don't have a lot of spoons for people that are anti-LGBT this season. I'm sorry. The last three years, I've been so lenient and so kind. This, this next three years, I can just feel it. I am going to be very aggressive about my beliefs for the women's, the theys, the gays, and the LGBTs. Mm-mm. No way, no way, no way, girl. How dare a person struggling with her identity be PD? How dare she be anti-trans? I'm calling it right now. Nah, 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 nah. believe that uh, homosexuality is natural. I think that it's just a part of life. Okay. Um, uh, I do believe that uh, we should build the wall. Um, I Whoa. do okay. believe that uh, homosexuality is, I believe, right? So I'll just, I'll list a few and I'll, and I'll be very like, you know, um, I do believe that transgenderism is a mental illness. Um, I do believe that uh, homosexuality is natural. I think that it's just a part of life. Um, uh, I do believe that uh, we should build the wall. Um, I do believe that men are inferior to women. It's an instinct. It's natural. Like women are made to be below men. Um, and these are just some of the things I believe simply because like I come from a scientific point. Like I, I went to animal science. I, I got a degree in animal science. You know, I was a biology major. I, I view everything as it is. Um, and I realize that feelings are a lot different than facts, right? So you can feel you a type of way, but it doesn't make it true, right? I feel the way I do about transgender, but it doesn't it doesn't make it true. These are just like my opinions, right? Okay. But the way I present it on the internet, I know that they're hot topics. That's why I talk about them a lot. And back when I first started streaming, that's why I sensationalized it a lot because I knew that I would get people's attention. I would make people pay attention to me. And I knew that I could put my foot in the door because being someone who hasn't been streaming long, being someone who has no idea what she's doing, that's how you got to do it. You got to, and being a woman in the streaming, you know, industry and not being like a bikini streamer or all of this, like you have to be different. You have to be exciting. You have to be new. You have to be fresh. You have to be captivating. And that's exactly why I did what I did. I'm sorry. This comment's so good. Science says build the wall. That's just so funny. Even though I do believe that, but at the end of the day, ultimately I still treat you like a human. Even if I don't like transgenders, I still acknowledge that you are a spirit, that you are a soul and that you're just like me. So it's like, I love you, but I don't agree with it, with what you know you're doing. And people are like, oh, you know, you don't have to agree with it. Yeah, you're right. But I have an opinion just like you have an opinion. And it's like you, people don't like cisgender people. People don't like straight people. For the record, I'm not saying gender dysphoria isn't a thing, right? That's not what I'm saying. But usually when people say like, is being trans a mental illness? They're asking is if, okay, so a mental illness is something you want to cure and get better. I think we can all agree on that, that you are not your mental illness. I believe that. I don't think trans, being trans is a mental illness. I don't think all trans people experience what I would call, not necessarily gender dysphoria, but I don't think the transness itself is the mental illness. I've talked about this in length with my trans friends. They've asked me this in length. Like, do you think being trans is mental illness? I just, I can't. It feels way too reasonable. Um, It exhibits itself pretty naturally in the world. It feels really spiritual to me. Like you're having a relationship with your consciousness. It feels very philosophy to me. It does not feel 
like a mental illness. It doesn't exhibit itself like a mental illness in all cases. But gender dysphoria is a real thing. But I don't think that always has to do with the relationship you're having with your gender and your transness, right? So I kind of, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you all for, thank you. So it's like only fair when it's a minority. I don't, I believe in the ideology that it's either all okay or it's not with there being some, you know, ex, ex, exceptions to the rule. But that's basically how I feel. It's just on the internet, I play it up for views. Hmm. Interesting. Mm, okay. On the internet, I play it up for views. One of the rules I've had consistently with my content, I'm so sorry, I'm eating chips. One of the rules I've had consistently with my comment is I never sensationalize myself. I do not play up my things for views. And I mean this because I really could have. I'm weird enough. I've done exciting things in my life. I have really cool stories. But once you do that, you lose your sense of self. In my opinion, as a Britney, I would lose my sense of self. I would be a liar. I would become a liar because I would have to perform in a way that made me feel like a liar. And again, I'm not here to be a stand-up comic, right? I'm here to talk about life and my lived experience in a really real way. I'm also trying to, I'm trying to talk about it in a real way so people don't think, see how being, if you sensationalize being gay, then all the haters out there are going to be like, see, being gay is so weird. BDSM is so weird. And I want to ground people in different lifestyles and say that it, it doesn't, you don't have to sensationalize this. It's not that crazy, right? Um, that's why when I say like you can take showers with your platonic friends and everyone's like, no way, bro, because they're sensationalizing the activity. They're adding something to it that doesn't exist unless you're having a relationship with it, right? So again, it's like, I don't, I have a hard time with this a lot, with this idea of like, I play it up for views. Like, I play it up for views. Ooh, is performance a lie? No. No. Performance is not a lie. It's subjectively, contextually, either a lie or not a lie. It could be a lie or it could not be a lie. It could even be more honest. But again, the context matters. So when people are saying I'm trolling on the internet, I'm playing it up for views, they're saying I'm playing a role, but then they don't want to be judged by that role. I would argue then the performance is sort of a lie. And that's the confusing part. It's like, what part am I supposed to think is honest? And what part am I supposed to judge you for? And if I can't tell the difference between your performance and the reality, that's what's difficult. So again, I'm not, I'm not trying to cast judgment. I'm just throwing ideas out at you guys at a whiteboard and you can figure it out on your own. But I usually do feel very uncomfortable around people that perform a lot because again, maybe it's my neurodivergency. I just want to know what's real so I can judge you on that. That's why I don't like like liars. It confuses me. It's like, what are you doing? What are we ha what are we talking about? Now, I think transness can be a performance. I also don't think it has to be. I think if you say gender is something spiritual, it's innate inside of you. It's a relationship you're having with your consciousness. Then you're having a a a, re a relationship with your gender that isn't about performance, even if you're performing. So I think there's something very important here. Like, are women performing when they get their hair dyed? Are men performing when they wear makeup? Are people performing when they dress up? Am I performing today? Guys, I'm wearing the cutest outfit today. I'm wearing like, okay, it's like a lingerie piece and it's a one piece and it goes down below, but it has like an open section here. And it's like, okay, and I'm wearing like these cute little bdsm -y earrings, right? Okay, I am in some ways dressing because I feel cute and in slight ways performing but I'm performing uh, less than someone who's performing more. Damn, that sounds stupid, but you know what I mean. I am just getting ready for the day. I'm just putting on my stream clothes, which are clothes that I own in my closet. So one of the rules I have is I don't have anything I wear on stream that isn't a part of my wardrobe. So I don't buy clothes for stream, but I do wear certain clothes I have for stream. Because in my daily life, like I'm not going to the dungeon. So unless I'm doing a scene, or something like that, I'm going to be in sweats, you know what I mean? But for the stream, I would wear one of my going out outfits. Does that make sense? So again, it's like, is it a performance or are you just getting ready for the day? Depends. Some people, some people are so punk, so BDSM, so like rocker that they perform by wearing a suit and a tie and covering up their tattoos and piercings to go to work. Their going to work is their performance. Does that kind of make sense? Do you think that there could be something that dangerous comes from that? Like playing up oh, for what sure. you're saying? For sure. But I take on that risk. I take on that consequence. Everyone's like, well, what if this happens? What if it, it is not your problem to deal with? Unless well, like I'm having- Not for you, like, for like what you're putting out into the world, right? Like I think of- um, Like influencing people. 
yeah, like I think of Sneeko. I remember, I remember talking to Sneeko like right mm-hmm. as he was blowing up, and I was taught. I remember like we were walking towards a Fresh and Fit podcast together, mm-hmm. and I was like, I, I like turned to him. I was like, I was like, you know, I really liked your old videos uh, mm-hmm. where he did like video essays, and mm-hmm. I was like, but your stream stuff is kind of kind of cringe. Uh, Mm -hmm. and it's not really real, is it? And he's like, no, like it's pretty performative. It's all like for the views. Like you just make so much more money Mm -hmm. streaming. And if you, as long as you're like kind of crazy, he's like, it's a show I'm putting on a show. Yeah, exactly. But then I don't know if you saw the video that came out recently of like the boys coming up to kind of performatively screaming about how they want to kill all gays and like how they like hate women and and, uh, women or we hate women or Mm -hmm. something like that. Right. Um, and so the tricky part is a, I don't actually know what Sneaky even believes anymore. Um, because I think, I think the issue that happens with this, like real you versus the performative you is that I think as you become more successful, it becomes harder and harder to know like which version of you is real mm-hmm. um, and whether the hyperbolized opinions are actually hyperbolized anymore. Um, I, I feel think, like I've seen a lot of content creators fall into that. Yeah, time. and I agree. And it's something I'm very, very aware of. Like I've had that own thought myself. Like I, whenever I, I don't stream, like I think of like, well, when do I know when I'm not streaming versus when I'm streaming? Like when does it like, where's the separation? And that's where personal responsibility does come into play, but not in the way that everybody expects. Personal responsibility, I mean by setting a very strict boundary with yourself that, look, this is what I'm doing. I'm an entertainer, and it will not enter real life. And if it does, I will respond. Correct. Okay, wait. This sounds really reasonable. I don't know what she's about to say. That sounds really reasonable. Good job putting down a boundary. The question is, once you've been doxxed, does that involve real life? And so what is she counting as this can't come into real life? That's interesting. Correctly. Now, if there's like a camera and stuff like that, I, I will I will respond on character. But what matters is what you do in that moment. So people are like, well, you could be held responsible for this, responsible for this. The people who like actually watch me and when I do like not my trolling, like I say, like treat people with kindness. I always start my streams by praying. Like they've seen me pray before. I I, I pray on stream. I I always set. Man, I might be the most non-religious person in this space. Everyone out here just praying good intention and it is a fact that if you set good intention if you put out good energy with a good you know mindset and you know manifesting a positive outcome it will happen now granted don't get me wrong there probably will be times where something bad arises from my content but at the end of the day i am not responsible for anyone who views me they are up it's up to them to make their own informed decisions and this idea that streamers should be held or anybody should be held accountable for what someone else does unless they're explicitly telling them go do this it's it's fake i don't believe in that because people you you know you you watch streamers and you know you sit here and consume their content it's like you you it's not my problem it's just i don't i don't feel like it's my problem now if i told someone to go shoot somebody in the head yes hold me responsible wait did kelly jean tell her to her face she was weird or did she say it in private when kelly jean is being mean about her is that a performance or is that for real real does when she calls her audience retards and autists is she demeaning her audience or is she like making a joke that they love to hear that this is like Again, I think it's so hard when you play a character to decide when to be taken seriously. And I, but I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. Like I want to kind of see her as a person, right? Because we're all people. So let, let, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Charge me, do something because I, you know, I deserve it. But never have I ever like explicitly said, go do this, go do this. And in fact, I actually had a situation with this where Nacho Mama, another streamer, you know, it was very much so her sending people to my stream and stuff like that. And I've never once said like, go and go to other people and be negative or do this or do that. So, you know, as long as I'm not directing people to do things explicitly, it's not my problem. And I truly believe that. And some people say, well, that's just irresponsible. That's what you think. I'm doing what I feel is right. And I will not be held responsible for any actions of anybody else on the internet just because they watch me. Because Okay, I'm- I think that's fair. Like, I also think for the most part, depending on the kind of content you make, you're not really responsible for your audience. But I will say your audience is a reflection of you. So if your audience is retards, if your audience is degenerates, if your audience is hateful. I do think your audience is a reflection of you to an extent, to an extent, because I, you know, there are like very popular YouTubers who don't do niche work. But if you do niche work and you curate an audience, I do think that's kind of a reflection of you. I'm very proud of my audience. So obviously I would say this because obviously I think my audience is amazing. So I would say my audience is smart and thoughtful and considerate and introspective and kind and wonderful. Like, and neurodivergent, but I wouldn't ever describe my audience as like stupid. I would never describe my audience as cruel. I would never describe my audience as a troll. My audience is very thoughtful. Like I, and I'm proud of that because I think it does reflect me. I am proud to say my audience reflects me, but if her audience is quote, retards and autists, end quote, it sounds like she's saying she has a degenerate audience 
which I do think is a reflection of the content she creates. My opinion. I've never told them to do it. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, this is a, it's a complicated topic because I definitely, I definitely don't hold streamers entirely responsible for their audience, right? Like there's always going to be like, but it's like uh, PewDiePie got listed in like a manifesto in like the Christchurch killing. Yeah, yeah, the Christchurch, like, yeah. Of course, PewDiePie isn't responsible for that. But one thing that I do look at responsibility is like emergent themes within communities, right? So like one thing that I really try to keep my finger on and I try to like notice in my community and maybe like I'm too hyper con like concerned about this is um, because I do a lot of talk about like men's issues. Mm -hmm. um, I think that leaves my community at high risk of becoming like super misogynistic if I'm not mm -hmm. careful. And so I always kind of try to like keep my finger on like where that's sitting at. I'm basically saying like, look, we could talk about men's issues all the time. We could talk about situations when women are being mm -hmm. bitches. But what mm -hmm. we're not going to do is like throw all women under the bus to like satisfy our victim complex. And every now and then if I release a video and I notice like a really, really big like pushback where they're like mm -hmm. super upset because I'm like not just like hardcore yes manning only the men. Mm -hmm. um, I'll take that as a bit of a flag. I mean, like I need to do something about this a little mm -hmm. bit. Like it might just mean I need to make a little bit more co content that complements exactly. like the, the opposite yeah. side. Like, but there's, there's some level of responsibility I do take for the community that I cultivate. Um, particularly now that I like go on Twitter and I'll see people like repeating almost verbatim arguments that I've made. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh, I will say something. Okay. Two things that just came up. One, I totally forgot they're about to fight because it's going well still. i totally forgot they're about to fight. And two, um, even on Twitter, the people that are the meanest to me and the meanest in my comments are not a part of my audience. They just hate follow. They hate follow because they say things that are not true all the time. And I'm always like muting you guys. P.S. Like haters can follow, but like I'm not listening to your comments. I'm so sorry. Very bad for my skin. And again, they're mostly like trolls who want my attention. And so I ignore all those people, but they're not even people who are my viewers because they're always tweeting the wrong information at me. My viewers are the nicest. That's why every YouTuber, when we collab, guys, what do they always say? Oh my gosh, Bernie's chat is so nice. Oh my God, your chat is so nice. Like, why is your chat so nice? I'd like to think it's a reflection of the content creator. I really would. I'm not saying that I'm this big deal. I'm not, but I am aware. Maybe maybe it's like the car thing. I'm aware the of, like, of what you say. Yeah, I'm aware of like the energy that I'm putting out into the world. Do you and... mind if I smoke? Sorry for interrupting. No, 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 of course not. Yeah, go for it. Um, and I guess, like when I think about like my community, if I found out- Yo, 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 is that drugs? Is she doing drugs? Because if she's smoking weed right now, and look, I've smoked weed since for like uh, since 2018. After I was done developing my brain, highly recommend that choice. Um, I was a daily smoker up until moving to Europe because I can't smoke drugs here. I love weed. I love it so much. It's the greatest thing in the world. I miss it every day. I can't wait to go to Amsterdam and smoke. But I will tell you this right now. Sober you is the real you. Intoxicated you is impaired you. Intoxicated you is impaired you okay you're not snoop dog who's been smoking for 50 years and he smokes eight blunts a day and even that sober him is different so i'm just gonna say this right now okay if she is smoking drugs and she's about to get high and then she gets triggered on the stream and then they have a fight um hello okay like we need to be very aware of this um, can't smoke drugs in Croatia. No, weed's not legal here. And I am not going to break any laws because I'm trying to be a good citizen here. I'm trying to get my permanent residence. Over, okay. Violet says, um, Kyla used to throw women under the bus to gain credibility with her audience. So I stopped watching her for a little bit, but recently she has been more honest or being more honest and it's great. Yeah. I don't know how much of that she was doing, but I will say like, I mean, I, I watch Kyla's content. I am a member. I watch her streams after they've gone, you know, for members only. So, you know, um, but yeah, like I, I'm really concerned that she is partially, if she's smoking, oh, I think she started smoking from feeling stressed, very possible. But I, yeah, um, Momo says I get more triggered high for sure. I, I just feel like we need to be aware of this, right? Like it, it really impacts you. Weed is legal in, the, in America, bro. Arizona weed is some of the best weed I've ever had. Arizona weed is some of the best weed I ever had. Um, but yeah, um, marijuana, it, it's you can get more paranoid anxiety if you have ADHD, if you have nerd, like it's, it's not okay. Like marijuana and psychosis have ties. Like we, we, I love my drugs, but I'm deeply concerned that she's smoking on stream. And like, now I know they're going to have a fight and I'm like, well, she's smoking on stream. And I used to smoke on stream too. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? I'm not sure if you've answered this already, but would you be open to having a chat with Merck? Um, 
Um, I think I'm open to it. I'm not sure what I could um, offer. So I, I try not to hit people up unless I can offer them something. So I've never watched her stuff and I probably won't because like I'm not going to go to kick or rumble to watch things. But I, I don't know, right? Like I'm not seeing anything in this conversation that I think I would benefit, like she would benefit from talking to me. Um, so I don't know. Arizona wheat is mid, um, not in the mountains. It's sticky and potent and delicious. And oh my gosh. So I, I don't know. I'm not saying I won't talk to her. I'm saying I don't know what to offer her. Right. Um, so I, I'm not sure. So anyways, let's just keep in mind she's now in on drugs. And this is like, we're going to assess her fairly through that lens instead of sober her. For example, that like my community broadly responded to a topic that I was like, this is pretty hateful. I'd be concerned about that, right? Like in the case of the Sneeko video, um, nobody, nobody's that's reasonable is worried because 12 year olds are saying edgy shit. Okay. I, like just work with 12 year old boys. They're going to say edgy shit all the time. It's not edgy shit. That's the problem. The problem is that it's exactly the concern that everyone has had around the content, which is that these boys are specifically saying edgy shit to Sneeko with a live chat because they think that that's the behavior that will be reinforced and celebrated by them. And the boys are right. That's the issue that's going on here. It's not that they're saying edgy things to each other. Um, it's that it's the cult. It's an evidence of a cultivated behavior that people have been concerned about broadly. Um, that's what I think about is like responsibility. Like when I look at Sneeko, I think he is responsibility for the level of like LGBTQ hatred in his community and the misogyny. Absolutely. Um, he's also responsible for uh, the like blow up of fitness that's been happening in this community because he celebrates. Not with things. me. It has not reached me because girl, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, but he's got a lot of that, right? A lot of the guys who yeah. follow Sneeko start exercising a lot, which is a good f effect. And I. I don't know if streamers can take credit for the positive stuff, but then dismiss some of the negative stuff that they create. Yeah. Well. Sneeko is both responsible to some degree for blowing up the exercise amongst like the young men that watch him. And he's probably responsible for some of like the insane levels of like hatred towards women mm -hmm. that, that they're saying. But is it is it really is it really foundationally, spiritually that they hate women or they're just trying to be funny? Because like a lot of the shit I say, like the little tranny jokes and black people jokes, like I don't really hate them. I'm just saying. So is it actually like, like I get how it can be hurtful. I get how it can be hateful, but it's like, do they really feel that way? Or are they just trying to be cool? Yeah, I mean that's the that's the magical question of like Sam Hyde, right? The, mm -hmm. Is where's oh the God. line? I love Sam Hyde. I, I love him. I'm shocked I, that you love Sam Hyde. No I, way. I, I watched his iDubs documentary thing. That dude was, was fucking him the entire time, dude. It's he hilarious. was hilarious. And look, I love meta trolling too. But mm -hmm. one thing that's always tricky is where do the jokes end? Because mm -hmm. at first, Sneeko's jokes about having sex with lots of other women was a joke. Mm -hmm. Then he dumped Maria and now he has like three wives and is also like sleeping around all the time. So it's like, okay, well, you're not joking. It was a joke. And now it's obviously not just a joke, right? Um, yeah, he's like I, saying, I he's saying shit about gay people and it's a joke, but then he literally goes to Dubai and is becoming a Muslim and made a, def a tweet defending throwing gay okay. people up buildings. And you're just like, okay, so like, well, where's, where's the joke? I don't, I am not educated enough to have an opinion on the whole Sneeko issue. I will say this and I can only speak for myself. Personally, me, I am aware of how I feel when I say hurtful things. I am aware. I believe that I can only be held responsible. And by held responsible, I mean accepting responsibility, accountability. I believe that unless I explicitly say, say this, do this, it's not my responsibility. And, I, and even if I know that, like I said, I know who I am as a person. And it's not my problem if people do what they see me do. Because I, there's other times where I'll say, like, I'm just joking or like I'll at the end of a stream I'll talk about being kind to one another so I set that clear boundary where it's trolling where it's performative compared to when I'm wrapping up and I'm like guys this is how I really feel I feel like there there is a possible way to have a balance and I try to I utilize agree. it and Sam Hyde's me, a good example of that right like yeah. Sam Hyde is a level where I'm like I actually don't think Sam Hyde is super problematic at all mm -hmm. but Sam Hyde is pretty different than Sneeko yeah and like for me it's just uh, you know I I know who I am and I know that some people don't agree with who I am or how I do things but it's like I'm learning. I've only been doing this for a month and me, the thoughts I have right now, I acknowledge that my thoughts may change down the road because I already, I remember where I was a few months ago. Like my thoughts constantly change and that's the point of life. That's the point of growing and learning. You have to let me learn on my own. You can't sit here and tell me what I'm doing is wrong or that I need to do it this way because I need to learn or else when I do get to a point where I need to put into practice what I've learned, I won't be able to because you guys, you know, critiqued me or insulted me or told me to do it this way that I'm doing it wrong. Like, just let me figure it out on my own, whether it's good, whether it's bad, it is meant for me to experience on my own. And that's what will make me a better person, a better streamer. Hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, fair, right? We are are figuring it out on our own to an extent, right? You start with yourself and you question yourself and then you go to other people like she's with Kyla and they're bouncing ideas off each other. And then she eventually goes home and talks to herself about it, right? So she's 26. She's going through it. This is her journey, just like Sneeko, just like anyone else. I do think that 
the problem if you're not like even comedians, right? Always say they're playing with the truth. And I do think like, your audience reflects you. And I do think all of these things to an extent, to an extent, to an extent. So I'm open to all the possibilities, but I do. It's like she wants to have her cake and eat it too. Because the dilemma is that she wants to be able to say what she wants to say without really taking on the repercussions of it in some ways, which is fair. Cause like, I think I agree with that to an extent. Like I just want to be able to be myself, but the consequence is like the world doesn't let you be yourself. You, you, cause we don't let other people be themselves. She doesn't want Kelly Jean to be herself. She called Kelly Jean evil for being herself. Cause the truth is like, we don't want people to be themselves, but we want, we want the freedom to be ourselves as an individual. Right. So I think she hasn't radically accepted that she doesn't get to be herself any more than Kelly Jean does. She gets to be as much of herself as she lets Kelly Jean be. And that's the disconnect I see so heavily on the internet is everyone wants to be themselves, but they don't want other people to get to do it because other people offend them. Well, I don't know what to tell you, right? Like, I don't know what to tell you. Do you think that I am critiquing you and your community? Mm -mm. Not at all. I think you're coming from a, a very, like, you just want to know. Like, you're actually, like, there's no emotions in it. I don't feel any, like, personal, you know, feelings in it. I feel like you're just coming from a, like, objective, a non-biased point of view where you want to know. That's the point of these things. To just yeah. learn it and get yeah, to I understand people. Yeah, I don't know your community well mm -hmm. enough to know it all. I'm wanting to talk about, like, the idea, right? Because um, I think I, I think, like, a year ago, I probably mm. more so agreed with you. Okay. Um, Violet says, am I the one who feels like Kyla can see her? I want to talk to Kyla about this. Because I will say, Kyla is really good at seeing a lot of people, but sometimes I do think she misses the mark in seeing the root of people. And what I mean by the root of people is like the, the core of them to some extent, which to be fair, not everyone's going to show her that. But sometimes she'll say things even to me and I'm like, oh, that's wrong. But it it's right through her lens because that's what I'm displaying. But it's not right because she's not seeing the depth of what I'm saying. But that's not her fault because I'm not conveying it, like spelling it out. And that's the thing is like I think Kyla is really good at seeing what people present. But I'm not sure that because maybe it's a lived experience thing because I don't think all people can see all people like all parts of a person. This is really important. I think – I cannot see all parts of a person. I don't think Kyla can see all parts of a person. So the parts you see in a person is the parts you can see in a person. You know what I'm saying? So she might not be able to see like the like the the certain part of a person, even if she can see some of it. So I think it can come off like Kyla's not listening or Kyla's not seeing. But I think Kyla is seeing and hearing as much as she literally can, as we all are. So yeah, so missing some of the gray areas maybe. But I don't think that's bad. But sometimes I do wonder, like, I can't wait to talk to Kyla next and, um, you know, probably in private so we can make sure we're on the same page as friends about the way she sees me sometimes because it's not bad. But I want to I want her to know me deeply in a, a little bit more of a way. So I have to have that conversation with her in private because if we have it on stream, it won't make sense. But I'd love to talk to her. See how I like separate because I want to make the investment in Kyla. I want to talk to her in private so she can understand a deeper part of me that I don't need to explain to the internet, but I would love to explain to her because I'm making that investment of being like, I would like to bear some of myself to you. So we're, we're closer, right? Like that is an effort I am making. I wouldn't do that on the internet, but it only became aware to me because we were like collabing and doing stuff. And I was like, oh, that's an interest. Like, oh, you said this thing, but that doesn't make sense if you're talking to me, but it would make sense if you see me this way. <gasps> oh, I'll explain it to her in private. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm When you do things on stream, you're only allowing a certain amount of depth. Kyla can't know people if they're not going to show it to her. And if I know anything about hiding yourself away, I ain't going to show it on stream. So Kyla is not, it's not that she's missing it. It's that it's not there to find sometimes. And so Kyla's not going to do the guessing work and try to read her mind. So Kyla's making, I think, a really good assessment of the situation right now. Let's see if that changes later on in the story. Pew. I was really hands off about community mm -hmm. as far as like the chat, especially I was like, yeah, streamers have like no culpability at all. And watching, like, I won't say names cause I don't want to like start drama, but watching certain communities that I've been friends with for like the last year shift over time and knowing the streamer personally and watching like the shift in like the community that was like co paired with the shift in the individual. Um, I, I came to be like, oh, 
there is something that's important here about like this community responsibility piece for the streamer. It's just not what the cringe like soy leftists are saying, right? It's not mm-hmm. like being like, you're personally responsible if there are two yeah. slurs in your chat. It's like, all yeah. well, you're as responsible as your TOS is, right? But like, yeah. just because there's somebody like saying edgy in your chat, A, who knows if they're joking or not. But there does seem to be like this, if if the culture that's drawn towards you, when you look at that culture and you go, ooh, this comment, I think highly adjusted and intelligent people struggle understanding certain types of people fully. I think we all struggle to see people fully in different categories. <clears throat> What do people see when they don't see us? Like having an idea of us that they can't connect to? Yeah, I think what they see is almost like a caricature or um, a summary of a person. Like they're not seeing the person. Like when I get painted as a crystal girl, even though I've never owned a crystal in my freaking life, it's like, I don't even believe in an astrology. I don't even believe in tarot. I don't believe in any of that. But I mean, I understand if you think like, my witchy Pinterest page is a reflection. I don't even identify as a witch. Like I don't, I'm not in those communities. I just like the aesthetic, but I'm not even in the communities. If it's like they see what they can observe quickly and go, yep, that's what you are. Foomp. It's like they're not looking for the depth. They're characterizing. It's like a caricature. I think that's what they see. And it's not even in, in malicious. It's just easy. They go for the easiest generalization. That's why my community work, my work is not on generalizations because generalizations make you judge people badly. When you generalize for every um, observation you're making, you are judging badly. That's why you get things wrong. That's why people get me so wrong because you're generalizing my work. You watch my work and you generalize when I'm so niche. I'm so specific. It's like watching me and judging me through the lens of Christianity. Why would you do that? Do I look like a Christian YouTuber to you? right? Do I look Christian? Are you dumb? And like, the problem is is like, they are not dumb, but they're choosing to be dumb. They're choosing in that moment to say like, oop, I'm going to be ignorant and just generalize. Generalization can work. Yes, but not when observing an individual consciousness. And I can't believe I have to explain that to people all the time. Like how exhausting, but that's life. Life is trying to explain and explain, explain who you are. And you're waiting for the people who get it. And sometimes even the people closest to you, like your best friends, like your mother, like your friends, they won't see all parts of you, right? They won't even see you sometimes. And it's hurtful. You're like, bro, I'm literally explaining it to you. It's like, I'm a vegan. And they're like, you're not a vegan. I know you better than you know yourself. You're not a vegan. And it's like, I. sometimes that's just how it goes, bro. There's something a little yikesy here. I think that that's like a good red flag of being like, you know, like I noticed for a while there was like this growing amount of like people who just really, really hated women in my community. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm all for standing men, but just so it's clear, we're not here to just like go to friends. Yeah, everyone's shitty. Everyone's fucking shitty. Doesn't matter what gender, what race, what religion, everyone's fucking shitty. Just at the end of the day, everyone does things that, you know, is shitty. And people don't realize that. That's what I just, that's kind of what I want to draw attention to is like, everyone does something. Everyone's either a contradiction. Everyone does this. Like nobody's perfect. Absolutely nobody's perfect. And I, I I don't know. I feel like people, whenever they whenever they talk about people or judge people or like ask questions, it's like from this like haughty, not you, but like other people, like this like haughty standpoint where it's like, oh, I'm I've never done anything like that. And mm-hmm. even if I have done it, it's different. It's not the same. I'm sorry. If you want to be Christian, okay, a sin is a sin, right? Um, if you're like me in spiritual, uh, energy is energy. Like you are what you you put out, you know what I'm saying? So it's like let, I just want people to stop acting like everybody's perfect or nothing. I, I agree with you. But if I'm drawing a community that I look at and I feel like doesn't represent my values, it means mm-hmm. something in my content is making those people feel like like that's mm. what I want to cultivate around mm-hmm. me, right? So like, yeah, all sorts of people are shitty. I don't want my community to think though that I'm going to stand by men being horrible people and mm-hmm. be like, yes, that is not what I'm interested in mm-hmm. doing at all. People are going to do that either way. No, they're not. I'm going to be honest. Not people in- are going to do that either way. Not, not really. Maybe- no, truly not really. Honestly, block people, move them out of your chat. Make it clear you don't tolerate that amount of behavior. Not like a crazy progressive, right? Like not like a a staunch conservative who's like, don't say the word shit in chat, guys. I mean, I curate the content. I look at my chat and I go, I don't want you here, bro. No offense. Your negative energy is not a vibe. Love you. Bye. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, you don't. Not everyone's going to do that. It's not going to happen every time unless you have a general audience. I have a niche audience. I want introspective, kind people who are trying to be better And also not trying to tell people what to do, just trying to make strong suggestions, right? So I am, I am sending little signals out to the internet and I'm saying, this is who I want. This is who I want. This is who I want. And the people who are like, Hey, I'm that I should join. They do. And then the people who are like, I'm not this, but I'm going to shit on everybody here. We look at them and right away we're like, "Mm, 
You're not a vibe, bro. You're not, not it. Like if somebody comes into my chat, just starts spamming a slur, blocked. No exceptions. But if you have a general audience, if you want to be, be big like XQC, which I don't want to be, I think she said that earlier, right? She like admires XQC. I don't know if she's seeking that amount of fame, but I am not because I don't want an audience that's just like um a username. I don't want an audience that's like, uh, um oh, well, if your audience is big enough, it just happens. So I work to have a niche audience because like that's not the vibe. You know, when you own a yoga studio and somebody comes in not being vibey with the yoga studio, you know to say, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't bring that energy here, right? That's how I look at my chat. My chat is like, my audience is like a yoga studio and I want it to be vibes. And if you're not vibes, you have to leave my yoga studio. It's like the internet is not this weird space to me. My channel is not like this void. It's like a real, it's like a curated space. I'm curating a space and I'm saying the space needs a particular audience and they have to be nice and kind and thoughtful. So I don't agree with this point. I think this only happens when you have a generalized audience. Maybe not in your like if you stand up to it and say like, yo, don't do that. Sure, the people, but it's like, what who's to say when they get off? Like, say they never watch you, right? Maybe they're already that way. Maybe it's just like like their natural tendency to be that way. And I'm not saying it's right just because it's like natural. It's not right, but like who's to say that you were just the thing that made them realize they were, and that's not your problem because they were always that way. They were always. I'm saying not saying I'm not saying I'm changing these people. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not oh, saying okay. like I'm I'm morally responsible for changing these people. Mm -hmm. I'm saying if my community makes people who like try to justify a man hitting a woman in the face with a brick and be like, no, oh, that's yeah. based, right? That's she. I, that's she. Well, more importantly, I don't want you in my community if that's what mm -hmm. you think. And if that's what you think that my community is comfortable with, you can be in my community, have that opinion and know nobody agrees with me. My community, That's totally fine. But if you are entitled towards my community and saying, Erudite would agree with me on this. And I'm like, yeah, no, I fucking wouldn't. That's like the flag to me. So if I start seeing like this growth of a space of being like, no, Erudite would agree with us for like just ruthlessly mocking and bullying like a, I don't know, yeah. a mentally ill person. The reality is, no, I wouldn't. And if I see that popping off in my community, I go, what am I doing that's communicating that to the people watching me that I would in any way support their behavior, especially at my size? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure by the time you're at 10,000, that's a lot harder to do. Like, I don't come mm -hmm. at Destiny or Bosch, but I know like two to 400 viewer person um, feels like something that you can definitely have your head, like finger on a little bit better. I will say this, and I'm, I, I completely respect what you're saying. I, I, I feel like your feelings are valid. Um, but like, I will say this that. Ever since I've removed mods from, like, I have no mods. The only reason I have a mod is, like, just to change title and cat, right? But, like, I feel like if you automatically assume that people are going to do their worst, that they will. And so, like, I've noticed that since I don't censor people, I mean, sure, they say shit, but it's, like, joking, right? Because I'm able to discern that because it's my community. I know when we're joking. I know when we're being serious. And my chat knows. And if I've, if it's ever been where it's, like, I'm not joking, like, I'm able to, you know, uh, communicate that. But I feel like the less restriction you give people, like the less they're going to want a bucket. You know what I'm talking about? Like the more you restrict someone from saying- mm. I feel this way only on my Discord. So on my YouTube channel, I heavily censor. I didn't used to before, but it got pretty toxic after I entered the other communities. And it was like really negative and people were just being so cruel and so bad about mental health that I was like, no. But my Discord- I let them run rampant for two reasons. One, they pay $10 a month to be there. So they tend to be older people with um, more mature levels of understanding and they really want to be introspective. So when they joke, they make it really clear it's a joke. They put memes. We all slap them. We like, we're like, eh, you know, it's a small community because it is expensive to be there, which I think it's worth it, obviously. But I understand $10 a month is a big deal. But I think it really makes a barrier to entry, which brings in the quality. And then some people that I love in my YouTube chat also got banned in the Discord because they ruined the vibe because it happens. The YouTube chat is more wild than the Discord chat. The Discord chat is definitely curated to be a certain vibe, but is m more lax on rules. It's very confusing to understand. The Discord chat has a vibe to it that says, take everyone as being very authentic, no trolling, and don't confuse people. And if you confuse people enough, you've got to go. But that allows me to say, if you're not going to confuse people, you can make as many jokes as you want. Because if you make it clear it's a joke, you're not confusing people. Does that make sense? So on the Discord, people are able to make jokes because it's like, don't confuse people. Be authentic. Don't confuse people. But on YouTube chat, on you know, it's kind of like people are trolling. You know, sometimes I let it go by, sometimes I don't. But yeah, there's something about this that's interesting where I, I do see in my Discord a real, really good ideas come about because they're not very censored, but they're also incredibly mature people. 
So maybe that's the difference is like my audience is like much older. They age with me. My demographic show, like I have viewers into their 60s. So the average age is about 35 of my audience, which makes sense. Um, I don't know. The Discord chat is high school and the YouTube chat is middle school. Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe. There's something about it. I think people enter the Discord for something more. So they form better communities. I mean, people have fallen in love on my Discord. I mean, I fell in love through my Discord. So friendships have formed in my Discord. People have become best friends on my Discord. Like people get to know each other. And it's all adults. It's 18 plus. So it's it, there's that also the barrier to entry. My YouTube channel isn't made for kids, but I'm not sure how many people are minors in the audience. My YouTube analytics say like none, but you know, people lie about that too. So I, I don't know. There's something to be said about curating an audience though. So I kind of agree with both of them where you want to set a standard, but then you also want to say, I trust you enough to be an, a mature adult. It, it's interesting. It's like really hard to explain to people. Huh? Yeah. Saying these evil things, they're more likely to say it. Well, what about, okay, to phone. You're listening to a bitch with a midget boyfriend. I'm not joking. He's Is trolling. Because I know two phone. He's trolling. He's genuine. So he's you trolling. don't think that two phone thinks that I'm a stupid bitch with a midget boyfriend? No, he's because if he did, he, he wouldn't be. No. He what literally about says, TG94 saying, what'd she say? Oh. I was zoned. Uh, I was zoned at what else was she saying? Chat. Go to her chat and tell her to shut the fuck up. Uh, Erudite <laughs> watcher detected, mocking somebody who's like defending me. Yes, she has 200 on See, YouTube, Bozo. Tell her to go back to asking questions. This other bitch was like 40 viewers and it's evident why. <laughs> this is just all a joke? Yes, it is a joke. Does TG know that you don't believe anything that he's saying? Yes, they're all very aware. But it's funny. Because they know, they know actually, and I've talked about this explicitly, that I don't, I don't treat women like shit on the internet. Erudite, if you read this, you're retarded. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure he is good. He's just taking uh, time with what happened. She's butt hurt. Chat hates her. I beat women up. That one's probably exclusively the troll. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'm not. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. I think I am such a mom that I really take pride when people talk good about my audience. When they're like, "Brittany's chat is so nice," I'm like, "Thank you." Like, if this was you guys, I'd be very disappointed. I would literally be like, "Stop it right now." Even yesterday, I lectured two of you for bickering in my audience. Like, stop it. I am a mom at my core and I will mom you all day and long. Stop what you're doing. So I feel like if I was there, I'd be like, stop it. But she's like 26 and she's a stoner and she's having her best life. You know what I mean? She's wearing Yoda. So she, she's not going to mom her audience. But I will say like, I will probably mom my audience the more I age. Like, no. Okay. Like you, you can't talk to people that way um, unless you make it clear it's a joke. But obviously like, you know, what's the vibe we're aiming for ultimately, you know? I'm, who's okay, this one, Khalid saying that I f*** dogs is definitely a troll. Uh, just, you, somebody you says you're going to hand wave it all is trolling, but the community is a legit sweat city, is a little sweat city, not going to lie. Y'all make me hate women even more. I'm punching my dog right now. Okay, well, that's partially a troll. So you see how you're able to like get to Some know Some of it's people. a troll. Well, the issue, this is the thing. Sometimes it's a joke and sometimes it's a half true joke, right? So I, I'm, I'm used to it. I don't really care about anyone's yeah. comments. Like I, I don't give a f what like the 20% says. The issue is that like when I read this, so for example, when I have people on my show, I'm, and I'm not telling you, you have to have the same community as mm. me, but let's mm. be honest. Wait. When I have people on my show, yeah. comments, like I, I don't, sometimes it's a half true joke, right? So I, I'm, I'm used to it. I don't really care about anyone's yeah. comments. Like I, I don't give a f what like the 20% says. The issue is that like when mm. I read this, so for example, when I have people on my show, I'm, and I'm not telling you, you have to have the same community as mm. me. But let's be honest, TG94 doesn't like me, obviously. What makes you say that? Every single thing that he has said about me, which he's allowed to dislike me. He's trolling. Only trolling. There's not a single true thing he's ever you know, said. We've had, I've had serious conversations with him before. I know I when believe he's going. You okay, so you think that he actually has a really neutral view and he's like, yeah, she's actually pretty nice. He's, he's just, just trolling. Saying, like he's not saying it jokey. And even like with me, I have, like I said, I have some of those beliefs that I'm saying. It's just played up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he probably, probably is misogynistic, but he's playing it up. He would never actually say this shit to a real woman because I've had conversations I'm with him. I'm sure, girl, girl, he's probably misogynistic, but he's playing it up. What did I just hear? What is this? What is that? What does that mean? He probably, like, is it, does a troll mean I'm joking? What are we redefining words here on the internet? Like, is what they're saying real? Is there a truth to the joke? <clears throat> if there's truth to the joke, then they're just trolling. 
doesn't mean the same thing as it means to me. Right? She just said he probably is misogynistic, but he's playing it up. I'm trolling. It's what I think. I'm just playing it up. Are we redefining what trolling is? Y'all, the cognitive dissonance, bro. Sure, he wouldn't say it to a real woman, but isn't that f***ing pathetic? Kyla is a real woman. He is saying it to a real woman. Her name is Kyla. It's not my problem. That's his issues to work through. (laughs) I'm not. She's just a big kid, guys. Like, I can't, I don't know what to tell you, but like, she's in her 20s. She's a big kid like Sneeko. I don't know what to tell you. I don't see anything very interesting here. I'm misogynistic. I know how I feel about women. And I think I've I've proved that, especially online, because I, I have always tried to be kind to other women, even if they're not kind to me. I've tried. I've genuinely tried. And I think that I actually give women an easier time on the internet, because there are some women that I've come across that I just want, I want to lay into. But women already get it so much. Let's do it to men. Let's make fun of the men. Let's, you know. But that being said, if they do make misogynistic jokes, I'm not going to change know. my I think sense men of get humor. on way more than women do. I think really? the, I think our society is basically like anything goes with men by and large. Unless no, I like agree. But don't you think it's funny to bully men on the internet? In real life, I agree. I feel like men get treated worse than women. I, you know, I believe that women actually do get Do I think a it's funny to men. bully on the internet? What? way more than women do i think really uh, i think our society is basically like anything goes with men by and large unless no, i agree like but don't you think it's funny to bully men on the internet in real life i agree i feel like men get treated worse than women i you know i believe that women actually do get do i think it's funny to men. bully on the internet no bully men yeah make jokes and troll and roast people you've never watched a roast on comedy central well there's a i hate roasts really unless no i agree like but don't you think it's funny to bully men on the internet in real life, I agree. I feel like men get treated worse than women. I, you know, I believe that women actually do get. Do I think a it's lot funny to men. bully on the internet? No. Bully men, yeah, make jokes and troll and roast people. You've never watched a roast on Comedy Central? Well, there's a really big difference, right? This is the issue with like this, like. What's the difference? The view count. Do you think that I think that the difference is the view count? Because there's Pete Davidson used to make jokes about his dead dad in the Twin Towers. These are totally different things. They're not even the same things. They're totally different. Pete Davidson is making a joke about himself and his dad, and he allows by proxy people to make jokes about the same thing, which they do. That's not the same thing as what people are saying to Kyla. I'm confused about this. What is she saying? And that's funny, but when I say something evil like that, it's evil. Maybe. It depends on the context around it. Because the problem is, is that what's her name? Merck? She keeps saying, these are my real beliefs. I'm just playing it up. And therefore, it's a troll. But that's not what a troll is. Isn't a troll supposed to be a joke? A joke is supposed to be sort of about the truth, but not really meaningful. So, like, again, there's, like, this confusion. confusion. Like, I don't think she knows boundaries as well as she thinks she does. His dad died in 9-11. He, he turned into ash, right? And he made uh-huh. a joke about it. Me... I got diddled by my dad at the age of eight and I make jokes about it and I'm wrong or that's bad. You can't do that. Or I, you- Ooh. Okay. First of all. You can't I, make fun wait, of other people. I'm sorry. No, I'm talking about others. Too. I don't have others. a problem with any of the jokes that you've made so far. So wait, did she get diddled by her dad? Is that a confession? Because that's some trauma. Okay, I'm just, no, I'm just talking in general because right, you said the that. The issue is, what we're trying to say is there is going to be a point where people absolutely hide their hatred behind it's just a troll. It's just mm-hmm. a joke, bro. And it's like, it's not anymore. Right? And that's, that's the line that I get like sussed out, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've been in girl circles where like, there's mm-hmm. like that one girl who jokes about intentionally leading guys on all the time. And she's like, oh yeah, I just keep it around to buy me dinner. And you're like, ha ha ha, that's mm-hmm. obviously not true. And then she makes that joke 30 more times. And you're mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. no, that's, just- I don't know, Stacy. I'm pretty sure you yeah. just are doing these things. And you're just like, just joking in case it like, you're like Schrodinger's control. Okay. Yeah. It's only a joke if people respond and act like that's a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Wait, she got graped. Yeah. She talks about it with destiny. Jesus. Oh, that is some intense trauma. Mm, That is like years of therapy. That is like, that's very, that's a lot. That's a big burden to carry. Yeah. So what is the purpose of like, why, like, I guess what, what, what answer are you looking for? Like, do you want me to be like apologetic? Do you want me to be understanding? Because I understand your point of view and I respect it, but I don't accept it. Like, I don't, I I don't don't like the idea of you hand waving all of chat at all times and saying they're just trolling. Okay, so what times. do you want me to do? Because I'm not going to change. Like, what? what is, like, what are you, like, are you asking you, me how I feel? What do you think that I'm saying? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I feel like you're, like, there has to be a purpose for the question, right? Either it's to get, a like, a view of how I we're feel about, about it. We're talking about an idea. Yeah, we're talking about yeah. an idea. And so we're what is, arguing. What do you want? Yeah. What do you, what we're talking you? about the line of responsibility. Okay. Contact creators. That and, that's what bridged this. Yeah, but I answered it, right? I don't care. And I'm wrestling with you on the idea. Do you just not want oh. to debate the idea? 
Because, I mean, like, what, we're debate. We talked about it, right? Like, I said, like, like this is how I view this. Is how, like, I don't. The dilemma is that, um, uh, okay, so, again, I don't know what's about, what about, I know they're about to fight, but I don't know exactly how it happens. Uh, I would just, like, literally, I would like them to define what a troll is and what playing up true things means. And if, like, I would just start there. Like, this feels too personal. Like, Kyla's all of a sudden switching it up and asking Merc to, like, have a lot of responsibility. But Merc's like a child, so I would talk to her like a child. I'd be like, hey, bro, um, which is why I'm lenient on Sneeko because he's like a child, but also not because if he directly harms people, which he has, I denounce it. I don't date Sneeko. Oh, my God. I say it. I say it. You guys are like, don't tell people what to do. You're so eager to get yourselves hurt. Don't date Sneeko. Okay, listen. I would tell – I would ask Merc, like, what is a troll? What is a joke? Because again, like we're not, I'm not getting any clarification on that as a viewer. I'm not understanding what she thinks she's saying. Because she can't say it's a troll, it's a joke, and I'm amplifying, sensationalizing what I think is true. Like these are not the same thing. So again, I'm surprised like no one asked about, like where's the clarification? Don't get where like we're just arguing in circles because I'm not going to change my viewpoint. You're not going to change yours. We've agreed that I respect your opinion. You respect mine. She's, she's doubling down. No, we don't respect each other's opinions. No, I don't respect your opinion. Your opinion is silly. It lacks responsibility and no accountability. I don't respect it, but you can do you. Human's going to human. I don't have to respect you to human's going to human wave you off. Keep making your cesspool of an audience. Keep self-sabotaging. Keep getting docs by the same people you're upset by. Keep, 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 keep being human. I don't have to respect it, but also this idea of like, oh, I respect you. You respect me. No, I don't respect this. I don't respect your chronic cheating. I don't respect your chronic lying. I don't respect your chronic audience of degenerates. I don't respect these jokes. I don't respect any of it, but like humans are going to human. You do you. What is this whole like, oh, we respect it? No, I don't respect it, but also like you do you. And I've said how I felt and I've been honest about it. Like, I don't know what else there is to discuss about it. That's what I'm at. Like, I'm confused. Okay, so you just don't want to debate this anymore is what you're saying. We can debate it, but it's not really like, what's the point of the debate at the part? When you, when someone admits that they don't care and they don't feel the same way, and then you keep asking questions that you answer, you've answered before. Like, if you ask me a different question about the topic, I can maybe give you something, but ultimately I don't care. Okay. Yeah. And I was trying to see if I could convince you to care a little bit because I don't that's what that's, Okay. That is what I wanted to know. That is what I to know. What you just said. You were trying to convince me to see if I cared or whatever you just said. That's what I, that's what I was asking. That's the question that I was wanting answered. What was the purpose? Mm. The point is you're not going to be able to because I'm not going to change my mind. Okay. What do you think the point of a debate is? Yeah, see, when did they go from, okay, this is fair. Kyla said this in my chat. So Kyla took accountability for misreading the situation. I didn't know they were having a debate. I literally thought it was a discussion the whole time. So even I'm shocked that this is a debate. Like, when did it turn into a debate? Why did it become a debate? Um, like, I can, I feel like I got the pool, like the, I thought Kyla was doing one of her like humanizing conversations, not a debate. So I can see where it just like, I can get that too. Because now she's not curious about Merck. She's wanting Merck to change. Like she's not asking and inquiring anymore. And I think that's the different, like this whole time she had been like curious and inquisitive and open and soft. And then she switched it, which is fine. But I, I'm kind of like, oh, I, uh, even I feel like, oh, that was like rough. No one thought it was a debate. Yeah. So that's okay. That's okay. That's fine. So now we know. Let's see how they handle it. If not to um, try to change each other's minds. To just discuss viewpoints and just get to know people and like see how people. Mm, that's not what a debate is. You want a discussion, which is fair. People think and feel. Okay. Really? That's what I think of it. Yeah. Oh. That's how I view it. Because I, me, I don't feel like it should be like, because if someone's made up their mind, they're not going to change their mind. So there's a, the, the only other option would be to get to know someone, get to know how they think. Yeah, I don't think, I agree with you guys. I don't think you can be vulnerable in a debate. I think trying to be vulnerable in a debate is like an oxymoron. And and I think that, I think we all thought this was like a humanizing conversation. So we didn't expect the debate word to come out. I wonder if Kyla also mis misspoke maybe and maybe doubled down on it. I don't know if she, because she didn't, she didn't seem like she was in debate mode the whole time. So maybe something changed for Kyla too. And I missed it that she thought we could go into debate mode. Um, but I agree. I, I don't think you can be vulnerable in a debate. And that's the problem. That's why I don't like debating because there's no vulnerability. There's no honesty. There's no breaking down barriers. There's no saying, well, you know, what do you think a joke is? What do you think a troll is? Because that's so interesting to me. I never heard someone say that. You know, what is this? Okay, okay. She probably thought it was in bad faith at this point and maybe contributed to her shutting down. For sure. Well, it sounds like it came out of nowhere. 
which is so fair. Like I, it does, it, I'm, I'm sure Kyla didn't even mean for that to happen. Right. But, um, yeah, I think it, it does feel like it came out of nowhere. Get to know how they click, what makes them feel the way That's they do, what makes them think the way, yeah. and don't even change. Because if you're trying to have a conversation with the with the goal of changing their mind, I feel like you miss a lot of things because you're just your I only agree. goal is to change their mind, right? I agree. So if you just go in, a I 100% agree. That's why I don't usually push back on people because again, like if you're debating, you're not listening. You know, Debate, thinking I'm gonna respect this person, I'm gonna hear how they feel, I'm gonna I'm gonna like get to the bottom of why they think. Oh, that Alex, maybe that's a great point that Airdyte maybe got a little like triggered not medically by Merck's chat and then decided or Merck's and then decided to turn into a debate just my opinion maybe I could see that happen she seemed pretty um passionate about the comments so maybe that could be a thing that's fair I think that makes sense to me like you know what I mean it can be hurtful to read comments I do I feel like it's much more productive compared to I'm gonna change your mind you know what I'm saying because you don't really listen you know you're not actively listening and yes you are but I'm just saying like it's not do you, you think go, that you my mind could around. be changed I don't know I have no thought on that I'm not trying to wait not. Do, do you, you think go, that you my mind could be changed? My opinion? I don't know. I have no thought on that. I'm not trying to change your mind. So then why were you debating me? I'm Because I'm trying to get the question that... I didn't think she was trying to debate. I didn't get that vibe at all. I got the vibe of them they were discussing. I didn't get the debate vibe. It felt like Merck was indifferent. It didn't feel like she cared what Kyla thought. It felt like she maybe got defensive, though. I, I feel defensiveness f from from both of them, actually. Answered, and you answered it. You said your goal is to change my mind. So if you're not going to change my mind, then like let's just talk about it. You're asking questions, and I'm answering. You can try and change my mind, but it's not going to happen. Uh, okay, I feel like we need to step like three steps back because now we're like yeah. meta. Am I not making sense? No, not totally. Here's my okay. So. The question I wanted answered, you answered, you said, the point of talking about this part, just this portion of our conversation, debating. is to change my is to change my mind, right? I would say debating is typically for changing people's minds. Yeah. But when okay, did the so debate that is start? your personal like prep, like that's your thought. My view sure. on debating is to lay aside trying to change anybody's mind and just talking about it. That's not a debate. This is why words matter, people. This isn't a debate. Okay, Merck does not want to debate. She can't like redefine debating. Okay. Erudite is allowed to debate and debating means changing people's minds, which is why I do not debate on the internet traditionally because I don't want to change people's minds. I just want to have a discussion. And if they do change their mind, cool, bro. It doesn't matter. We're all going to die. But like, okay. Because I think that is a more productive conversation. If so you, you don't, okay, so you don't want to debate is what I'm hearing. Like, because in my yeah. mind, debate no. is always going to be something. Okay, that's your mind. In my mind, debate is a different thing. See, we're debating. But we're like, okay, bubbles, but also Merck is doubling down because that's not what debate means. It's never meant what debate means. And that's not what debate means. It's a debate right now. And I'm trying to understand. She's made up a word and made up a definition. Yours, in, but I'm not okay, trying to change I'm going to use the word blah, 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 blah to mean what you're talking about. So when I okay. say debate, I mean oh. trying to convince each other of an idea. Oh. And when I say blah, 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 I so mean you're condescending having a I, my oh, no. I'm not yes. condescending. Oh, no. I'm saying well, blah, 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 blah sounds a lot like blah, blah, blah. Uh oh, now they're getting. Ooh, okay. What happened? What happened to cause the tension? Not to me. That's just how my brain works. So I'm condescending at the fact that we're having a semantic fight all the time because I don't care, right? My understanding of a debate, and I would say a lot of people's understanding of a debate when we say this is to change your of the mind. You said, I want a debate to get to know you. That to me is not a debate. That's a conversation. I don't care about the words. Yeah, I agree with you, Kay. She doesn't know how to say she doesn't want a debate because maybe she thinks taking the debate L. She's Yeah, she thinks it's taking the debate L. She should have said, oh, actually, I'm so sorry, Kyla. I actually don't debate. Um, I would like to have a discussion, right? Um, Alex C says definition of a debate, a formal discussion on a particular topic in a public meeting or legislative assembly in which opposing arguments are put forward. I, I, uh, maybe it's colloquially or like, you know, I don't know it as like quite that anymore. I would say when someone has a debate, you are trying to, even in debate, even in high school, when I was a part of debate club, like you would show up with your two opposing ideas to convince one side that you're right. So even when I was in debate club in high school, the goal was to convince the other side that you're right and they're wrong versus a discussion is like, hey, can we discuss this idea? You know what I mean? So I'm not sure what definition we're all going off of bubbles, but I'm with Kyla on this. I think a debate is to try to give your side and convince. And that's what I learned in debate when I was in debate class or debate club. And then I think a discussion, from my understanding, is where you're chilling and having a conversation. I think technically Merck's definition is a debate. Very possible, right? Like totally if we're going off that definition. Yeah, I can see that. I can see this. Okay, I can see. Like you didn't want to debate from the very okay, beginning. Okay, then let's just call it a conversation. You just wanted to talk about it. Oh, a conversation. Like, a conversation. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Sure. A conversation. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. And so what is the point of a conversation? To just 
understand people who they are because I feel like everyone just listens to people to try and change it or prove something or like when in reality sometimes you just can't it's best to just look at that person as who they are love them on a different level listen to them and that's it like they're I don't know why people always feel like you have to change people granted something needs if it needs to be changed there's nothing you can do about it because a person will not change unless they want to but if you're oh CJ, you said Kyla can have a condescending tone. She needs mm, needs that feedback. I think people with BPD can be sensitive to it. I will say people with BPD, we do tend to be very anti-authority and anti-people telling us what to do in general. Like I certainly have an issue with authority, <laughs> as you guys know. That's why I believe in Build-A-Bear Lives because I don't want to listen to nobody tell me how to do my life. So I will say probably, which is why um, I would say it does feel like uh, it can feel that way in debates where people are like, I know better than you, especially when they demean. And not that Kyla is doing this, but often in the debate sphere here, it's like, you're so stupid. This is so dumb, blah, blah, blah. But then um, Merck creates an audience that is demeaning and insulting. So a part of me is just like, yeah, I don't, I don't understand those two things balancing themselves out, but I can see it feels rebellious. I think she's just going through her rebellious stage and trying to figure out who she is. And she's trying to say no to any rules and also trying to have a troll audience and also trying to have them be... I think she's just trying to have her kick and eat it too, which sounds pretty on like on point for young people at this stage. You're going to still have that conversation, which I am totally open with. I feel like it should be done from you're just trying to pick my brains, not change my brains. Interesting. I feel like I feel like when people say that they're not trying to change each other, 90 percent of the time they're just lying. It's like a, you, you said this, actually. I really appreciate this. You said I pretty I genuinely think the world would be a better place if we didn't try to change each other. Because so many people double down on their ideas because people try to shove their bullshit down their throat. And I understand there is that argument for like social ostracization and moving people in a direction and trying to say like, this is how I expect you to be. But literally, I do think the world would be a better place if we didn't shove our ideas down each other's throats. And at the same time, like have your opinion in your space. Like on your channel, have your opinion. When you're having an open discussion and people consent to it, give your opinion. But I, I don't, I don't, I don't relate to this. I don't think, I really, yeah, I don't really relate to this narrative at all because it, it also insinuates a, 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 a type of investment that I have in people that I don't, I don't care. Take a shot, guys. We're all going to die. I don't care. Like literally take a shot every time I, I mention that we're just a reminder we're all going to die. Like we're all going to die. None of this matters. This conversation we're having on the internet doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Like we're only matters because of the moment it impacts. So if you want to change people's minds, you have to, within your own boundaries, put up walls and say that. But I just don't think, yeah, I just, oh, this narrative is so interesting to me. I don't get it. Be privileged. And of course I'm using it because why the fuck wouldn't I? And I'm sure you'd agree. It's cringe when pretty girls just say that they don't have pretty privilege and that mm-hmm. they say that they're not like utilizing it. It's like the most annoying thing to me when girls are like, I don't really have pretty privilege. And it's like, shut up. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. I appreciate yeah. that frankness from you being like, yeah, I do yeah. have pretty privilege and I'm using it. <laughs> Duh. Right. Um, mm. I don't believe most of the time that people aren't trying to change each other's minds. I would say most dynamics between people, there's an element of like wanting to compromise and bend and flex around each other and ideally I find it, like, I hate it. I literally ask any of my best friends that have ever tried to pull this, ask my mother, ask my siblings. The moment I get the vibe that you are trying to make your happy, my happy, I will not talk to you for a week. You will get less Britney privileges. I don't like it. And maybe it's the borderline, but I've spent my whole life working on figuring myself out. Fuck off, huh? Now, the people I respect who genuinely give me feedback in a in a way that doesn't coincide with I know you better than you know yourself or I know what's good for you. I'm happy to listen to those people because they could be right. But again, the people who are less invested in me changing are the people I trust the most because they're more likely to be objective. If you have the investment of wanting someone to change, you won't give them the honest answer. You'll give them the answer you think is right for them. Do you know what I'm saying? I actually find it to be the opposite or like maybe this way instead. I find the people that are invested in you changing will give you less honest answers about what's good for you because they're usually projecting what's good for them onto you. So the people that don't care how I end up, I actually feel like they have better insight into me. Like my farm brother, he already knows I'm a degenerate, like in my own way, because I'm not Catholic. He's never going to live a dream where he's going to convince me to be Catholic. He always jokes like, I hope you're Catholic one day, but he is literally not actually invested in converting me to Catholicism 
He lives by example. So when I ask him for advice, he's always giving me advice through my lens and a little bit of Catholic, but he's not trying to make me Catholic. He's praying I'll become Catholic, which is different. It's different. Like some level of mutual agreement, but if the agreement isn't there, then like hopefully we can talk about it for long enough that we can like come to an agreement at the end, which typically is a certain level of like change or compromise. So personally me, I don't, I don't feel that way. I, whenever I, the things I do, I don't do it to change people. I do it in the hopes that they'll want to make that change themselves. If they see someone else being the change, they're more likely to do that. So like you said, like, you know, you influence people, right? I influence people in a different way. Being vulnerable is a big way that I influence people because I can't tell you how many messages after I've had one of those streams of trauma dumping, I've had people message me. I've had people text me like, yo, like you don't know what that did for me. It's not that I'm trying to change people. I'm showing them that it is okay to change and that if you are not scared of changing, your life will change for the better. Like even myself, like I'm not perfect, but some of my siblings know if they come to me, okay, my sibling came to me the other day and was literally like, okay, I know you're going to judge me, but I need you to, I need your advice. And I just need you to tell me how it is. And as they were talking, I was like, oh, and I was making my faces and they were like, I know, I know, I know. They're like, okay, just tell me like, what are your thoughts? And I'm like, okay. And then in that moment, they are asking me to give them my personal thoughts and not just like what's good for them, but like also like they know they're like, oh, I know you're going to prejudge, go for it. And I was like, okay here we go, you messy bitch. And then I'll go through it. Or like my sibling will call me and be like, Brittany, should I spend money on this? I'm like, spend money on this. And then they don't spend money on what I tell them to spend money on because they're going to do what they're going to do anyways. And I love them. Like, look, everyone's just going to do what they do anyways. You just got to give advice and hope that they take it. Or maybe they won't. Maybe your advice is bad. I have often given bad advice because I'm a person and I'm flawed. So again, when we say, I want you to be more like me, you better be a thousand percent sure it's the right decision. When I say, I recommend she gets rid of this XQC tattoo. It's not for me. I don't care if you have a tattoo. It doesn't impact my life. I'm just saying looking at you in general, I'm going to say it's it's going to be better for you in the long run. I'm going to get a guess. I'm making a prediction. This could be wrong. That getting it removed will probably benefit you more than keeping it. I'm just going to make that bet. It has nothing to do with me. I don't have an XQC tattoo and I wouldn't get one. And also her having one doesn't impact my life. It's not a values of mine. I have tattoos. So I think you should have tattoos. I just think you should have tattoos that are about you and not about memeing to your communities. I think you should have tattoos that, that are going to bring you more joy than less joy. You know what I mean? But like, you don't have to get it. You don't have to keep it or you can keep it. You can ignore me. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Literally, we're all going to die. It feels like a really nice way to say the same thing. So maybe help me understand. Okay. Yes. The difference is I'm not telling people they need to change. I'm I'm just drawing attention to the fact that it is possible. I'm not telling them change. I'm not trying to make them change. They can watch me and they can choose to do whatever they wish with what I'm doing. But it's I choose to be vulnerable because that is a big part of my life is being vulnerable. And if mm -hmm. people see me being vulnerable, they will be vulnerable. And it's been proven time and time again. And like you said, you don't know much about my community, but there are times where we get we get into deep topics and it's and we have these serious conversations and it's like even off stream, I'll be in Discord and we'll talk about like, I just, I just value being very, you know, vulnerable and I'm okay. not trying to convince anyone. I, I think that's fine. I guess I f it feels to me like we're basically, because what you just outlined, I'm like, yeah, I would agree with that by and large, right? Like, I think some people are maybe more aggressive in trying to change each other, but I'd say like probably the healthiest orientation you would, should have is trying to show people that change is possible, right? And like having space for people in between. So I guess when I'm saying, I think 90% of the time people are lying when they're saying that they're not trying to change people, mm -hmm. because I think most people are fundamentally in the space of like, both themselves always changing and to some degree hoping other people are changing. And I think the most toxic people are trying to force others to change with like no compromise or like grace for like what that looks like. Uh, ultimately, I don't care what people do who watch me. I just know that I'm going to be the way I am. And if they enjoy it, if they enjoy it, if they don't, they don't. So I don't, I have literally no thought, no comment. That's I'm not doing anything to make people change. If they change, they change. If they don't, they get to watch me cry. But ultimately, it's it's what I feel like doing. It's what I want to do. And that's that's all. I don't have an answer. I'm not changing my mind. Um, this is how I feel. I don't like I don't know what else to say. OK, sure. That makes sense. What happened? I'm just reading chat because I, like I don't know if and I'm not no, I between know. us like you definitely there's like some sort of like tension now between us. No, there's not. No, I'm talking about like making sure I'm not like making sure I'm making sense. And I'll, like everyone looks at their chat to see if uh, mm. they're making sense. And I, I'm not saying anything wrong. They're, they're getting what I'm saying. So it's like, it's always this kind of frustration. It's like, well, if my community understands me, why can't anyone else understand me? That's when I get frustrated because I, I want to be understood. You. It, to be fair, I think I am understanding you. I think where maybe my <sighs> hesitation is coming in. 
Sorry, what? Sorry. So now she's like disconnected. It's awkward. She's not being honest or transparent. She's feeling defensive. So she's reaching for the the safety blanket, which is her audience. And her audience is giving her that reassurance that like we understand you, which is good. I think we all need that. I look to you guys sometimes to do that where I'm like, oh my God, am I crazy? Um, I think she's making a lot of sense. I think they're both making a lot of sense. I think that to be fair, these are two different kinds of categories of people. Genuinely, they could be they couldn't be more polar opposite. And I am more on Merck's side of the aisle than on Kyla's because like I genuinely don't care what people do because I'm going to die. And I don't know how to explain this to people. So fundamentally, I only care what people do when they're in my sphere and when they impact me and when it makes sense with my work, like it has to relate to me. If it doesn't relate to me, I don't. I think Mark is young though and takes it further. Like I care what my audience is like and I want a healthier and more mature audience because I think it reflects me. But I think if we're being honest, Merck's audience does reflect her. They are trolly and upsetting and rude and young. And I think that does reflect her, which is fair. She's 26 and she's like going through it. So I want to say that I want her to go through it. I want her to feel this. But I will say that I bet in three to six years, she'll probably mature out of her audience. And she'll probably want more for them. And I feel like Kyla sometimes, because she's in the de- debate sphere, and no offense, and I mean this with the most, like, I mean this in the nicest way possible. Nothing we're doing on these panels matters. It's for fun. It's for views. And it's for money. We are changing some people's lives and I definitely want to help my audience, but we're not really doing anything for the global universe. We're not doing anything for the world. We're not doing anything for the planet. We're not like actually like no one's going to remember us. No one's going to remember me. No one's going to remember Kyla. No one's going to remember Steven. No one's going to remember any of us. And if they do, that's insane. Why? We barely remember anyone else. Name any historical figure that we remember. And do you think it adds up to a quarter of the people who have died already? Why would they remember us? Why would anyone in a hundred years remember any of us? And half of us aren't even having kids. So also, who's going to le- even like talk about our legacy? And it's on the internet for the rest of the world, but there's always new people on the internet. So this idea that my life is more important than exactly what I'm doing here, I think is the narrative I despise from people who are like, I'm going to change you. Who are you changing me for? Who? The world? No one's going to remember Sneeko. No one's going to remember any of these people. It's not going to matter. Now, if somehow they are remembered, how long and in what way, right? And like, who are they remembered by? I don't know. I just don't believe in this idea of like, oh, we're here to change people. Yes, but to what extent? If you're only changing your audience, then you just have to worry about your audience. If you think I'm changing the world, like what world? Whose world? Whose world would you absolutely be changing? I know I'm impacting my audience, so that's all I think about. I just think about my audience and my responsibility to them. And I I focus on them. That's my niche. That's who I'm responsible for, my audience. I'm not responsible for people outside of my audience. I'm not responsible for people who randomly see me once or twice and never give me the lick of time. I'm not responsible for anyone who says they watch my content, but I'm not responsible. I'm only responsible for what I preach to my audience. And that's it. And then once my audience forgets who I am, because we're all going to get dementia and Alzheimer's, and once they never tell their families or their kids who I am, no one's going to remember me. So this idea of like, I think everyone's trying to like change people. That's the problem with society. It is kind of pretentious. It is. I think it is pretentious to think we can just change people. And it is pretentious to think it's our job. And it is pretentious to think we're going to change the world. It's pretentious to think we're going to be legacies. I think it's pretentious to be like, I do stuff. I do stuff for society. It's like, bro, you do some stuff for society. Relax. Who is society? Like, no offense. We're like 200 stream people. What's going to happen? Even Kai Senate and iSpeed and all these people, God bless them. No one's going to remember them. No one. Because they will be replaced. Mr. Beast might go down in legacy as YouTube lore, but anyone who doesn't know YouTube won't care. And there's going to be plenty of people in the world. People right now don't even know who Mr. Beast is. And you want people to care in 100 or 200 years? No one is going to care about you. So when you say, I want to change people, what you're saying is, I want to change a few people right now for this one moment of time. And that's it. And that's great. But you're not, cha- like, you're not doing something magical it's just like yeah it's just stroking the ego it feels 
very egoistic to and just can't handle the amount of ego it takes to be like, I'm changing people. Ugh. Maybe, or maybe people are just gonna be people. Should we can, I don't know what's happening. Should we continue talking or no, I'm just good check in like, by now, Kyla though. Really good check in by Kyla. Well, you've got me tripping in my head, like if if I'm not making sense because you're saying you are that making I'm sense. The... No, okay. you are making okay. sense. Okay. I think the I think the issue that we're running into is we're agreeing a lot more than I think that you think that we're agreeing. I'm just I'm not, not thinking using, of like, it. I, I'm not thinking of a scope of agreeing or not. I'm thinking of it as learning who you are, learning I'll what your thoughts in, are. Okay, I'll say it in a feelings way. I don't feel like you're understanding what I'm saying. I don't feel like I'm being seen right now. Now, Kyla did come into our chat earlier and say that she did feel like she wasn't seeing her. I think that's probably appropriate and accurate. I do. I don't feel like Kyla is being very vulnerable in this moment. So I don't even know what version of Kyla she's offering. Like, I, I feel like Kyla is being very professional right now. So there's no vulnerability for her to latch onto or believe. Because Kyla's not saying anything. Kyla's being, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, Kyla's not saying much for me to grab onto. Um, do you know what I'm saying? Versus Merck is like, I'm feeling crazy. You're making me doubt myself. She's being vulnerable. She's like, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm doubting myself. And Kyla is like, oh, mm -hmm. like Kyla's being a little bit too professional. That's like, on my no, side, that would be my your, your opinions are validated, but that doesn't mean I have to change because of how you feel. I, I'm not asking you to change. And that's my frustration is that you're still not mm. seeing me. You think that but you said the to, you said the whole point of a debate was to change my mind. Or a conversation. That's the point of a debate. But, but you're changing that your mind I, isn't you're not you. trying to change. Oh, we are arguing in circles. Wait, I'm I don't so to... Wait, what did Kyla just say? But, but, but you just said that mind isn't changing. You're not you. trying to change. Oh, Kyla can't mean that. I have to ask her now. Kyla can't mean that. Did you hear that? No, no. no. Oh, just to change my mind. Or a conversation. That's the point of a debate. But, but, but you just said that mind isn't changing. You're not trying to change. Changing your mind isn't changing you. No, that's. Wait. Is that the disconnect all of us are having with the debate sphere? When you debate people, you are asking them to change. When you're saying change your mind, you are saying change who you are. What does me, Kyle, did she say that? No. A debate was to change my mind or a conversation. Of that's the point of a debate. But, but like you just said that mind I, isn't you're not you. trying to change. Yeah, that is really weird to say out loud. Why did she say that? Okay, I know Kyla. Well, I know Kyla enough, I think. She, in good faith, maybe she believes that. Maybe they all believe that. And that's why I get frustrated with this part of the internet. Wait, is this the problem I've even been having with this part of the internet? Do they literally think when you say, oh, I want you to like debate better ideas, they're not saying they want you to change? Of course you're saying you want people to change. That's why we want people to change their ideas. Oh, we are arguing in circles. Wait, I'm I don't so wanna... confused. Okay. What do you think that I feel about you? Who do you think I think I... you are so far? It's not about who you think I am. I think you just don't like the fact that I have no personal responsibility for something that you don't agree with. I don't have a dislike for that. I disagree with you. Okay. Like, same I, dislike, as an disagree, idea. semantics, right? Okay. No, so no, no. You hold on, hold on. Okay. So for me, I think what I'm really trying to understand. So, whoa, Tom Foolery. Yeah, I disagree. I think changing how one thinks about an idea isn't changing them or what they do. <laughs> Y'all, I grew up way too conservative for this. No way. Really? What bubble is this? What bubble is this? What bubble is this? Is this, what bubble is this? No. Huh. This is the discussion. Well, no, what does this mean? Because if, if you think of an idea differently, right? Like it's going to change you because you're literally, yeah, you're literally are your thoughts. That's why people say like if you're even subconsciously racist, it's going to come out in how you you interact with people, which I do see and believe. I think if you like you can convince me smoking is bad for me, that doesn't mean I'll stop smoking. Yeah, okay, hold on. I agree with that. I think you can say like I know smoking is bad for me, but I'm going to smoke anyways. But you're not what do you just because smoking is bad doesn't mean you have to not smoke though, right? So I would argue that like it doesn't matter if it's bad, you should smoke. Because like it's only bad if you care about living a long life. But if you don't care about living a long life, which is subjective, then you can have the thought that smoking makes your life shorter, but I'm still going to smoke. And that's not a contradiction. You know what I mean? Mindfulness and meditation says you're not your thoughts. Well, you're not – well, in a, in a, in a spiritual way, 
you're not your thoughts, you're the consciousness that you are, but in a very like realistic manner when it comes to exhibiting behavior, like you usually are your thoughts and they usually come out. That's why everyone's biased and prejudiced. And it shows like everyone always says like, oh, I'm not biased. I'm not, you know, but it comes out in the way you talk. Just like Kyla's saying, the way these people troll, they're saying they're misogynistic because it's coming out in the way they act because it's the way they think. I think you can change certain ideas without changing your core value system. Hence, I'm still who I am as a whole. But now I see as I can see a certain situation differently. Like, do you mean like a um, do you mean like a person who's like pro life but allows people to be pro choice? Are you guys talking about that? Merck is acting like Kyla wants her to change how she acts online or change her community. She does. She wants her to understand that there can be harm and she can still do it. No, Kyla is asking her to change. Kyla wants her to be different. That's what I'm getting from this conversation is Kyla does want her to be different. Because again, like Kyla said, a debate is to change your mind so she can act differently. You know what I mean? Now, we are our thoughts. You can have ideas. Now, okay, I want to, whoa, I want to make sure that your thoughts aren't exactly who you are, but your ideas are. So your ideas and beliefs about the world are a part of your consciousness. Your thoughts, like things that cross your mind or intrusive thoughts, things that happen in your head aren't who you are. So I really want to make sure we're like being clear about this. Kay just said it. Yes, Kay. That's so funny. You're reading my mind here. The thoughts that cross your mind aren't you, but the thoughts you continually think become a part of you. Exactly. So I want to make sure we're, I'm not being misunderstood. The intrusive thoughts you're having, those random thoughts you're having, the random fantasies that, whoa, where did that come from? That's not you. But the, the, the beliefs you hold, the narrative you believe, the when people say, I want you to change, they're saying, I want you to think about this thing so differently that you act it out. So I'm just making sure, right? I mean, we just watched your old videos. You've changed so much, but you're still the same person. It depends on what your thoughts are a part of you are. Yes. So I want to make sure that the thoughts that get turned into ideas that then get turned into action are who you are. The thoughts you have that you contemplate and don't act on are just thoughts. Does that make, does that make better sense, guys? Am I, I want to make sure I'm clear here, right? I just want to make sure that I'm clear. Like your thoughts are not who you are. But your the th I, thoughts that turn into ideas that turn into actions are who you are, right? Which is why whether or not Sneeko believes what he believes, his actions need to be considered. Okay. I just want to make sure we're on the same page here. But we might not be. Let's keep going and I'll read your comments and I'll read them out in a second. So, again, what I'm feeling in this conversation is I think that you're not feeling seen by me. Which is why you're like disconnecting. You're reading your chat more than you were before. Um, stuff like Because I'm so, con dude, I'm so fucking confused. I don't, you, I you, promise whole... you, your chat isn't going to tell you the answer. If like you and no, I. No, I know, but I still can get engaged. You said yourself, you, if someone in your chat, if a majority of your chat saying one thing, maybe there's something to introspect on, right? That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to have a moment of introspect. Hold on. I just want to be clear because I, I know some of you are getting it. I know we're a little delayed by the time I talk. You, I, you guys see me a few seconds later. So obviously as a neurodivergent person who suffers from intrusive thoughts, I know I'm not my thoughts. Right? But I am the thoughts that turn into ideas and then turn into actions and then they are my beliefs. So if I have an intrusive thought that is like something, I don't know, sexist or misogynistic or misandrist, and then I go, well, that's a dumb thought. That's not even real. Foomp. And I push it away. It's not me. But if I go, hey, yeah, that's a good idea. And then I manifest that into a, a, a brand and then I manifest that into my beliefs. At that point, like whether or not it's performative, it's having some action. Whether or not it's truly your thought is confusing because you're acting it out. It could be performative. You could be somebody who's saying things you don't mean. But again, like that's why the nuance is so necessary. So yeah, I just want to make sure everyone understands as a person who experiences intrusive thoughts, I am not my thoughts, right? I am absolutely um, uh, making sure that we don't conflate thoughts with ideas, with beliefs, with action. These are different things. Okay, you are not your intrusive thoughts. Exactly. Okay. That was condescending too. I promise you, your chat is not going to give you the answer. <gasps> Did she say that just now? Because um, like I'm so, con dude, I'm so fucking confused. I don't, you, I promise whole... you, your chat isn't going to tell you the answer. If like you and no, I. No, I know, but I still can get engaged. You said yourself, you, if someone in your chat, if a majority of your chat saying one thing, maybe there's something to introspect on, right? That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to have a moment of introspection to make sure that I'm not saying anything that is outright like crazy. 
you do it too. You just said, you said, well, no, you did it. So that's what I'm doing. Granted, it may be a little inappropriate to do it right now, but it's live feed chat. I need to get a live feed based on how they're receiving what I'm saying. Because your community is your community. My community is mine. And as long as they're happy, I'm happy. So. <laughs> what? Uh, same kind of point. I don't think you're seeing me and I'm really trying to communicate to you that I'm trying to see you. Okay, I say it's not productive, so we move on. <laughs> Agree to disagree. All right, next part of the topic. And I'm not trying to rush you or invalidate you. I don't know what we're disagreeing on. Oh. That's the problem. Because I obviously think they're having a clear disagreement. Do you guys agree that Kyla can't see her? Because like there obviously is a disagreement. And this is it. I think Kay just said it too. When people say, I think this, they're saying, I believe this. And like when, like, again, like, I think this, like, everyone's using words very specifically. I think the crickets were an edit. Yeah. Oh, you said vulnerability and all this stuff is like a part of your thing. If you would like to yeah. stop talking, that's fine. It's what not I'm that I want to stop talking. I'm just fucking confused, dude. I'm trying to explain it. If you keep yelling at me. I'm not. I, oh, and now, she, okay. You know what? I promised myself I would set a clear boundary. I do not like the way you're painting me right now. You can think about me what you wish. I feel like this conversation is no longer productive. It's unsafe and it's unhealthy. So I think it's it's not, I think it's past the point of productive. So either we change the topic or we call it a night and I go get ready for my other interview. That's the most healthiest options I can think of right now. That's pretty good. You're wow, I am so impressed with Merck right now. That was really good actually. Borderline to borderline, that was really good boundary setting. That was really fair because she was kind of being unintentionally like gaslit a bit, but not because Kyla's at fault. Kyla literally, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, Ky uh... wow, okay, wait, now I understand why you want me to talk to Merck. I, yeah, Merck did really well here. I'm really proud of her. Wow, okay, no, 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 we like Kyla. She's a good person. Um. Kyla, I think Kyla's way of talking would trigger like plenty of people I know because it sounds very dismissive and she's not actually seeing Merck correctly, but Kyla doesn't know that. Kyla is genuinely being like trying to be thoughtful, but I think, yeah, wow, I'm having like, this was really good. Merck is, Merck is putting down a really good boundary right now. I'm really proud of her. Because I know exactly what it's like to be upset like this. This is a very relatable upsetness. This is this is genuinely how I felt during the whole Destiny debacle. Because I was like, why are you painting me like that? That's not what I'm saying. And it sucks because like people will look at you and they're like, I see you. And they're saying the complete, like, if you're seeing me, say my idea back to me. And they can't. And like, I feel like, yeah, uh, I think this is important because Merck is still growing. She doesn't have enough tools yet, but in like six or five or seven years when her audience is more mature, she's more mature when they're all more mature, they she won't have these problems as much, but she also needs to not expect people to have the conversation this way. I can't expect, like I've learned through my whole like Destiny Burning Bridge not to expect people to understand uh, the way I, like I have to paint it out. I just slowly paint it out for everybody and like, and I can't be, I have to be like really clear because they don't allow any room for the nuance of like, I don't, I don't want to change people. Like that doesn't make any sense to this bubble. Like it literally means they don't believe you because they really think they're so right that they do want to change people. But I don't know that I'm right. Like I literally am like, I don't know. I, even when I say like, get rid of your XQC like tattoo, I'm like, I don't know. Like, don't do it, do it. I don't, you know, I just think you should, but like, it doesn't matter. I don't care what you do. Like, okay, okay. So both of them need, yes, a lot of slack, a lot of love. Both are so well-intentioned, I feel. I feel like Merck is also way in her journey of healing. She's not, this, I understand this, right? Okay. I get both of the, I think I, I think I get it. I think I get it. Let's finish it. Let's finish it. I'm not saying I, I, you're trying to gaslight me or whatever you're trying to do and make me feel some type of. She's not trying to gaslight her, but damn, it feels close. It feels like gaslighting because she's not seeing her, but it's not gaslighting. It is not gaslighting. Wait, I'm, I'm not really triggered. Not. I'm I, really not. But why are you saying I don't understand? Like what? What? what I'm, why? Are I'm you... telling you my feelings. I'm not telling you. I'm saying okay, what I'm feeling. okay. And I'm telling you that I don't. I don't get what you're like. I'm not. I'm I, confused I and now. That. And I'm now you're trying to say I'm yelling, which is trying to paint me as an aggressive person. I know exactly what you're doing, and I'm not going to stand think, for it. I don't think that yelling makes you an aggressive person. 
What I'm saying is in this conversation. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm going to say this out loud so Kyla can correct me later. If she's still watching this, I don't know. Kyla doesn't believe Merck. Kyla thinks she's in the better state of mind than Merck is. But Merck is in a justified state of mind, whether it's like her best state of mind. It doesn't matter because she is slightly triggered. But like, I think this is a dilemma I'm having with Kyla with the tone Kyla is exhibiting is that I'm in a better place than you. So I know what's really going on. This could be wrong. This could be the projection of what I know what it's like being in Merck's shoes. So since I know what it's like being in Merck's shoes, that's the feeling I get. And that's the image I feel like I'm seeing on the screen is like, Kyle is saying, you're yelling and I'm trying to be calm, which does insinuate I am more right than you and you should listen to me. And that's the problem I'm seeing. Agreed? Okay. Is my audience agreeing with me because we're all neurodivergent fucks? Or is it because we know what it's like to feel like people aren't seeing each other? Like, again, see, my audience is validating me and I'm like, oh no, like, am I just being validated by my audience? But that's the thing is like, there is a disconnect happening, right? I'm not feeling super seen which makes the conversation. I don't feel tough. safe. I don't feel I, safe. I know. I already said that. So then there's no point. We both don't see each other. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I see you. I'm saying I appreciate your- I agree with Mark. They're both not seeing each other and the conversation. Opinion. I validate you. I don't know what else I can do. That's how you feel. All right. Just like how I feel you. It's the same. We're at a stalemate. So there's no point. Either A, we talk about something that brings us back together or we end the conversation now. Uh, whatever you would prefer. I don't have like a specific topic on the top of my mind. So. Okay. So if there's nothing else to kind of bring us back, to bring us into the center, then there's no point. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, it was yeah. nice. It was nice talking to you. I guess I have no idea what to say. Uh, I, I don't know. I, it, yeah. seems, it seems like there isn't something that I can say to you right now. It feels like, if I'm being honest, it feels like everything that I'm saying to you is like backfiring. And I don't. Because it's, it's wrong. I bet I could do it. I bet I could be like, yo, I fucked up. But like, that's the thing is like, Kyla doesn't have borderline and Kyla doesn't have a personality disorder and Kyla doesn't have fucking trauma in the same vein. She has trauma. Absolutely. She has major trauma. I'm not discounting that, but it's not the same vein and it doesn't exhibit the same way. As far as I've seen in all of Kyla's debates, she doesn't have moments like this. When I talked to Cherry, she had to get up and walk away, which is valid. And I'm glad I was there and I could like manage the space. No problem. Merck feels like defensive in a way that's, I understand. I am in remission for my borderline, but I know what this is like when I was, you know, when I you start to feel like questionable and you're wondering and you're like, oh my gosh, what is this? I have to tell myself every day, like, this isn't a real feeling. They don't mean this. 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 And I do that, like, I do that with everyone. I like, they don't mean that. They don't mean that. They mean this. They mean this. They're talking like themselves and themselves means this. They're not actually trying to trap you. They're not trying to hold, like, they're they're trying, they don't see you, but that's okay. Them not seeing you doesn't mean they won't, like, they're going to hurt you. Like, I have to just remind myself. And now I've trained myself so many times, conversation after conversation after conversation after conversation, that, like, this isn't about me. This is about them. But right now, I think, I think Merck feels like it's about her. Like, hey, you're making, like, why are you saying this to me? Like, you're, you're but Kyla's not, Kyla doesn't even mean what she's saying. She, like, has good intentions. She does not mean to do this. But the dilemma is that because I don't think she can actually see this type of particular category of person, it might feel, now I feel bad I didn't talk to Cherry. Damn it. I don't know if this is a good decision or a bad decision. I cannot decide if talking to Cherry is the right decision or a bad decision because I can't tell how authentic she is. But if she's like Merck, then she she I should talk to her. But if she's not like Merck and she is like, If she, oh, I don't want to say if she's like Kyla, but if she is like a category of person who can't actually see me, then I can't, I can't communicate to her because it will be like this. If a person doesn't see you and you don't see them, it's like, this is what happens. And I, I want to avoid these conversations because I feel like it's, it's really unfair to all of us if we do it. You know what I mean? Destiny reviewed this convo and painted the picture that Merck was someone who can't handle debate and she was in the wrong conversation. I think those people are so bad at seeing people that they always paint everyone else like they're crazy. But that's that's why I'm saying bubbles. Listen to me when I say this. Don't have conversations with people who can't see you. Have conversations with people who can see you and criticize you and have fun debates. But don't have conversations with people who can't see you because like this is what happens. And when I say see you, I don't mean like understand you in like a superficial way. I mean literally vibe with you. Like they're like, oh, I get what's happening, bros. Like I get you. Like have a conversation with people who are like, I get you. Not like, 
oh, I kind of get you. Yeah, you like you do BDSM, like ch- ch- uh, chains, like chains. Don't. That's not helpful. Talk to people that are like BDSM, bro. I get that. I get that with my partner. I feel really connected. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's such a disconnect here because like there's not enough. There's not enough. Oh, this is so interesting. I don't know. I don't know why. I'm not sure what's happening. Okay. Yeah. So I, uh, you're valid to feel that way. So I don't buy, I guess. I don't I don't enjoy the conversation. Thanks for allowing me to come on, I guess. Ooh. I don't Oh. All right. So yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. I, I did enjoy talking to you. There's no personal feelings. I this was fun until I like got super confused and now you're making it into something that it's not and I don't appreciate it. And I feel Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with this comment from Mary. They didn't see each other at all. And once they both picked up on that, they had both uh, moments of being snarky and condescending. Yeah, I think they were hitting each other because it feels scary. It feels like I'm going to go for something that's low. I'm going to go for something that's low. I'm going to go for something that's like sensitive. I'm going to go. It feels very defensive, right? And I think that that's the problem is like it feels very. Bryson says, you mean like a deep conversation, right? Not just shooting the shit. Yeah, sometimes talking to debate people feels like you're superficial and shooting the shit. It does not feel deep or safe to be vulnerable. And Merck tried multiple times to be vulnerable, but it wasn't safe to be vulnerable because it turned into a debate. And that's why I say like, man, fuck. Wow, 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 wow. This is really, I'm not going to lie. This makes me feel a lot better too about like some of the thoughts I've been having about this space Um, where I'm like, yeah, like this is, this is it. This is the thing that's been happening in these spaces where like really vulnerable people are trying to have real conversations because they've had to be introspective and question themselves and realize they could be the bad guy and realize like they're sick of people also calling them the bad guy when they don't feel like one. But then people come in and they don't have the same levels of like interaction or trauma with themselves. And it feels like they're not seeing each other in the right way because everyone has trauma. So it's not like you have better trauma or worse trauma. It's more like different. It's different feelings you know what i mean wow this was really eye-opening wow 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 yeah feel uh violated right now so i'm gonna go for my health and safety it's nice talking to you bye everyone wow okay that's kind of what i suspected was going on but i wasn't sure that's too bad wow that was beautiful bro That was a beautiful display of human interaction. I'm going to like that video from Erudite. Go subscribe to her, guys. Wow. Because, you know, um, you know, while I look at Merck, I see like a young person on a journey, figuring it out. Also in the middle of like, I assume her therapy. Also, you know, she's dealing with very different things. Wow. That was fucking beautiful, bros. That was such a human moment. Wow. And that like really, like I said, it really validated. um... Wow, that was. Yeah, I can see why you guys want me to talk to talk to Merck. That was really what a powerful human moment, you know, because listen, this space is difficult and people will try to gaslight you, bros, unintentionally, even intentionally because they don't know themselves, but people will try to convince you that like I see you I see you you know what I mean so interesting that is so interesting I didn't understand why Kyla didn't have more empathy I don't think she can I I'm really going to give Kyla the benefit of the doubt here and this is what I've been saying she can't she does not understand that part of I because I know she doesn't see that part in me and I know Destiny doesn't see that part in me and I know their audiences don't and they can't see it in Merck they cannot see it for I could be wrong but it feels like every time this kind of conversation has happened even Kyla thought my level system was like a borderline thing why what is this stereotype about borderlines that people just don't understand I don't understand how like what have you never studied philosophy what does that have to do with borderline And again, I think people who say that, like they just, they really look at people with personality disorders and they just genuinely don't, I don't understand why that's your first thought. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't make sense to me at all, especially since my co-author doesn't have borderline. So it just doesn't make sense. Like why would a philosophy that has a, a, a number system, which is pretty normal, 
right? Like, why would that be borderline? But I think they think that because it, it they want to say it makes more sense. Like Destiny blaming my borderline and then realizing it was my PTSD. I think people want to believe they know stuff about borderline, but they, I just don't think they do. And people make mistakes all the time, but I think people just think too much of it. Like they they don't understand like, yes, but also like if you know how to talk to people with borderline, it's n- and they're in recovery and they're introspective, like you're good, bro. Like you're going to have a better time. Merck is obviously doing the work. Now she's a little woo-woo and I'm not a big fan of that, but like who cares? You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, very interesting, y'all. I really wish Erudite showed how upset she was after the chat. You mean, um, oh, like Erudite was upset, like after it happened? Like she was, like she was, um, like she talked about it in her chat, you mean? People have a tendency to blame anything on BPD person done uh, on their BPD. I know it's so annoying, bro. I think Erudite said it was a borderline thing because categorization can be helpful to borderline people. I don't know if that's true. Yes, but that makes, that's like, that's like saying, um, oh, my friend doesn't like the smell of urine because um, that's like autism. It's like, well, maybe they just have autism and hate the smell of urine. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like correlation and causation, people. You know, it's like correlation and causation. You know what I mean? But I, I know Kyla's a good person. I know she's a very good person and she's trying really hard to understand people. So I in no way, shape or form think she meant for that to happen. Um, But yeah, wow. That's interesting. But yeah. Is. Yeah, it was sneak up. You want to spread. I'm saying I don't know how to between. So I guess anything wrong. I think it's fair to, for Kyla to be upset. You know what I mean? I won't reach out to Merck. That's not my job. I don't reach out to people unless I have something to talk about. I don't have anything to talk to her about. So you know what I mean? Like if she wants to talk about it, but like I'm not going to reach out to her and be like, Hi, you had an argument with a YouTuber. Do you want to talk about it? Like that's, I'm not a drama channel, right? That's not my job. Um, But if she wants to talk about it and she reaches out, I think that's different. That's like me helping out. But like, I don't, I don't know how to make, I don't know how to even do that. Like that's not something I'm interested in doing. Um, If that makes sense. Okay. That's kind of what I suspected was going on, but I wasn't sure. That's too bad. Huh. Uh, I mean, that's kind of what I expected. I was worried, but yeah, it is what it is. Okay, hold on. Let's uh, do... Do you have a lot of conversations like that? (laughs) It's been a while since I've had like max tier almost conversations. Um, (laughs) So... Yeah. All right. I'm so I'm so annoyed. I'm gonna take like one second. Okay. Good for Kyla for taking a break. See, Kyla's a good person. Like she cares. She's really thoughtful. She cares. I think that's really lovely that she cares. Oh, oh shit! I'm so annoyed. Okay, we're good. Yeah, why do you think she called this a max tier conversation, right? Like, I'm starting to worry that everyone who has, like, I really hate these spaces for mentally ill people. Um, I really do. I especially hate the Destiny Sphere for it. They're so discounting. Like, they just don't understand how they're contributing to it. And it's so funny. Um, <clears throat> but like, I don't understand how everyone who has even a slight possible like problem with their mental health is like Mr. Girl or Lav or like people who are 
weaponizing their mental illness or maybe not or it's like what does that mean you know what I mean I'm having a little bit problem with that like I don't think she was Max tier at all and I don't even like Max Max is so obviously like he needs so much help but at the same time like Max tier emotionally for her oh like for her okay for the impact that it happened to Kyla fair fair <laughs> why isn't Kyla allowed to be upset no she's totally allowed she's she's upset because she cares Kyla is upset because she's a good person. You know what I mean? Just because she comes off as professional doesn't suddenly make her neurotypical just because Merck is worse off. Their conversation is mutually triggering. I don't think Kyla would consider herself triggered. I think in that conversation, Kyla gave off the vibe that I've got my shit under control and Merck is the one who doesn't. But I'm not sure she feels that way now. But in the conversation, she wasn't saying she was upset. Merck was saying it. And then when Kyla said, I feel like you don't see me, it almost sounded like, but I see you. So that's, I think the dilemma is that I'm not sure if she's doing it to protect her feelings, but that's why people in my chat are saying Kyla always comes off like she thinks she's better than people. But I think that's a defense mechanism we all use, myself included, to like make sure we don't cry on stream or to make sure like we've got our shit under control, especially since Kyla's in a really toxic logic bubble where they're like, I'm logical, but like none of them are logical, all of them are emotional. Literally, these men will throw literal tantrums and be like, but I'm logical and anyone else is emotional and in their trauma. And I'm like, okay. So and literally, like, the problem is, like, no one can win in this space because if you're too vulnerable, you've lost the conversation. If you are, like, if you, it's just, it's, you don't win. But Kyla is really, really genuinely feeling upset because she's a good person. And she's, she's trying to say, like, man, I didn't, that's not how I wanted it to go. You know what I mean? That's not how I wanted it to go. But she was dismissive and she did get off, give off the air of, like, I'm not the one who's making this weird. And I'm curious if she knows that now. Okay, sorry. I'm super, I'm just so annoyed. So I'm just trying to like. Yeah, on. I think she, uh, Jessica says, I feel like she looks angry, disappointed and let herself down and how productive the conversation went. I agree. I, like I said, I think Kyla really wanted it to go well. Um, I'm really excited to talk to her about it. Maybe eventually if she's open to it, to ask like, how does she feel? Because somebody should check in with Kyla. Hopefully Nick has, I'm sure already. Um, cause this must've been really painful, you know? Yeah. <sighs> I also think sometimes, yeah, um, Little says, I think it mimics, um, what I've seen in a lot of family dealing with a family member with poor mental health. I see this thing that happens with mentally ill people where like the person will, antagonize 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 and then once the mentally ill person's like oh my god boundaries red I don't want to have this conversation they're like oh see you can't have the conversation and I'm like it's it's like this insane like they'll literally like break you down and I'm not saying Kyla did this but I say I, I think in this space it often happens where they're they'll literally break you down and be like see you can't handle it and I think we all can't handle it as Destiny, who literally blocked me and won't have the conversation with me. And he won't admit he can't handle it. And he'll, he tries to weaponize information, which is really interesting, right? You know, the other day on stream, I heard him say, oh, I know stuff about her health that like, oh, if I just, I could tell the internet. I have no idea what he's talking about. And then I'm sitting here thinking like, yeah, I did confide in him about one of my health problems. Why would he tell the internet that? Right? Now, maybe I'm looking into it too much. Maybe I'm reading into it. But why would he weaponize something I told him in private when I've never told anything he's ever told me in private on the internet? Never. And he thinks I'm going to do it. He's so afraid of people. He thinks I'm going to tell people what he told me. And I'm not going to because he's not directly hurting anyone who doesn't or isn't involved in the situation. It's not my business, right? So look, I don't have to. But when he brought up my health stuff, I was like, oh, are you going to tell people what I told you? And if you are, what does that mean, right? So like I'm sitting here looking at a guy. He's looking at me and he's so afraid that I'm going to say something that he's ready to say what he knows about me, but he can say it. It's just private medical information. So yeah, if you want to be weird and tell people that, that's super weird. But I've never told him anything that I haven't already told you guys. You know what I mean? He's just mad you're not as public as him. Well, 
yeah, I'm very private, but also like that's the thing is like he he doesn't have to worry. I'm not going to tell anyone. And I don't have to. Right? Cuz he's the only person who needs to know and the people involved. But like that's the thing. I look at that and I see that and I'm like I don't even believe he's a bad person. I think he's so untrusting and he's never met someone like me ever. He never has. And so he doesn't believe me when I say like, I don't care, dude. I care in the sense that you're making it sound like you're not doing something you're doing. And I care in a sense that I don't like lying. But that's the problem. Like that's the problem. So again, I don't know what this part of the internet really thinks they're doing out here, but they're not helping people. They're helping some people, but they're not helping people like me. They're not helping people like Merck. They're not helping people who actually are trying to be better. They're really slowing down a lot of progress, right? And that's the thing that I think is so interesting. And I don't think Kyla meant to do this. And I see Kyla trying to pull herself away a little bit from it. And I see her trying to like be better and not encourage her audience to be toxic, but it's really hard in this sphere. It's really, they're not mental health aware. They don't care about your mental health. They don't, they don't care about you. They are not invested in you getting better. They want to expose you for views and tear you apart. And that's just what it is. And so, you know, if somebody wants to like, I, you know, I think it would say more about him than me if he shared it. And that would be interesting. But like, it's, it's weird that he even said it on the internet. Destiny misread you. He thought you were trying to be mean when you said you were just like conversing and he's also on edge now, but he does say you're a good person on stream. I think he's a good person too, but I also think Sneeko's a good person. <laughs> I think everyone's a good person unless they're really, really evil. And I don't think very many people are evil. I don't think anything he he's even done is like evil. I think it's just really tra traumatized and f***ed up. Like Sneeko is f***ed up the way he treats women. But trauma can do that. Bad decisions can do that. And telling yourself you're right can do that. When you feel like you're right, you will hurt people. You will hurt them with the best intentions. And that's the problem. Right? And that's the issue I have. I don't like it. And it feels like every time this has happened to me in my YouTube career, I've never said anything about it. But I really want to stand up for myself and other people in these moments. And I do want to send a little beacon out to anyone who feels like, oh, like, I, I want to talk, like, I know this. I know what you mean. I know what's going on. Or like, yeah, like, I thought I was being, I thought it was crazy because I was told it's not that big of a deal or I shouldn't be upset about this, but I feel upset about it. And that's why I have open DMs for people that need to reach out. I might not respond to you if I feel like you might be a, a troll. But people reach out to me all the time. And they're like, dude, I, let, I had an interaction with this person. And I thought I was crazy. But then you're right. Like, it is wrong, right? I was like, yeah, dude, nobody should be doing this. And if they are, like, you don't have to interact with them. That's why I keep saying it. Don't date XQC. Don't date Sneeko. Don't date people who are dealing with cheating and commitment issues. They spread STIs. They get you pregnant and ditch you. They're not responsible enough for your feelings. They will gaslight you unintentionally. Even if they don't mean to, their boy attitudes will get you into trouble. They might be good at their core. You might see them in moments and think, man, this guy is really good. Cool. Doesn't mean you have to date him. Doesn't mean you have to sleep with him. Doesn't mean you have to get pregnant by him. Please, I beg of you, just stop trying to fix people, bros. Jesus, let them be messy. If Destiny came out and was like, I'm really messy and I did do that and that was shitty and like we're good, I'd be great. But he keeps, like, I don't know why he banned me. What did I say that wasn't true? What did I say that his wife already didn't confirm? What did I say that isn't already confirmed by the internet? What is he talking about? But he doesn't want to face it. He doesn't want to say he's a bad person. He literally said on the stream the other day, he doesn't care if his partner cheats on him. He cares more about the fact that I compared him to Sneeko than his wife cheating on him, which Melina never did. But if Melina did, he wouldn't care. He said that on stream. What is that except trauma? What kind of logic is, I don't care if my wife would cheat on me, but I care if my friend I just met on the internet compares me to Sneeko. What is that? That's mental health. There's just no way to debate bro yourself out of it. And that's what I want to stop on the internet. 
he's got way too much clout and way too much notice that I want people to be like, you know, you don't have to like, okay, he's, he does good for what he does, but like also his community isn't healthy. His community will literally like make you feel crazy and it's not okay. It's not okay. When they're literally the weirdest, I've never met values so weird in my life. It's just like the weirdest set of values or non-values. So anyways, people are good, but humans are going to human. And this is a very human thing to do, right? I debate well, so you have to ignore all the bad things I do. I'm not taking it personally. I'm super annoyed. And so I'm like doing like the wet annoyance. I just don't want to say something that I'll regret later. <laughs> is the main issue that I'm having. <sighs> Fuck. Which is why I'm like tearing up because I'm like so frustrated. You know, when like girls get like wet mad, I'm like wet mad or I'm just like, don't want to say anything mean. <laughs> just trying to say. Oh, calm. hold on. Okay. Hola. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Wait, how's Hello. our, how, yeah, yeah. How's our, can you hear me? Are we having check, a one, two, three, check, check, check. You're slightly like a robot, but I think I there might be, yeah, I think there might be a delay. Or can you not hear I'm me? Not Hold on. No, 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 no. It's me. It's me. It's me. Kyla, it's me. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. I'm now. on freaking push a talk for my last debate. Hold on. Let me change that. How annoying. <laughs> That's okay. Say hi to the chat, girl. Hello, people that I cannot see. I'm driving. For your chat, just to know I'm driving. Sorry. Okay, please be safe, girl. Please be yeah, safe. I'm, wi I'm, I'm fully wireless. I'm fully wireless. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, how are you? How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling okay. Um, tired. Uh, yeah, I got 16 hours to drive today, and 11 tomorrow, and it's just been a, just been a lot in the last like week for packing and school and work and stuff. So. That sounds intense. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah. doing great. I want to make sure like, so we just watched your stream and I know you know that, but I, I know it's like so, emo I feel pretty emotional. Like it felt very like emotional and I don't want you to feel too distracted while you're driving. Uh, yeah. I mean, if, if I feel like I'm going to get too distracted, I'll pull over. Um, okay. Obviously before okay. anything else. Um, yeah, I was uh, I was actually able to listen to a fair bit of it because I have pretty good reception right now. So it's just on in the background while I was driving. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm pretty up to date. I think I saw everything. So Great. it is pretty emotional. Actually, I was feeling pretty emotional towards the end, especially. Um, so yeah, so there might be some emotions. So if you'd rather not get into that today, that's totally okay. No, I'm okay. If you're okay, just let me know, okay? Yep, I will. Perfect. So I, I got to ask, because I guess if you heard my commentary, right, I do, I, during the conversation, it did feel like you both mutually missed each other, which I think was pretty clear. Would you agree to that? So towards the end, especially, so as soon as I said the blah, 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 which big L for me, I, I stole that from somebody because they said that to me and I thought it was hilarious and it broke like a lot of tension between us. Mm. Didn't laugh here. Um, so just a big L, totally understand. I heard Destiny say like how it would probably land better oh, if I ever risk that joke again, which I probably won't. Um, I will try a different version because yeah, it wasn't meant to be demeaning and I totally understand why she felt demeaned by it. Um, so as soon as she reacted that way, I was like, fuck. Um, and I started finally being like, I'm, I'm missing something. I, I, I'm misreading her. And so then I was like trying to figure out how to see her but she was so like disengaged by that point that I was like I don't know what to do obviously my read of her was off so I was like okay I got a blank slate her um but now she's shut down and not vulnerable so I'm like I can't see anything um so I think I just started like somewhat panicking towards the end I think you had mentioned when I like did my slow speech of being like don't yell this is like kind of what happened that isn't me trying to be demeaning at all it's me trying to like slow down and be like um, this is what I'm thinking and feeling. I'm really not trying to come across any way to you. I am genuinely, because by the end I was like, okay, hey, I need to figure you out. I'm trying to figure out what went wrong. 
Um, and it seemed like, yeah, that just, yeah, by the end, I was like, I don't know how to communicate to you that I, I, I see that I don't see you. Mm-hmm. And I know that you're not seeing me because he keeps saying things that I'm not saying. But I don't know how to rectify this. And if I ask you about it, it seems like me asking you about it is also kind of blowing up in my face. So I don't know what to do now. Yeah, it's really difficult watching it. And again, if I watched it, I'm sure three, four times, I'd notice things that I didn't notice or maybe make different assumptions, you know. And so that's what's difficult as well is that sometimes when you first watch something, we get a lot of the first feelings of it. And I'm sure now that you've seen it, I'm sure multiple times, you're kind of having different thoughts about it and reflections. I, I obviously don't think anything was personal. Like I really know, I, I think from what I know about you, you're a very well-intentioned person and you do have a desire to help and make people better. I think sometimes, and this is the one criticism I would have of the interactions I've had with this space in general, is that I feel like everyone says they're mental health aware, but I'm not seeing it when it comes to like personality disorders or I'm not seeing it when it comes to people who have severe trauma about authority, or I'm not seeing it when it comes to the philosophy of like, I'm not trying to tell people what to do. So like, even when you're trying to comfort someone and say like, okay, calm down, calm down, that feels like, why are you trying to tell me what to do? And so often I'm always amazed at the way people handle these situations, because I think for some people that would be comforting, like, okay, we're good now, let's calm down. But Often when I'm in those situations, I just go, for sure, bro, I feel you. And then I just let them sit there and wallow because they're already being told. They already feel threatened. that They were told what to do and what to think. So I wondered, like, did you, like, pick up any of that eventually rewatching it? Or did you – do you feel like you've noticed that in a pattern of people? Um, uh, Maybe I'll do, like, a shit sandwich for myself. I think – pretty i'm pretty good at reading people but i'm way worse with the internet because there's just a lot less body language going on and so i think like one of the big mistakes i made early on is reading reading merc in a way of like very rough and tumble kind of bonds to like idea wrestling which is something i really value which is like what i was calling quote unquote debate like Mm. anytime in my mind i'm talking to a friend and then we have opposite ideas on something we're now like debating and we are trying to convince each other's right it's just like it's all within the context of a discussion so it doesn't feel super unnatural to move between the two but maybe that's just like a my circle thing i'm not sure yeah um I do think in the debate space, there is, um, I think there's like this pressure. So there's a pressure to be right, uh, which is why I think a lot of people feel um, it's really hard to be like vulnerable in this space um, because vulnerability isn't like right or wrong ever. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And it can be really hard to conflate that because like there's this piece of like I like I view ideas as like chess pieces on a chessboard and you're the chess board, right? So like ideas can come and go and move around. But you're you're kind of separate from that to some degree. Like I still see you as like a valuable human with like a personality that just has ideas that come and go. Um realizing and watching this, that is not how everyone feels. Mm-hmm. Um so that's a really good lesson. Uh, because for me, right, if I'm saying like, well, wrestling about this idea, like I'm not trying to change you. What I'm saying is like, your chessboard is just fine as it is, chipped and all. That's okay with me. It's okay with me that you have feelings. It's okay with me that you have a personality. All that's okay. I'm just saying this idea that or this chessboard piece we're moving around doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't think it makes sense to say like it's all memes and jokes. Uh, but also like people are saying like pretty awful things uh, i don't i don't like schrodinger's meme as like an out for like pretty harmful ways of speaking about people um so listening to your experience with that is really insightful because i think i think it outlines why probably particularly like so many people i think feel like attacked in this space mm. um in part because they are because I think even in the debate space, I very much view people as like ideas and, and who you are is, is separate to some degree. And I understand that your ideas influence who you are, but I ultimately think you are who you choose to be to some degree. Mm. Um, and so like, what's more interesting to me is why you chose that idea, right? Like, what does that tell me about you that you chose Nazism, you know, yeah. not, that, not you literally, right? Yeah. But that's what's interesting to me. Um, 
And I'm realizing that not, not everyone approaches ideas in that way. And also if you're like debating an idea that's also personal, you're, you're moving through like two conversations at the same time, which is like an emotional, personal level and an ideological level. And they can't be dealt with the same, mm-hmm. um, like at all, right? Like pushing an idea, you can be like, well, this idea is right or wrong for these reasons and here's the evidence. That's way not the case when it's like a personal idea. Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question. Sorry if I'm like rambling in a random direction. No, 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 you're doing great. I actually, and I'm curious too, because I think some of us, like, I think you're right. So many people think debate is just like what friendships are. I mean, I formed so many of my early friendships on debate that even my brother and I got in a fight before I left for Europe because he tried to debate me. And I was like, I don't want to debate you. And he's like, what? That's how we bond. And I was like, I'm sorry, we haven't talked in three years, but like, that is not how I bond anymore. And he was like, what? He was, well, that's how I bond. And I was like, cool, then we don't have to be friends. And he was like, wait, whoa, I want to be your friend. I was like, not if you have to debate me he's like but that's how I make friends and we went in circles about like I don't want to do this so I'm curious like what made you because the whole time I thought you were doing a humanizing stream with her but then you were like we're debating and I was like oh fuck wait when did the debate start so like what happened in your mind that was like this is a debate now uh basically we had two different opinions so the only way I knew Mark I don't I don't watch her I don't watch her content at all right I had interacted with Mark once on stream and my exposure to her was super funny super fun she came in like swinging um like calling out xena on something and then i kind of like helped moderate the discussion between xena because demon stepped away and and her and like kept xena from interrupting her and merc would like come in with ideas and stuff so i read this girl like feisty likes to debate wants to wrestle kind of like a jokester super chill that's Mm -hmm. how i like read her and i think some of that's true um, and I didn't really watch any content with her in it afterwards. I'd seen some people be like, Merck is the Karantos woman. I just don't care what like subreddits say about anyone. Yeah. So my read coming into it was that she was a type of person who somewhat bonded. Cause then I asked her, like, as I was asking her in that human, like, like that more sensitive part, like, you know, like you had that stuff with Zena. She's like, Oh, me and Zena are super cool. And I was like, I was shocked because they were like, they did not seem cool at the end of that fight. So I was like, okay, I guess like, but Xena's, Xena bonds a little bit through like, kind of like the rough and tumble, like talking back and forth. So I was like, okay, maybe this is, this is just a reinforcement of this idea. Mm -hmm. Um, And I suspect I probably have a thinking bias where like, once I start forming my picture of who a person is, even when there's like conflicting evidence, I'm like probably quick to like be like, "Eh, it's probably just a one-off. Um, mm. where like watching it through again, I'm like, oh, there was a lot of conflicting evidence. Like when I read her XQC tattoo, I was just like, LOL, that's part of like the chill, like I do what I want. Not like being like, is that anything more, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think there was just a number of like little flags that I missed building up so that when we started like discussing these ideas going back and forth, I just assumed that was part of like what she, and, and I just super, I super misread it. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I mean. This is my concern with these spaces is I do feel like so many people are so good at having good conversation. I've seen you on so many panels, girl. I'm I'm a YouTube member for your community. Like I watch your streams. Like you obviously have a space here. You have a community you speak to so well. Sometimes I think one or two characters will come in, maybe myself included. And it does feel like this space has a really hard time seeing people who are on a very specific journey. And it's interesting to me because I'm like, what's the disconnect? Like, what is it? And I think it really is making that prescription. It's saying, I want people to change. And I don't know how to explain to people that like that is the the most boring idea to somebody with my brain. Like, let's change people. Like, that is not interesting to where I'm at in life, in my life. You know? So I wonder if that's the problem is like, this is a debate space. And usually in debate spaces, like, ugh. That guy who I won't name, but I talked to you about him before. Um, I don't like him very much, but he DMs me when I talk about him. And he he was like on this panel with somebody. And he was like, um, you shouldn't be here if you don't want to make prescriptions. And I was like, what? Like, that's insane to me that I de- like you can't move society forward without this idea of like people should be like me. Right. And I guess maybe that's like the disconnect. I don't want people to be like me. I don't, I, I don't care, obviously, right? Like, I'm a religious person who distinctly wants no religion in the state and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want people to come to ideas well. That's all. Because I think it would improve, like, their 
quality of living, right? Okay. They don't have to. Um, I just want people to like think well about situations. That's like literally the only thing that I care about. Yeah. Um, and when I say think well, I don't mean that as far as like what I think means thinking well. I just mean that like what we tend to see is like improves, like gets rid of biases and stuff like that. Um, so maybe that's like a disconnect between us and also I can't speak for all of debate I think there are yeah. absolutely people in the debate space as well that think they're ontologically right they are moralistic and everyone should literally be like them and if they disagree with them they're like wrong I really genuinely don't feel that way mm. um I wish people here's maybe my consternation I think like when I watch back the Merck thing I think it's really understandable people are like Kyle you didn't see Merck and I'm like nobody's seen me <laughs> yeah um yeah and maybe that's my fault it probably is but it feels like when I like listen to people talking about the situation they're like Kyla like you should have handled this better you should have been like more caretaking here um like it feels like there's like this expectation on me about how I should be conducting myself and also I could be wrong I thought she was 30 as well I remember mm. her saying she got the tattoo when she was 30 um not that the age necessarily matters but yeah, I think it just sucks because probably not being seen is like one of the biggest issues within the debate space for sure. Um, 100%. Yeah. I'm not convinced that debate can't mingle with vulnerability. I just don't think it's been done well because there's not enough women debating mostly. <laughs> and I don't think men will lead the charge on this. Yeah, I'm definitely in the works right now. I'm putting together some female panels because I want better discourse from people. And also I want to introduce new people into my space at least. Um, and not just like have the same ones. I will say um, I did feel like you weren't being seen, right? Especially after she started to get upset and felt like you weren't seeing her. Like it was downhill from there. I will say this and correct me if I'm wrong because one of the – um, pro I think you have the same problem I have, which is like, we both speak from a place of almost like older sister or authority or we're right. So people do look to us to figure it out and make it better. So I do put myself on that, like, I need to be better than this. But also like, I also get hurt. Damn. But it's hard because like in that situation, it did look like you were older than her. It did. It didn't even matter if you guys were the same age. It looked like you were literally years older than her. So do you think there's like a pressure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel, I feel particularly stuck on this one because, <laughs> um, part of why I moved out of like the softer style at the beginning is I thought that I was being condescending by doing that. Oh. Um, because maybe my mental health background, I get attacked <laughs> constantly if I'm like, asking these like introspective questions they're like why are you doing therapy with people and I'm like I'm just trying to talk to them I'm just trying to like get to know them yeah and I'm not and they're like why are you putting yourself over them so I was like fuck and like literally when she started saying that I had a radio voice in my head I was like shit I wonder mm. I wonder if the radio voice she's picking up is like because I'm just mostly like I'm I really was just mostly fielding her like just trying to feel her out she wasn't really asking to get to know me which was totally fine um and I was like, shit, maybe like when people say I'm so condescending, maybe this is what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I feel, I feel damned if I do and damned if I don't. If I'm yes. just soft and gentle and I just listen, I'm a problem because I'm a mental health, uh, I have a mental health background and I shouldn't be doing therapy on stream. But if I don't do that and I'm more like chill and bro-y and I try to like rough and tumble and like kind of play in the way that like is played to me to some degree now I'm bad because I'm yes. not being professional and I'm not being put together and I should like, I should know better. I'm a mental health professional. You know, I should have thought about the fact that she was smoking and I'm just like, I, I don't know. I don't know where to exist in here. There's no space for me. Um, so yeah, I no, that's I, why like the emotions popped up at work. It's because I was like, there's nowhere, there's nowhere for me to be with you. I don't, I don't know what to give you right now. And I like her. I, I literally was like, I just want you to be happy, man. I just want you to have a good time because you've had really bad interactions in this space. And so I was like, fuck, like every step of the way, it feels like I fucked up and I don't, I don't know how to fix this. So I wasn't really blaming Merck at all. Um, I was just really frustrated that the situation was happening the way that it was. Gosh. Or I was blaming Merck, but I definitely don't now. I did, maybe emotionally when I was defensive, I was blaming Merck, but if I did, Somebody said I called her loony. I don't think I did. But if I did. Well, okay. First I think of I said all. I laugh loon. I, 
compared to the lab loan. Mm. But yeah. Well, first of all, very relatable. I think we're all stuck in this space right now because honestly, if we take ourselves too seriously, then there's a lot more responsibility that makes sense for our 200 person streams. Then at the same time, like maybe we should take ourselves more seriously so we can be a 10,000 person stream. But then why is like what XQC not taken seriously when he has a hundred third, hundred person thousand stream and then your job comes into it. And then it's like, what does it mean to be taken? I, it's all exhausting. I, this job is exhausting, but it is what it is. Now here's a question because this is something that stood out to me in the, uh, the crowd. What did you mean about Mr. Girl level conversation? Uh, so all I meant with that is that um, I should have probably said it just the meta litigation and kind of some of like the swapping to using like psychologically kind of morally charged language to like, like the gas using the words like gaslighting against me and stuff and not not making me feel a safe space. Yeah. So like not Mr. Girl in most ways, just in that direction of like, she was doing a lot of meta litigating where she'd be like, well, I was saying this and you were saying this. And I was like, I don't, I don't think that that was what was happening. Is that what was happening? I'm not really sure. Um, which I really don't like in conversations. Yeah. Um, yeah. and like throwing psych terms at me. Yeah. I, I, I related a lot to what Merck was saying when she said that I was like, oh, it does feel like gaslighting, but it's not gaslighting, but it does. It only feels like that because this, there's this like air some people give off, which is like, I know what's going on and she doesn't know she's going crazy right now. It felt like that. It felt like, and this is what I want you to clarify for us because it felt like in your head, and this is me reading your mind, which is not fair. I'm, I'm wondering if you're thinking, oh, she's losing it. Oh no. Like I'm the one who's not losing it, but she's losing it. That's kind of what it felt like, which to be fair, she was very upset. (laughs) Um, in my mind, I was like, uh, I don't understand why she can't hear me. I don't understand why she can't hear me say, I, I understand that you don't feel like I'm seeing you. Please help me do that. Mm. She kept interrupting me. I think that's part of why she didn't hear that. Because when I was saying, I don't feel seen, my follow-up was, and I know that you don't feel seen. But she kept interrupting me, which is, okay, she was upset. And once she ended the call, I immediately remembered that she had been smoking weed. So I was like, oh, is that like... What, should, what was this even what even what maybe this wasn't anything so that was kind of like the three things that came in together three two yeah yeah, I think the smoking weed was a big concern for me as well, where I was like, oh, no, like this can be good or bad for a conversation. And also how you define debate was different. Like the vibes were different. She obviously just wanted a discussion, which I love vibes, like good, good vibes. But also um, like I can understand like everything you did kind of made so much sense to me from your perspective. I think I would have done the same thing. But then from her perspective, everything she did made sense to me as well. That's fair. Like, it just felt like very within everything I know about the two of you so far and her, this is my first time seeing her. It felt like, yeah, she's she's kind of projecting onto or not projecting. That's the wrong word, maybe. But she's like uh, distorting what Kyla is saying, because this reminds me her of X and Kyla is doing this thing here. And then I I, I feel like some I felt like there was just a miscommunication because of mental health. Like, I'm not going to toot my own horn. But I do kind of feel like if I was there, I would have just been like, hey, bro, how are your spoons? You seem like a little like, you know what I mean? Like, how are we feeling right now? Because she does come off like she's so young. She comes off to me like a 15-year-old and a 26-year-old body, love. And she comes off like somebody who is genuinely trying, but she's in her like rebellious stage right now. So like in my head, all of my anti vibes were like shooting off where I was like, she needs to be literally like talk to like I talked to Sneeko. Yeah, um, that's what a lot of people have said. I just worry that that's going to be read as more condescending ah um, i here's a question yeah. for me for you I think that's like more of the nature of condescending like do literally. you identify as an anti no okay that's probably why though what do you identify as are you a teacher because that feels condescending to some people like in the rebellious stage like if you're not an anti meaning a homie it might feel weird I guess maybe I didn't understand what auntie meant. Auntie meant to me like a familial, like, like role model. Yeah. Like, like somebody who's like, model. you know, your auntie, like, do you have an auntie? Do you have like an auntie? That's like the no, one who. I, pe- have no, I have no extended family. Oh, damn girl. Okay. Yeah. Like I feel like everyone's crazy auntie that they call up and they're like, okay, auntie Bernie, like I need to do this thing. That's going to piss off my parents, but also I need your advice. I'm like, okay, look girl, do what you're going to do, but don't snort that cocaine. Don't do it. I mean, do it if you want to do it, but don't do it. Like it feels very much like a, you're there to like, let them tell you their sins and to like, not exactly like make them feel judged for having it. 
but it felt but not put responsibility on them because like you're asking like she felt like such a teenager to me and it felt weird asking her to be responsible for her audience right be- i guess i kind of viewed us as equals uh, more or less i yeah. was like hopeful that there would be like a potential like kind of like that like light stream or friendship i just viewed her as like another adult i also i don't know is she diagnosed with borderline i had no i don't know my audience kept saying that so i could be wrong about the borderline maybe she doesn't have it but my audience kept saying i don't know anything about her girl okay okay um yeah i guess i very much approached it like we were equals and part of why i kept doing that is it felt like that was like the main thing i could pull from the kelly conversation is that she really doesn't care what people think about is what is best for her she doesn't Mm. want like a an older role model like mother role she just wants to be treated like an equal so that's what i was like trying that's what i was trying to do and now maybe when she says treated like an equal there's an element of like i i need like a bit of like an auntie that she's just like not willing to ask for i have no idea now like i i'm just going back to basically like i don't i don't know her super well i I miss rudder um but because she said that explicitly that's why i tried to pull away from like just the like hey who are you let's just like talk about your feelings and stuff like that and like let's let's joke around and troll and stuff like that so it's like trying to yeah mm-hmm. but maybe that was wrong no, no you know I, I just don't think there you could have handled it any way other way like this is just like a, a moment where the universe gave you a tool because to be honest with you like I think it's a really fine line between I'm gonna treat you like an adult but I'm also gonna treat you with kid gloves because it is weird and it looks weird to everyone else Like, it looks strange to other YouTubers because people are – she even said, like, I want to be considered equal. Like, Kelly's making me feel like I'm less than. But it's like – I'm sorry. When I deal with anyone who's young and I pull on my mom hat, I'm like, yeah, you're an adult and you're trying your best. But you also don't want to be held accountable in this – like we did with Lav. Kyla, remember when Lav was like, oh, hee hee, I'm just a girl. And we're like, cool. Then you're not an adult and we're not going to have the same conversations with you. And she was like, "But but I want to be taken seriously. And I was like, ah, pick and choose. Pick and choose. Yes. Yes. It feels like that. So like I don't take Lav seriously. I don't take Sneeko seriously. I don't I can't take Merc seriously, but I I seriously value their journey. Yeah. So I guess maybe I seem to have fights with people where it gets to the place like me and Lav had a lot of issues too. Um I just got so I have such a hard time like moving into this role with these individuals where like I probably could just like Okay, and keep things easy and chill and not push back too much and stuff like that. It just feels like if so, like there's so many people that are convinced that I'm condescending and stuff, which I think is a tonal issue. Um, because even when I'm just trying to talk slow, it seems like a lot of people are reading as condescending, not what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like in my head, I'm like, God, if people knew how much I like hated myself and like didn't believe in myself, they would never think I'm condescending. But mm. um, that's Wait, Kyla. Across with the insecurity, right? Kyla, so, say that. Wait, wait. You um, cut out for just a minute. Can you yeah, say that I again? Do that, like, who am I to be your aunt? Oh, sorry. I went to a valley. Which part did you just not you hear? um you said if people knew how I felt about myself, and then you cut out. Oh, um, just like how how much I question myself. Like I, I think people think that I'm like this hyper confident person, which is great. <laughs> I'm glad I give that air, but I'm not. I'm actually like nervous. I'm anxious. Um, I'm just doing the best I can with what I got, um, which is maybe where people don't see me because I probably don't, they probably don't see it in debate because in debate, I'm like defending ideas. Um, mm. I'm like there to kind of be a warrior. Um, so for me, putting myself in the role of like, oh, I'm this 30 year old's auntie figure feels like the most condescending superior thing that I could possibly do to somebody, which is why I don't. But then I get into like fights with these people over and over. Mm. Um yeah. And look, you might not be it. Like, girl, I feel like auntie energy is auntie energy. Like, mama energy is mama. Like, somebody literally told me, this YouTuber was like, um, in case they wanted to keep it private, I won't tell you who it was. But they were like, hey, you really, like, mommed me the other time. And I need you to know, like, it shocked me, but it really helped. And I appreciate, like, the mom energy. I was like, for sure, bro. Which is to say, like, we're not equals. But I will respect you enough to give you space here. But, like, we are not the same. Yeah. I, I'd be willing to move into that. It just – feels like I get yelled at a lot when I you will that, so. I get yelled at all the time girl but it is what it is, is what I'm saying yeah. I can't not be it because like girl it's like what I told Merck via the stream take that tattoo off your fucking finger take it off it's not gonna help you but like you know for other people they're like oh don't tell her what to do I'm not I'm just telling you to take it off <laughs> right yeah um yeah 
But people are going to be I upset. Think about it more. Yeah, yeah. They don't, are, don't, right? don't follow my people. my footsteps if you want networking. <laughs> Well, a lot of people, a lot of people appreciate when I like move into like a more like motherly supportive role. Um, yeah. But a, it's, it's somewhat lonely because obviously if you're in a mothering role, you don't get to like show them all the parts of you necessarily. Yeah. Um, oh, mm. I want to say this because maybe is, this is part of the disconnect as well is like, um, um, I feel like when you're in a mothering role, like I'm a much more stern mom than a, like a nice sweet mom. I'm a very much like, okay, we're not going to do that again. But also you're not a bad person. You're just like in a moment, but we're not going to do that anymore. It feels very much like it could be different from the vibe you might like be strengthened in. And I want you to seek out the one that's going to make sense for you. And like they are adults. Like they are adults. So yeah. you have to give them the respect of fucking up. But they are also where we like, I don't know about you, but my 20s was messy. I just reviewed all my old content with my viewers, some of it from like 12 years ago. And that Brittany might be saying some of the same stuff I'm saying now, but she's obviously saying it with a child's mind, even though she's in her 20s. She's saying it with like a child who just discovered like Rand for the first time. It's not the same. So I want people to like be able to be messy and then regurgitate this good idea later when they have all of the information, right? Right. I just want to give people space to be as messy as I used to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but I, also I, I like, yeah. Go ahead. And I'm, I'm okay with people being messy. Um, yeah, I'm totally okay with it being messy. Uh, it just sucks when I misread you. Um, and it sucks when it feels like the audience, to some degree, puts like a higher expectation of conduct on me than others. Because I'm just like, why Why is this higher for me right yeah. now? Um, yeah. But also, anytime I act like authoritative on anything, like how fucking dare you act authoritative? 100. Uh, and try to like tell me that I'm not like educated. So it's just like, I don't, I don't know what you... I don't know what y'all want from me. <laughs> no, that's Kyla. Listen um, to me when I say this. This is the question. This is the conversation I have with my partner every day where I'm like, what am I supposed to do with these two conflicting? And then I throw them both away <laughs> because they, that is exactly what being a content creator is. It is like, they're going to tell you both things yeah. and I'm just going to have to do what I know is right with my values and garner an audience that is willing to hear me and like willing to like hold me accountable when necessary. But literally, this is the hardest part of the internet. And if you become a streamer that caters to your audience, you will be a slave to one, which is fine. Lots of people do it. But like, that's like playing a character, right? People who play characters become yep. sort of like the toy of their audience. Yep, totally agree. Yeah, I just, uh, probably part of it is like, um, I think like probably why this part threatens this part of me so much is because I'm just very like again I don't think people see it <laughs> um I don't think people understand like how how deeply self-loathing I've been for most of my life so I don't want to cater myself to my audience I want to do what I think is right it's just yeah. like I don't want to assume that I know what is right that's kind of, sure. I think the issue that I run into with these types of situations where people are like you're being too condescending you're being too this you're not being nice enough you're being too nice you're not pushing back enough I'm like which one of these is a legitimate critique towards a goal of goodness that I would like to pursue that will like make me and the people who are like meant to be in my life most happy and well-rounded yeah um but I just like self-doubt all the time because of stuff yeah I think that is so honest and fair and I think like I appreciate you being open with me right now and talking about it because I do think that you could have like moved away from it, not spoken about it, not been honest, but you are explaining something that I think so many content creators experience, myself included, which is like, oh my gosh, because I have feelings too. I cry after streams sometimes. I cry when people are mad at me because I'm like, what did I do? And then you're sitting there and you're trying to figure it out. But I think that this is exactly the hardest part of this job is making sure like you know who you are and you don't lose yourself, but also how difficult it is to manage everyone's emotions because they will absolutely expect you to. And at the same time, yell at you for trying to manage their emotions. You still there, girly? Did I lose you? 
Uh oh, we might be going through a valley. Hello, hello. Oh, are we there? Ooh, hello, hello. Ma'am, ma'am, we can hear you, ma'am. Hi, sorry, I'm in a valley. That's okay. That's okay. Did you hear what I said? But probably can not. You hear me? Oh, hello. Yes, Hi. we're kind of here. We're kind of uh, here. I'm about to move just up the valley. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm moving up, down, and then back up a valley. Okay. Um, I heard you say this is a common streamer issue. Um, this is like what we all wrestle with. I probably suspect there's a lot in the audience that wrestle with this. Mm. Um, this is like something I've I've been listening to a lot of like <laughs> feminism stuff. I think men wrestle with this as well, which is even like expectations of being a man or a woman uh, or non-binary people who have to like redefine everything. Sure. Um, yeah. So I, I definitely think everything I'm experiencing is very normal and human. Um, it just seems like on the internet, there's not that grace that we give each other. Yeah. In part because we, it's hard to, right? You don't know one another. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was, I said when I got cut off, I just wanted to remind you and I would say it again, even for myself, like the audience will demand two things of you at once all of the time. Like people will want different things from you all of the time. So they will expect you to be responsible for their feelings and then criticize you for trying to manage their feelings, right? That is just like this space, which is why like all you have to do is manage your own and they will follow yeah. suit, right? Like an audience means they're looking to somebody who's going to like challenge them, introduce them to new ideas, entertain them. And like they're going to build sort of a understanding with you that is natural. One thing that came to mind, and maybe you can discuss this with me if you have the spoons, is like it seemed like the, the conversation was great until you looked at Merck's chat. Was there something about the chat that was like a little hard to read? Um, oh man, I want to be careful. Sure. Because I don't want it to, there's a lot of people who feel like I was like there to police her chat. At the end of the day, like that's the bet she's going to lie in. Um, her chat was pretty uh, awful, like really, really, really transphobic. Um, yeah. And like, I don't use those words lightly. I'm pretty like intense about them. Yeah. And it it was frustrating to me to hear her be like, it's just all memes. And I was like, this is like literally the problem. It's like literally the heart of like the issue. Yeah. Um, is that like tell that to a trans person if you're talking to them and they're like reading this. Mm. Um and so there was a lot about me too. Um, but it was yeah, it was just like it was I think it was all of it together. Like it was just all pretty negative. Yeah. And so like I wasn't bothered by the chat like her offended it felt very i think it would well it felt very much like schrodinger's troll of like we want our cake and to eat it too we like mm -hmm. want to say whatever we want to say and we want to have no responsibility it's like you can't say what you want to say that's fine you can have a chat where you go we don't moderate but then own it own that that means that like yeah people will get hurt it is harsh it is like ruthless that's just what we do you know so it felt like very like yeah we're mean but it's all a joke and i was like i i just i don't think that's true yeah, wow. one thing she said that really stood out to me, and I wish you had pressed her about it, but I don't even know if you heard her say it really, but like she said, oh yeah, well, these are my thoughts, but they're amplified. So th so maybe he's a misogynist, but it's amplified. I was like, wait, so he is a misogynist. They are misogynist. Yeah. Like I'm so, you you do have a misogynistic audience. What am, I'm so, and then she said, like she seemed anti-trans and I don't know if she would identify herself that way, but like, of course that's gonna be her audience. But then that begs the question, why do we think she's better than her audience? Um, I, I don't. I think that's what I was trying to piece together and part uh. of like trying to understand her is being like, you keep saying like, I'm chill, it's all love, it's all vibes, she's being really nice with me. And then it's like, and you're saying that this is all jokes, but I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. You're saying that they're amplified jokes, which means that they are kind of real. But yeah. then you're also telling me none of it's real. That, like these, these, all these things don't make sense together. Like, where are you with this? I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to be seeing here. Oh, she defined words weird. Her idea of a troll is not what I think a troll is because a troll is like a joke. So it's not real. But then she was like, it's a troll, but it's kind of true. And I'm like, I'm confused. And so I think yeah. she doesn't know. That's what I mean. Like once I realized like we couldn't agree on like definitions in a way that kind of made sense, my brain went, okay, so she's like in a, 
Like I want to have my cake and eat it too. I want to be a troll, but be taken seriously. I want to say it's a joke, but I want to mean it. I want to say, so there's like too much of like, we don't know what we're doing right now. We're like still trying to figure out who we are. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, for sure. And I wanted, I think my issue that I ran into is like really taking out a word of being like, I want to be taken seriously. Mm. I'm like, you know, all these things. I'm tough. I just want to, you know, be able to say the shit, be really honest about stuff. And I was like, oh, but not really. Like we want to, we actually want to be Schrodinger's honest about the stuff, which right. is fine. Like that's fine if that's where you're at the journey. It's just confusing as fuck for me when I was taking your word. But again, that was my error as well. Like I, I should have done more to probably clarify that before assuming that I was correct. Well, and to be fair, I think I would have been also confused, but I could pause the stream and think about it and have like, you know, in the moment I would have been like, what? Like in the moment, she even brought up like Pete Davidson's dad. I'm like, that's totally different. He he makes the jokes yeah. himself and therefore gives permission. But it's not the same as like, like, you, you know what I mean? I get what she wants to do where she's like, I want my audience to be free. Great. But she also has to understand that they, I do think she's a re like they're a reflection of her. And so we have yeah. to make the dis I, I would like to make the decision to say, okay, like I won't reach out to this girl because like I don't need any more transphobes on my freaking channel. But also like I'm making an effort. It's election season to be more focused on the girls, the gays, the theys. So I'm very focused <laughs> on like LGBTs right now because election season is very hard yeah. in the US and Thanksgiving about to be really awkward. So I can understand, though, because she's in that sphere. She's, like, you know, able to get XQC's attention. And, like, people might want to talk to her because she might be, quote, unquote, going places because her stream is taking off. But, like, she's going to crash and burn, right? Like, she's making a sensational headline. And sensationalism, like, how long does that last? Unless you're really yeah. thoughtful with it. Like, uh, maybe a Sam Hyde, right? But, like, I don't think she's – I don't think she's ready to be Sam Hyde. Right. You know, so the good news is that I think you handled it the best you could have, but I think it's really interesting in this space. What works for what kinds of brains? Like you guys uh, yeah. can fix this, yeah. right? Have you guys talked at all? Because it feels like this could be fixable. Um, she tweeted at me uh, like once today, uh, but she also said that she wanted to like distance herself and like not be in like this scene anymore. So I'm not sure mm. what would be like the most respectful thing for her whether I like should reach out and try to be like do you want to try to rectify the relationship or if she just wants to be like done with this fear um uh. I'm not really sure what she wants so yeah yeah I mean honestly just, if I, I'm yeah. driving I can't reach out for a while anyways um so I'll have to like just think about it while I'm driving and make a decision I guess yeah you'll make the right decision like you know you'll know what to do because you know you, you're smart and thoughtful and considerate and I, I want to say that it really it really like it hurt me to watch you be hurt because I know what a good person you are and I know that must have been so frustrating to be like what just happened like what just happened and I don't think I really just don't think it could have gone different because in the moment it's so easy to critique it watching the stream back but I just I mean, I've crashed and burned so many times on the internet. I'm not about to throw stones. Like, it's so easy not to know what to do in the moment. So I hope you don't beat yourself up yeah. too much about it. Um, yeah, I think I'm, like, I think I've learned a fair bit about being, like, okay, there's actually, like, a thinking bias that's happening here and, like, how I read people. That's really good to know. Um, also, like, probably do a little bit more research with like these characters that you at least hear seem to be like agents of chaos so that I like when I say agents of chaos I understand what that actually means um because probably if I just watched more streams with her in them I'd have a much better idea of like maybe what to expect in the situation mm. um like realizing that like she's kind of like a big softy doesn't want to debate she doesn't actually want to like joust elbow she like just wants to talk about ideas and feel seen yeah um, she like, wants to I get wish, high and like, talk about ideas that, girl yeah. Yeah, and I feel sad that I like couldn't give that to her because I I wanted to I wanted to right, which is why I think I started tearing up at the end. Um, in part, she reminds me of like a friend I used to have, um, that high and really really toxic and like fight with me, and it was like no matter what I said, I was wrong. So I think mm -hmm. that's why I was like I feel like I feel like everything I say is wrong. Uh, I think that was probably just a projection of like my, like my own stuff, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm like disappointed, obviously, that I couldn't make her feel seen um I don't know I just have a soft spot for people who, like are lonely um and like nobody sees them because <laughs> that is my life uh 
and nobody sees me because I don't let them. So it's my life and my yeah. own problem and my own self-fulfilling issue. But um, yeah, I just like to try to see those people. And so I think I'm frustrated in myself that I'm like, fuck, I failed. Um, but live and let learn. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, you know, I, I'm, I always feel like sometimes when the lonely people get together, there's like this assumed idea that they should be able to fit. But like, I don't, I don't see, I don't know where you and Merck would be friends. Like, I can't see it. I can see us just being like collaborators. Like, I feel like I have a lot of like good friends now in streaming, but not a lot of like more like hobby friends um, sure. in streaming where it's like, hey, let's just like collab together and like be chill. Like we're not super tight, but we like do collabs together. Um, so that's kind of where I saw maybe like the relationship going. Mm. Um, okay, that's fair. Yeah. Just having fun. I yeah. just clearly not debating that. That's not fun for her. So not that. Yeah. Um, well, I think yeah. Merck is in that stage, right? Where she's like, I'm tough. I can handle it. But also like I'm a child and that's fair. And I think that's normal. And that's why I call her a teenager. Yeah. We're like, I think that's such a fair stage to be in in life. And again, she can be upset with me just like Xena was. But I think Xena understood like, you know, you go do you. I be- like, I believe in your like, I love that she's in love. But like, you know, I'm going to be an auntie and predict it. You know, I'm going to call it right now. Cause like everyone's on a journey, but like certain yeah. things just like our stages in life. Yeah. Oh, and that's for sure. okay. You know, like, I think we should embrace yeah. the stage. Plus I love a 420 attitude girl, but I was worried when she lit up girl. I was worried. I was like, Oh, Merc is lighting up. Like <laughs> this could go bad. But honestly, like I, I definitely think she'll make her like, if this conversation with you was too much for her to think about being in the space, then maybe streaming isn't it. You feel uh i don't know i think i'm still being hard on myself being like i mean i was pretty i was pretty harsh at times like in the debating and stuff like that but i'm wait kyla wait 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 respond again because you said you were harsh on her and then you became a robot hello yeah say it again you were harsh on her um i could have been misunderstanding you maybe i felt like you were saying if this conversation wasn't like super good for her, she might not be made for this space. But in my mind, I don't know if I'm like easy mode or anything like that. Um, like, I think I was like, when I'm watching back the debates, like I, I definitely wasn't like easy and like light in the debate by any means. It could have been way softer. Yeah. I think, I think, but the, um, that's what I mean. I, I mean, this space, like this debate space might not be, she might be like, but you know what's crazy is she got banned on Twitch. She could have been on Just Talking on Twitch. She could have been a cozy streamer. But I think she just doesn't want to admit she needs coziness. But I think she would – I mean, she had a stuffy with her, for God's sake. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what game we're playing here, but obviously, like, you're in kids' clothes wearing a stuffy. Like, you obviously need comfort, girl. Like, and she's, like, she needs to chill by a fireside and talk to people about life and smoke a joint, but she's not going to get that in the space, like, you operate in from what I've, like, and I don't even know how you would be that for her except to come off like an, like, an older figure because, like, no offense, like, do you ever wear, like, do you have a stuffy and you sit down and have a chill space? Like, I've never seen that from you. Uh, I do own a stuffy. I don't think I use it very often. Yeah, because it's a different vibe. It's like a different vibe. It throws the whole vibe off. (laughs) Like, it's different. Yeah. I don't know. It feels like a misunderstanding of, like, what they, like, what people want in this space, which is fair. But I don't, I don't think she Mm -hmm. wants a debate space. And I just don't know why she entered this space. Like, I wonder why she goes for the trolls when she could go for the, like, nice girl, nice comfort space, mentally ill aware space. Yeah, I think she's just got, like, a kind of that, like, edge to her. Like, she likes the edgy joke. She, like, likes kind of fucking around and stuff like that. Like, she's, like, a little bit mischievous. Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I I love love a mischievous little uh, antics themselves. Um, But, yeah, so I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not going to make any prescriptions on Mark at this point. I think that's fair. Obviously, like, I wish her the best. And I definitely saw, like, parts of my unrecovered side in her, like, where I was like, oh, yeah, like – that was a space. Um, it's interesting, though, because like, OK, I want to say one last thing about your community, because I know you're taking like huge steps to reform your communities. I will say, though, and I mean this in the like nicest way, but I do feel like the huge overlap in that space you're in is incredibly mentally health unaware. 
they just don't care about women with mental health issues as much as they care about women who don't don't talk about their mental health issues. Does that make sense? 190 percent. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So there's like this problem that I'm seeing. Like, I wonder for you, is this this like I know you work with men and I know your audience is primarily men, right? Am I wrong on that? Uh, I actually have a larger female audience and I think most people give me credit for it. Really? Uh, most people think I'm a pick me, right? Yeah, I have 15% women on YouTube, which is like much higher 15? than uh, 15%, yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting, right? Because like, obviously, I've always had a majority women audience, like that's always my bread and butter. But like, that's the thing yeah. that's interesting is that um, I I do that on purpose. I purposely make content for my female side of myself. So like, do you feel like you're choosing men and to be in men's spaces? And therefore, like, men will always have this sort of like, a f like defensiveness around women like I mean I've been discounted so much time so many times in this space because of like my mental health or my womanness and if I don't act tough if I don't pretend I'm not hurt I feel like they discount you like it's not a safe space to be hurt oh for sure um yeah I think I don't this is where like I would agree with the Raj fans where like I think the cultural norm is in many ways like even though there's a increasingly feminized things we have a very like we assume that if somebody's professional that there is like we it's like masculinized where they're like oh he's a debate lord that's very professional and mature and stuff like that um and don't realize like things like like an ability to just like understand people at like different places and like make space for them which is like a more commonly viewed as like feminine thing mm -hmm. he is mature and respect worthy um so do I see myself? Yes, I'll probably always carve myself towards like men um, because that's the group that I like want to see. I would agree as far as like there's a there's an issue with like what men are, how men are and how they're operating and how we're socializing them. Uh, and I want to see it better, like yeah. much, much better. Um, I think there are a lot of issues, not just with like men are sad, but also like um I just recently read a study about bystander effect and uh, in situations at like bars, um, if somebody looks uncomfortable, women are like three times more likely to intervene regardless of the gender of the individual, mm. whereas men tend to like stand by. I'm like, that's awful. That's really bad. Like, what are we, what are we doing? Yeah. What's going on here? So um, I really want to like angle. So I do want to capture men. Um, I'm not super interested in like throwing women under the bus, obviously. Yeah. I'm super willing to critique women and like womanity. I think we're both socialized poorly, right? Why are we? Uh, it's just toxic traits come out in different ways. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I'll probably always somewhat directionally be more towards men. I think that's fair. I think, um, I wonder if, cause like, look, somebody just sent me a tweet about what Merck is saying. And honestly, like she, so I would see that tweet from her and I would just be like, yeah, she's a teenager. I'm going to ignore her because she doesn't hear you when you say like, oh, hold your audience accountable. And she tweeted like four comments from your audience. But the thing is, is like you're on a sphere of YouTube that is like highly critical. And that's not what you're saying. You're not saying like I can hold every commenter accountable. You're saying I'm trying to cultivate an audience, which if you don't know what that means, you're not going to understand it. Right. Right. So if I have somebody who's just like not understanding it, like they get ignored unless they want to hear it. But the problem is, is like if once you feel like you're not seen or heard by someone, it's very hard to go in with good faith again. Right. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't like put too much like thought into it, but I will say I think it's good to put yourself out there. I think it's good to say like I'm open for a discussion, but ultimately like if she doesn't want to come to you with good faith, it's just not going to matter. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's why like, I kind of see it as like, I feel like she felt overall, like maybe worse than even I did um, or maybe like slighted or something. So I feel like I might need to be like patient and kind of do it on her terms if she like wants to talk to me. Sure. Um, yeah. It feels like if I approached it, it might feel like, it might just like feel some sort of way to her. So I want to be yeah, just like cautious of that.
maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. Maybe I'm condescending now. I have no idea. But that seems to be the wisest thing to do. Yeah, for sure. I mean, she's obviously really hurt. And I think that's fair. And she might need, gosh, she might need up to weeks to like recover and feel more like herself. I just don't know where her brain is at or how much time she needs to recover. But I'm mostly concerned about you. And I want to make sure you're okay. I know moving is stressful. We just got the news today that Croatia officially accepted me as a temporary resident. So we were Yay. stressed. Yay, I'm so excited. I was stressed up until today, girl. Like I feel super relieved yeah. it's all finally done. But it was one of those yeah. things that I know it's stressful. And also, I got to be honest with you, why are you moving to America? I don't even know. Uh, if I want to keep doing streaming related stuff and like collabing and, and growing, there's there's no one in Alberta, that's for sure. Sure. Um, yeah, it's just, there's just so much more industry there. Uh, and there's a number of schools there that I'm, really interested in and kind of talking to the lab and stuff so uh there's just kind of a lot of opportunity cool for me there uh and we're hoping that the sun will help with mix like uh seasonal uh effective stuff as well great okay awesome and you're going to florida pretty bad yes awesome oh awesome that's gonna be so fun i assume you're going near the water uh pretty close yeah i think we're like an hour Nice. An hour or so away from the water. Nice. Oh, that's so exciting. I was wondering. I was like, girl, why is she going to America? But then, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> There's also CanCare uh, in like three locations, which is Canadian Healthcare in America for like expats and stuff. And I'm about an hour away from a Canadian healthcare center. So Shut I still up. get my Canadian health. That is so yeah. cool. That is so cool. Yeah. Well, I am stoked yeah. for you, honestly. That's so exciting. And I and I can't wait to actually like talk and collab when you're like settled and have time, no rush. And um, oh, I heard very nice things you said about me to one of the panel uh, panels I was going to be on. The guy, he was so sweet. He's like, I don't normally tell people what people say about them, but like Erudite's so nice when she talks about you. And I was like, stop it. I'll cry. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, you know, I'm a big fan. Um, appreciate you chatting with me. I'm sorry if I, uh, I should say, sorry, sorry. I did it twice. Uh, thank you for giving me your spoons today. Um, I know yes, the ma'am. video was kind of emotional and then I was emotional. So I appreciate it. No, appreciate you did. You holding space for me. Of course, anytime. I'm so, again, like I, I, what a human moment, what a beautiful moment for the internet to see. But honestly, like I appreciate you to, and the audience does too. I'm reading their comments. They really, they're glad you could talk about it. They really feel, you know, they, they had strong opinions about you, but they also totally understand, I think, where you're coming from. And I think we're all excited to see what the future holds. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully less fights, but I'm sure there will be in the future because we're all human and figuring it out. Amen. Amen, girly. Okay, anything else on your noggin before we head out? Uh, no, I think we're I think we're good unless there's any more questions about the situation that I can like clear up, but yeah. Gosh, I think I think I'm good for now, but if they do come up again, I'll hit you up. Okay. Sounds okay. Good. All right, drive safe. All right. Yeah, have a good okay. one. Okay, you too. Have a good Bye. Night. Okay. Major love and feels for Kyla. That was great. I think I asked everything that I saw from you guys. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Big Nick. Thank you. I haven't done space buns in literally years, but I was like, it is time. It is time today. I tell my wife, I said, hi. Well, I just hung up on her, girl. I just hung up with her. Wait, is she driving alone? You're not with her? That girl better not fall asleep. Oh my gosh. What face, Raiders Cat? You keep saying do the face. What face? That was good though, right? I feel like I asked her all the questions that I saw from you guys. Um, I think we definitely always want to humanize each other. And it's so hard in this space. I'm so exhausted by this space sometimes. Because the, the again, I want to facilitate such a healthy space on in my area. Um, and I'm really lucky. And I think a lot of that, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I do think it's because the majority of my audience is girls. Like, um like 60%, I think is women, um, which makes sense. I fluctuate between 60 and 75% women, usually my audience. But I also appreciate the kinds of men that are willing to be around that many women. I think I've noticed that the men who are willing to be in female dominant spaces are stereotypically, generally speaking, men who are open to a lot, um, open to introspection in a way that I don't find from other male dominated spaces. 
So I'm definitely really grateful for that because, again, I understand that I'm generalizing here, but there seems to be some sort of overlap. Now, a total female audience would be very different. If I had a total female audience, my content would be different. I don't appeal to like total female audiences. I really appreciate all the men, all the giga chats in my audience. I see you, Discord. I really do appreciate you guys being here because you add such balance to the mix of it. Um, and the men here are so open and like just lovely. And I really appreciate, I really appreciate there's a, a discord thread in my discord that the men started called men. And I just got so like warm hearted over it because I know this is such a girl dominated space that I really appreciate when the men's feel like they can have a space here. I really love that. So I'm really happy about it. Um, but this is like a really hard space to be in. Right. And I, you know, I did, I saw that tweet, um, from Merck, Merck put out a tweet, but it doesn't make sense. Like, oh, I wish it could be, I wish she's like, she's feeling like she's really hitting something, but it doesn't make any sense. She says, here, I'll show it to you guys. Cause it just, it doesn't make sense the way she thinks it makes sense, but man, it must feel really good. Um, and she might just be being sarcastic, but let's hear it. Let's talk about it. Cause I think it's kind of funny. So, okay, hold on. Let me move this. Okay. So she put out this little tweet here. It doesn't really make sense though. And it's kind of sad. It doesn't make sense. Um, but she said, um, Hey, not so erudite. Do you feel responsible for the mean things your comment section said about me? My feelings are very hurt right now. Sad emoji. Like you said, we should all be responsible for our fans. And she's being sarcastic, right? She's not, there's no reason for Kyla to engage with this behavior, right? Um, wait, can you read the tweet? Cause it feels like you're all just dismissing her now. Well, hold on. Here's the difference. I'm not dismissing that she was hurt and I'm not dismissing that she had a miscommunication. I'm not dismissing that she wasn't seen, but I am dismissing that she was, um, she isn't contradicting herself when she says she's here in the space and she wants to be taken seriously, but she can't. I'm not, I'm, I can't take her seriously when she says, I'm not going to hold my audience responsible, but, um, you know, I just, she doesn't know what she wants. And so I think it's unfair for her to engage in this space when people are expecting a certain amount of responsibility, I think, um, in some ways. So again, I don't, I, I'm not trying to dismiss her emotions. Her emotions were valid. Like Merck's emotions, the way she felt was valid. But that doesn't change the fact that Erudite's expectation of her was also a higher standard than Merck could provide. So for a debate space, not for a discussion space, for a debate space, which is, again, on the internet, challenging ideas, that kind of stuff, I think it's fair that Erudite wants her to be able to have a debate where we talk about changing each other's ideas. And I think it's okay that Merck only wants to have a conversation in which she shares ideas. And I think that's fair, but changing ideas and sharing ideas are not the same, which is, I mean, I share that, that desire that Merck has. I share that. I just want to have discussions. Even Smith made a joke about it on the panel yesterday. Like, oh, oh, hold on. I'm showing you a bunch of random tweets now. Hold on. Wait. Oh my gosh. Oh no, I'm not showing you. I'm showing myself because I'm a boomer. Okay. Hold on. I want to show you the rest of the comments. So, um, I, I think so. Hold on. I'm losing my train of thought. It's 2 a.m. Hold on. Oh. Okay, I think it's confusing because, again, even I have this problem where I don't want to be in a debate, but like Smith pointed out, Brittany's going to do that thing where she like lets people speak and doesn't interrupt them and like doesn't, you know, I'm not here for the fight. Like, you know, Zena and Darius are always like, oh, I, I play it up for the, I play it up for the views. Even Merck said, I play it up for the views. People who play it up for the views are a very specific type of YouTuber, one category. The other side of that is debate category. And Merck is confusing. Is Merck a I played up for the views debate YouTuber or live streamer? Or is she I played up for the views drama streamer? Is she I played up for the views? Th like th that's what's confusing about Merck. When you say I played up for the views, it's my opinion, but I played up for the views. But you're talking to Kyla and you're talking to Destiny and you're talking to XQC. Like, these are very specific pockets on the internet. XQC is not like Destiny. XQC doesn't debate. He gets into fights and does drama, right? And then sometimes debates like H3H3, right? So then, oh, this is so confusing. You get to Kyla and Destiny who do debates on the internet, but also Destiny drama farms. So that can be very confusing. 
So when Merck had this idea of like, I'm going to enter this sphere, did she think I want the drama or I want the debate? Because that's the, that's so confusing, right? Um, excuse me. Did I see that Zena hit Darius? I'm telling you, I call dysfunction. Don't domestic violence. Don't hit your partners. Like, not okay. Not okay. Literally, Zena was literally abusing Darius. It makes me so mad. Well, that's the thing. Is Darius and Zena playing it up for views? And that's where it's confusing. Or are they just dysfunctional in nature? And that's what I'm saying. The problem with these YouTubers, the problem of this fear is they want to play it up for views and it's drama and it's good for clicks, but it might actually be hurting them. So again, I'm not gonna, okay, tell you what to do, but you all should break up. Anyways, so if you look at these like tweets, they don't mean anything like, oh, what an annoying hyper edgelord exhibitionist looking for attention. Like nothing here is like, okay, yeah, that's like a normal, welcome to the fucking internet, girl. You know what I'm saying? God, we're still interacting with Merck. She needs a therapy, not a debate. That's actually based. <laughs> but like these comments, like Merck using them as an example of Kyla's audience, like saying bad things about her, like, um, girl, if you can't handle this, like, um, what's this word? Neur, neur, is this supposed to be a neurodivergent? Neuro, is this, what? No, no, that's the N word. Is that the N word? Oh, never mind. I can't read things. See, that sounds racist. I don't know what that word is. I don't know what word this is. I'm too, I'm too innocent for this. But whatever that is, that feels racist. So, okay. My, my dyslexia saw it as neurodivergent, like a misspelling of neurodivergent, but it's not. And so again, like that, okay, that feels racist. So block that person. I'm sure Kyla would, right? But all the rest seem pretty reasonable. Like, hey, you should, you should get therapy. Like maybe you should really get therapy, right? Like, okay. So it's like one of those things where I'm not sure that Merck understands what she's doing. It's absolutely racist. I don't know what it means, girl. I'm so innocent. Don't, don't come for me. Oh my gosh. Hey, oh, see, Virgin, Virginia. I don't know. You can't just be out here saying the N word in my comment section. So I don't know what that is. You can't do that. But like N word in Spanish, is it the N word in Spanish? Does it mean something? I like how, okay, thank you guys. Bernie's dyslexia is hilarious. Stop, don't come for me. <laughs> The comments are condescending. I mean, but, oh no, but our, co our condescending comments. Oh, they're condescending. I don't know. I'm just like, I feel like people don't know what they want. And Merck doesn't know what she wants. She wants the attention, but doesn't want the consequence. I get that. Shame. I also want the attention and not the consequences. But, you know, we can't all have the things we want. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth, and living life as a fool. Dun, 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 dun.